chalkboard in the background and this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag. So easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm and it doesn't weigh much. And uh, yeah, it's just incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now, we have the, the green earth board as well. And then of course we have the, the Galaxy Neptune Blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy <laughs> with this board. I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Where is Mishi, guys? I'm ready to roll the dice. Hey, Mishi! Mishi! Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Çetin Belene. I'm part of UBC Contender 2022. And now you see me with a white board, which is my favorite board, actually. The best thing that I like this board is the checkers. You, it feels like a stone, man. And also, uh, I like simple design here, and I, I also like the sound when the uh, dice hit the frame or uh, checkers hit the frame. I really can't wait for the next year UBC uh, to play with these uh, lovely boards. Bye everybody! What's up Backgammon fans? In this video we're gonna show you one of the coolest products that we have in the Galaxy web shop. The new Dublin Cubes. And look at this cool little uh, box that it comes in. It comes in three different colors. The Earth, the Neptune and the Moon Cube. So let's have a look at them one by one. The Earth Cube, it's beautiful and custom made with the G for Galaxy, it's really, really cool. And the Earthboard colors, obviously. Then we've got the Neptune in the Neptune colors. And then we've got the Moon, which is this grayish Dublin cube. Like, I think this is probably some of the coolest Dublin cubes ever made. They are for sale right now in the Galaxy web shop. So why don't you go in and place an order for these amazing cubes. Thank you guys for watching this video. See you next time. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app, star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. What's up Backgammon fans? This is a video about the Galaxy Dice Tower. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's made of this nice material. It unfolds very easily. Let me show you how. You insert your hands here, you hold the sides, and you press, you press, and you press, and now you have a dice tower. It fits perfectly there. We designed this to be lightweight and travel friendly, but we also designed it to be silent. Unlike other dice scramblers that are usually made of plastic and make an awful lot of noise, this dice tower is nice and silent because of the soft materials that we used. Yeah, it unfolds just as easily. You just do the same, just in reverse. You push, you push, and you push. And yeah, that's it. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.
improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below. What's up backgammon fans? This is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the newest edition of the Earth Board. So let's reveal the new Earth Board. It looks like an Earth Board because it is, but what, what did we change here? We changed the wood. It was beautiful before, but I think it became even more beautiful. This wood here is absolutely stunning, in my opinion. Let's open up and see what else changed. Ah, the lovely earth board here. We got the checker box. Let's open the checker box. Here we go. So another little feature that we changed uh, are the hinges. As you can see here, we put the hinges on the outside, which just leaves this much more narrow hinge. And I think it gives for a better look, to be honest, but it's also more robust. Then the corner joints are slightly different. Again, a little upgrade to make the bore more durable and more robust, but you know, it's still the same earth board as the first edition, very small changes. You still have the same feel. These dimensions that I love, the, the short dimensions, I think it gives for a better playing experience, to be honest. Especially here, the height dimension, as you can see, you can't even put 11 checkers here. I really like that. I find it a little bit annoying to reach too far. And, uh, and also, I think you play a little bit better because your eyes don't have to travel as much. Yeah, the beautiful wooden frame. I still that, love that as well. Uh, you got It comes with a MacFit uh, inlay, so you can change up the colors if you want. Buy some other checker colors as well and mix it up that way. Yeah, and, uh, and then we got the Galaxy slash FM Gammon Cube here. Yeah, this is the new Earthboard, guys. I hope you like it. What's up Backgammon fans? In this video, we're gonna reveal a new revolutionary product. We've made a partnership with, uh, with a company called Tempest and uh, I have the product right here. So let's unbox and, and see what it is. Okay. This is the Tempest. It's basically an accessory that works in conjunction with your iPhone or smartphone. What it is, is a clock stand, super nicely designed by the way, where you insert your smartphone here and it uses the, the gyroscope in your smartphone with this lever that goes back and forth for turn, turn shifts. So you can basically set any clock setting you want on the, on the smartphone app, which is super easy. You insert it, and then you've got yourself a backgammon clock. It's super cool, beautiful, easy to transport. Uh, yeah, and we, we've got Tom from Tempest to introduce himself. Thanks, Mark, and hello, backgammon fans. I'm Tom Lakovic. I'm a product designer from Portland, Oregon, USA, and I'm the inventor of the Tempest game clock. The idea with Tempest clock was to create something so simple based on the amazing user interface we already all have in our pockets and the high definition screens and the high visibility um, and just pair it with something that belongs with a luxury board. We played so much online. We've really become accustomed to different timings, speed games and so on. So now that we're finally coming back to over the board play, we're excited to bring some of that excitement of timing. It's just kind of more exciting, more fun, more gamified, if you will, to play with a game clock and we've created one that's easy to use, that's beautiful and smart. So with that, I'll send it back to you, Mark. It's your move. Thanks, Tom. So let's have a look in action here, how it is. I've downloaded the app with the QR code that came with the box. Now I'm gonna choose backgammon. I'm gonna set the time bank to, let's say 10 minutes. Let's, if we play a five point match, the delay is already at 12 seconds. Yeah, here it is, insert the smartphone pressing play here we go so let's see okay six four for black uh-huh white six four that hits really nice i love this sound 
It's got this bass sound to it. I really like it. I love this product. It's so simple. It took literally 10 seconds to set up. The app, very low in terms of battery drainage. So you can just put it into flight mode and it'll last all day, basically. So that's super cool. You can connect a power bank as well, but you don't need to. We have a deluxe model as well. So that's the one we have right here. So let's have a look at this one. Here's the instructional manual. And this is the deluxe model. This natural wood. Wow, this is beautiful. I'm super excited to have this product available in the Galaxy web shop. I'm going to be using it myself, that's for sure. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. What's up, Backgammon fans? This is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys what are my favorite Backgammon color combinations. So here with me is the Void Board. Most of you guys probably know it already. And as most of you guys probably also know, the Void Board comes with changeable inlays and changeable checker colors. So this color combination, Wilson showed it to me yesterday. I played a couple of games on it and it just, for whatever reason, it just works out amazing. So we've got the purple checkers and the orange checkers. And look at this. Look how sick this is. So it's on the void inlay, which is quite low on contrast, but high, quite high on how cool it is. But when you put the purple and the orange checkers, look how they just jump out of the board. Contrast all of a sudden is very high. And uh, yeah, it's just, it just works, you know, it's just amazing. I also want to say these void checkers, void board checkers, are probably the best checkers that we've ever done. I'm really proud of these checkers. I love them. It's like uh, almost like a marble stone, almost like even though it's still the basically the same checker technology. We put the finish on them in a way so they just look absolutely stunning. It's it's a, the matte surface rather than glossy uh, sur surface coloring. Uh, yeah, so this. This color combination, isn't it something? Leave a comment below. Uh, what do you guys think? Is it too crazy or uh, am I right here? So that's all for this video, guys. Thank you very much. See you next time. Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool, travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. 
but uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect, you know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just want to hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game, I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers, it even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful doubling cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a it's a real luxury backgammon board, you know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small, but you could because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. And uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background. And this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag. So easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm and it doesn't weigh much. And uh, yeah, it's just incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now, we have the, the green earth board as well. And then of course we have the, the Galaxy Neptune Blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy <laughs> with this board. I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Where is Mishi, guys? I'm ready to roll the dice. Hey, Mishi! Mishi! Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Çetin Belene. I'm part of UBC Contender 2022. And now you see me with a white board, which is my favorite board, actually. The best thing that I like this board is the checkers. You, it feels like a stone, man. And also, uh, I like simple design here, and I, I also like the sound when the uh, dice hit the frame or uh, checkers hit the frame. I really can't wait for the next year UBC uh, to play with these uh, lovely boards. Bye everybody! What's up Backgammon fans? In this video we're gonna show you one of the coolest products that we have in the Galaxy web shop. The new Doubling Cubes. And look at this cool little uh, box that it comes in. It comes in three different colors. The Earth, the Neptune and the Moon Cube. So let's have a look at them one by one. The Earth Cube, it's beautiful and custom made with the G for Galaxy, it's really, really cool. And the Earth board colors, obviously. Then we've got the Neptune, in the Neptune colors. And then we've got the Moon, which is this grayish Dublin cube. Like, I think this is probably some of the coolest Dublin cubes ever made. They are for sale right now in the Galaxy web shop, so why don't you go in and place an order for these amazing cubes. Thank you guys for watching this video. See you next time. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. What's up Backgammon fans? This is a video about the Galaxy Dice Tower. 
It's lightweight, it's compact, it's made of this nice material. It unfolds very easily. Let me show you how. You insert your hands here, you hold the sides and you press, you press and you press and now you have a dice tower. It fits perfectly there. We designed this to be lightweight and travel friendly, but we also designed it to be silent. Unlike other dice scramblers that are usually made of plastic and make an awful lot of noise, this dice tower is nice and silent because of the soft materials that we used. Yeah, it unfolds just as easily. You just do the same, just in reverse. You push, you push, and you push. And yeah, that's it. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below. What's up backgammon fans? This is Mark Olsen from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the newest edition of the Earth Board. So let's reveal the new Earth Board. It looks like an Earth Board because it is, but what, what did we change here? We changed the wood. It was beautiful before, but I think it became even more beautiful. This wood here is absolutely stunning, in my opinion. Let's open up and see what else changed. Ah, the lovely earth board here. We got the checker box. Let's open the checker box. Here we go. So another little feature that we changed uh, are the hinges. As you can see here, we put the hinges on the outside, which just leaves this much more narrow hinge. And I think it gives for a better look, to be honest, but it's also more robust. Then the corner joints are slightly different. Again, a little upgrade to make the bore more durable and more robust. But, you know, it's still the same earth board as the first edition. Very small changes. You still have the same feel. These dimensions that I love, the, the short dimensions, I think it gives for a better playing experience, to be honest. Especially here, the height dimension, as you can see, you can't even put 11 checkers here. I really like that. I find it a little bit annoying to reach too far. And, uh, and also, I think you play a little bit better because your eyes don't have to travel as much. Yeah, the beautiful wooden frame. I still that, love that as well. Uh, you got It comes with a MacFit uh, inlay, so you can change up the colors if you want. Buy some other checker colors as well and mix it up that way. Yeah, and, uh, and then we got the Galaxy slash FM Gammon Cube here. Yeah, this is the new Earthboard, guys. I hope you like it. What's up Backgammon fans? In this video we're going to reveal a new revolutionary product. We've made a partnership with, uh, with a company called Tempest and uh, I have the product right here. So let's unbox and, and see what it is. Okay. This is the Tempest. It's basically an accessory that works in conjunction with your iPhone or smartphone. What it is, is a clock stand, super nicely designed, by the way, where you insert your smartphone here and it uses the... Okay. In about 10 so minutes. You can wait. Okay. How do you pronounce your surname? Pardon me? How do we pronounce your surname? Mina. Thank you. Dutch? 
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app, Star Membership, High Analysis, Blunder Database, Private Games, Coin Games, Rating Games, and much, much more. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below.
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app.
Consolation means the Well, I thought it was much on the really in the mood for consolation. No, it no, no, it's not your fault. You can't do anything. Well, I had hope. At I least the call for it. Everything was good to have you said to the city. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck in next one also.
Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Back Camera Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Back Camera Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool, travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect, you know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just want to hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game, I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers, it even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful Dublin cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a it's a real luxury backgammon board, you know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small. But you could because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. And uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background. And this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag. So easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm and it doesn't weigh much. And uh, yeah, it's just incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now, we have the, the green earth board as well. And then of course we have the, the Galaxy Neptune blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy <laughs> with this board. I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Where is Mishi, guys? I'm ready to roll the dice. Hey, Mishi! Mishi! Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Çetin Belene. I'm part of UBC Contender 2022. And now you see me with a weight board, which is my favorite board, actually. The best thing that I like this board is the checkers. You, it feels like a stone, man. And also, uh, I like simple design here, and I, I also like the sound when the uh, dice hit the frame or uh, checkers hit the frame. I really can't wait for the next year UBC uh, to play with these uh, lovely boards. Bye everybody! What's up Backgammon fans? In this video we're gonna show you one of the coolest products that we have in the Galaxy web shop. The new Dublin Cubes. And look at this cool little uh, box that it comes in. It comes in three different colors. The Earth, the Neptune and the Moon Cube. So let's have a look at them one by one. The Earth Cube, it's beautiful and custom made with the G for galaxy, 
it's really really cool and the earthboard colors obviously then we've got the neptune and the neptune colors and then we've got the moon which is this grayish doubling cube like i think this is probably some of the coolest doubling cubes ever made they are for sale right now in the galaxy web shop so why don't you go in and place an order for these amazing cubes thank you guys for watching this video see you next time the backgammon galaxy mobile app star membership high analysis blunder database private games coin games rating games and much much more What's up, Backgammon fans? This is a video about the Galaxy Dice Tower. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's made of this nice material. It unfolds very easily. Let me show you how. You insert your hands here, you hold the sides, and you press, you press, and you press, and now you have a dice tower. It fits perfectly there. We designed this to be lightweight and travel friendly, but we also designed it to be silent. Unlike other dice scramblers that are usually made of plastic and make an awful lot of noise, this dice tower is nice and silent because of the soft materials that we used. Yeah, it unfolds just as easily. You just do the same, just in reverse. You push, you push, and you push. And yeah, that's it. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. What's up Backgammon fans, this is Mark Olsen from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video we're gonna show you the newest edition of the Earth Board. So let's reveal the new Earth Board. It looks like an Earth Board because it is, but what, what did we change here? We changed the wood. It was beautiful before, but I think it became even more beautiful. This wood here is absolutely stunning, in my opinion. Let's open up and see what else changed. Ah, the lovely earth board here. We got the checker box. Let's open the checker box. Here we go. So another little feature that we changed uh, are the hinges. As you can see here, we put the hinges on the outside, which just leaves this much more narrow hinge. And I think it gives for a better look, to be honest, but it's also more robust. Then the corner joints are slightly different. Again, a little upgrade to make the bore more durable and more robust, but you know, it's still the same earth board as the first edition, very small changes. You still have the same feel. These dimensions that I love, the, the short dimensions, I think it gives for a better playing experience, to be honest. Especially here, the height dimension, as you can see, you can't even put 11 checkers here. I really like that. I find it a little bit annoying to reach too far. And, uh, and also, I think you play a little bit better because your eyes don't have to travel as much. Yeah, the beautiful wooden frame. I still that, love that as well. Uh, you got It comes with a MacFit uh, inlay, so you can change up the colors if you want. Buy some other checker colors as well and mix it up that way. Yeah, and, uh, and then we got the Galaxy slash FM Gammon Cube here. Yeah, this is the new Earthboard, guys. I hope you like it. What's up, Backgammon fans? In this video, we're gonna reveal a new revolutionary product. We've made a partnership with, uh, with a company called Tempest, and uh, I have the product right here. So let's unbox and, and see what it is. Okay. This is the Tempest. It's basically an accessory 
that works in conjunction with your iPhone or smartphone. What it is, is a clock stand, super nicely designed by the way, where you insert your smartphone here and it uses the, the gyroscope in your smartphone with this lever that goes back and forth for turn, turn shifts. So you can basically set any clock setting you want on the, on the smartphone app, which is super easy. You insert it and then you've got yourself a backgammon clock. It's super cool, beautiful, easy to transport. Uh, yeah, and we, we've got Tom from Tempest to introduce himself. Thanks, Mark. And hello, backgammon fans. I'm Tom Lakovic. I'm a product designer from Portland, Oregon, USA. And I'm the inventor of the Tempest game clock. The idea with Tempest clock was to create something so simple based on the amazing user interface we already all have in our pockets and the high definition screens and the high visibility um, and just pair it with something that belongs with a luxury board. We played so much online. We've really become accustomed to different timings, speed games and so on. So now that we're finally coming back to over the board play, we're excited to bring some of that excitement of timing. It's just kind of more exciting, more fun, more gamified, if you will, to play with a game clock. And we've created one that's easy to use, that's beautiful and smart. So with that, I'll send it back to you, Mark. It's your move. Thanks, Tom. So let's have a look in action here, how it is. I've downloaded the app with the QR code that came with the box. Now I'm gonna choose backgammon. I'm gonna set the time bank to, let's say 10 minutes. Let's, if we play a five point match, the delay is already at 12 seconds. Yeah, here it is. Insert the smartphone, pressing play. Here we go. So let's see. Okay, six, four for black. Uh huh. White, six, four. White hits. Really nice. I love this sound. It's got this bass sound to it. I really like it. I love this product. It's so simple. It took literally 10 seconds to set up. The app, very low in terms of battery drainage. So you can just put it into flight mode and it lasts last all day, basically. So that's super cool. You can connect a power bank as well, but you don't need to. We have a deluxe model as well. So that's the one we have right here. So let's have a look at this one. Here's the instructional manual. And this is the deluxe model. This natural wood. Wow, this is beautiful. I'm super excited to have this product available in the Galaxy web shop. I'm going to be using it myself, that's for sure. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. What's up, Backgammon fans? This is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys what are my favorite Backgammon color combinations. So here with me is the Void Board. Most of you guys probably know it already. And as most of you guys probably also know, the Void Board comes with changeable inlays and changeable checker colors. So this color combination, Wilson showed it to me yesterday. I played a couple of games on it and it just, for whatever reason, it just works out amazing. So we've got the purple checkers and the orange checkers. And look at this. Look how sick this is. So it's on the void inlay, which is quite low on contrast, but high, quite high on how cool it is. But when you put the purple and the orange checkers, look how they just jump out of the board. Contrast all of a sudden is very high. And uh, yeah, it's just, it just works, you know, it's just amazing. I also want to say these void checkers, void board checkers, are probably the best checkers that we've ever done. I'm really proud of these checkers. I love them. It's like uh, almost like a marble stone, almost like.
Good day, it's Tim Cross here. I hope I'm live. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I'll know whether I'm live or not. But um, this is a match between Brendan Burgess and Lawrence Powell, two of the long-time stalwarts of British Isles backgammon. Brendan from Ireland and Lawrence from uh, from London, England. Both great players, and uh, looking forward to seeing it. You know. Uh, Laura, uh, Brendan's improvement recently has been pretty staggering. So it's um, it's now uh, a, a, a very close match. You know, Lawrence always having been uh, recognised as one of the top players in the UK and world. You know, complete regular for the UK team. So I don't know whether how can I tell whether I'm live. Uh, but I'll just keep talking on. They seem to have stopped, which implies this hasn't started. Uh, I'll try and get hold of Mate and find out if it's, we're on now. <laughs> Brendan is normal jovial self and entertaining Lawrence as normal. And <laughs> to carry fun. So I'm looking forward to this match a lot. So 11 point match in the quarterfinals. Well, let's see how it goes. Okay. Yeah, like, all right. Are we? Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're live. Yeah, I've already done an introduction. I hope that came through. And I'm joined here by Sean Clennell, uh, a great player from London, England. And uh, we just uh, we're going to enjoy the match together. And feel free to join in. Five one standard play so far. Is that a five four? I can't, I'm struggling to see the dice. Five four. Obviously, it's a five four. Make the golden point anchor, and the game will settle down now. As soon as that's uh, as soon as that's done, Lawrence in return makes an advanced anchor. One of the best tips you learn early on in backgammon: um, counter an advanced anchor with an advanced anchor. Double three now for Brendan to play. And he plays an aggressive play straight away, making the board, uh, making a strong board straight away and putting pressure uh, on Lawrence for the future. Already, Lawrence, because of uh, Brenda's attacking play, is is good to be normally playing safe plays and trying to get this into a, a race position. Is in better position to do that because of his strong anchor, and uh, so so playing safe is much more um, much more of a possible a long term plan that could bear dividend. Four three, 
we're not going to do anything massive here, just come in with the four and bring the three closer to the action. Um, because Lawrence is, of course, going to be very reticent to uh, to leave that anchor. So I would, as Lawrence is slightly ahead in the race, he wants to come up to the 18 point. And there's no natural place again. I, I would be playing two down like this as a blocking play. But um, I, I always say, uh, you know, don't disregard the midpoint. But the never leave, never leaving your midpoint is the over the most overrated rule in backgammon. But that's just me and my view. And sometimes I leave the midpoint too, too much. So we've got a really interesting uh, position here. It's not, not e not equal. Oh, we're getting a. A room full of people here. <laughs> We've got Nick Check, Kent Gilding, but they're not going to be. They're going to be uh, quietly listening to me, which I, which knowing these two people will be hard. I'm looking forward to other people um, joining in and saying what they have to say, whatever they feel like saying. So, see, this is. Um, I can. See, this is making um, Brenda's double three play played earlier very aggressively. It's just showing, uh, it stems from there, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And I can see why he's getting good, good results when you look at positions like this. In fact, he's got to be looking at it, you know, as soon as you get the, um, as soon as you get the rack plus one like this, Brenda should already be looking at this cube. He should be, he's not too good because of um, why it's advanced tanker. So I, I don't know why he's not, I'm pretty sure there's some miscubes going on here because um, black is very, very strong. He's now approaching too good to double. But um, I think uh, Lawrence will be passing this one, even with the two checkers back. I, I agree. I think he, he waited too long. He's, he's maybe one roll away from being too good here. Yeah. And, and certainly had a, uh, a double that I would I would have made for the last couple of rolls and then would have to think about it from the other side. Thanks, Kent. That was Kent uh, joining in and helping me. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if how many of you know Kent, but he's one of my heroes from uh, the past with his literature and his comedy writing in, uh, in America and his obviously been a, a, a giant many, many times. And we're really honored to have him with us today in, uh, in the, the UK Open. So please all feel free to, uh, to to join in. You know, we've all got something interesting to say. Like I say, Sean and Nick have proved themselves over, over time. So let's all uh, feel free to join in. Five, three. Um, I'm, I'm interested in watching Brendan's style because he played that double three really easily and it really worked for him. And uh, so I'm interested if that's the cause of all Brendan's recent fantastic form. So six two. Split between wanting to move forward and get his back checkers moving. He can't do everything all at once. I might I might have jumped out. Yeah. So six five, so now Lawrence has escaped his back checkers and this changes everything. And you should always be aware that when you've ex escaped your back checkers, it's one of the keys like when your opponent's on the bar where you, you stop and think, is this the time to look at a, a cube? And um, presumably Lawrence has done a, a rapid a rapid count, right? but because he's already approaching. Just the fact you've escaped both checkers and a race lead, even without a board, is a strong indicator often that you can double. And here we go. So we, you should know these positions off by heart, and it's all about the race, the race position here. Speaking of which, if the race is particularly bad for black, yeah, uh, then making the anchor may not even be correct. Yes, agreed. 
And Fred, I, I take about 40 seconds to count these races. And so when they're not doing it themselves, I'm behind, I'm behind. So here we go. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a double even on, on face. I will be counting to make sure I'm a lot more than a normal race lead ahead. And if I'm a, a lot more than a normal race lead ahead, I'll be doubling this position. Oh, there's a poop count, is there? Yeah. 15 times 7. Oh, times. right. 50, yeah. Yeah, and Lawrence finds the, the double. And black. And black passes. So, yeah, no, we've not got the uh, the race count here. It takes me about 30, 40 seconds to count once every two or three games. Two or three games. I'm a little surprised he played so quickly here. Yeah. This, this is where, even as a, you know, highly experienced tournament player, I would have I would have stopped and made sure I had my bearings yes. in terms of like what the race looks like. Because exactly. Once Black was anchored in an advanced point so you have room to dump behind him yes uh you can you can have some there may still be takes but you can have some pretty powerful doubles which a lot of people miss that's right and that was yeah i think i was making the same point as well just uh, earlier the same that you just um you need to be aware of the the race and these kind of as soon as as soon as both checkers are escaped you absolutely need to know the race because uh, it's one of the, as I said, as I was saying, one of the indicators about whether to double or not. Just a, just a roll or two back, Black rolled two six from the bar and had a choice of whether to slot the five or the seven point. Yeah. Uh, the key, when you're trying to make these decisions, they come up often. The key is which number plays better for your opponent, fours or sixes. And if you're duplicating a four, slot the five point. If you're duplicating a six, to slot the seven. Yes. I've only just brought that, that, that into the game, that idea, especially... Uh, of slotting the why just actually slot the um, the bar point more sometimes when instead of the uh, the the five point and it's because sixes play well by in escaping and therefore uh, it's an effective duplication play six one okay this is getting tough but still nothing not enough but with no, with no board made it's still nowhere near a cube for both sides yeah. And nobody's throwing just the right numbers. It's awkward backgammon here. Yeah? Well, it's a nice so mess. It is. But I think this is pretty straightforward. Just uh, bring another player into play, placing it on the midpoint. And just, just so when you've got nothing to do like this, you just uh, bring, get your checkers back, all back together on the same team, as it were. So right. and, and here, as you're saying, the black checker on the 16 point is is somewhat protected by the fact that white only has two checkers on his midpoint. So yes. pulling a move out like this isn't just tidying up a block. It's it's putting much more pressure on that black block. Yes. Well played. Good sir. And this is a nice point to make. One of the things I, I played Hideaki recently, and uh, one of the things that he played really hot, hard, aggressive backgammon against me, I was really impressed uh, with the determination. But one of the things that did surprise me was how quickly he made outfield points where I had to think about it. And he made them absolutely almost instantaneously. And it's something I've tried to bring into my, my game. One of the things XG taught me from, uh, you know, I played for 30 years at a high level with no XG. Then I took 15 or 20 years off, and then I came back and XG ruled, and I had to retrain myself. Yeah. 30 years ago, I had a saying in the opening, the man with the most blocks wins. <laughs> right. And it turns out that all these builders, I was spreading all around the board, these builders and active checkers yes. uh, were really a little more liability. And the, the idea that a point is a point was more valid than not, which is yes. what you're talking about. Grabbing an outfield point, almost any outfield point, it, is much more powerful than we gave it credit for years ago. That's right, and I'm in the same boat as you, that I've had to do the same. So, well, this is quite natural play now. Black's got um, an advantage now, positionally, and it's how quickly he can take advantage of that. Um, it's still not right. He, he needs to make an inner board point before he can do anything too dramatic. Um, but I... Well, look oh, at this mess. You, you can make... Yeah. You can do all kinds of that. I, I, Okay. Yeah. Two one and Lawrence's defense now quickly catching up. There's a powerful board, uh, 
a powerful board makes um, compensates for a lot of things, and that's what Lawrence has done. There's a, there's a lot to be said for actually leaving that block there. There, with, there. with the three point made yeah. and a tremendously strong black position, you can afford to get hit. And now we've got an, an even more than anything, an advanced tanker also cures a lot of ills as well. You know, to uh, my to new students, I say, you know, why is why is an advanced tanker so good? We all know an advanced tanker is good, but why is it so good? Well, there's two. I would say there's three main ways you win a backgammon match: racing racing uh blitzing and priming and if you get an advanced anchor it really takes two of those three uh ways of losing out of the equation and that's why your advanced anchor is as really strong so if you're uh, coming to this game just if you i my number one rule in backgammon is get an advanced anchor it takes away a lot of the pain and also uh, no gangs with an advanced anchor as well yes yes And also, you take deeper with the Yeah, for the same reasons. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, speaking of the race, does anybody know what's going on? Because <laughs> that plays a, a huge influence on, on how you might play this role. It does. I mean, if Black's way ahead in the race, just all this safe. contact, man, yeah, just play yeah. safe and win the race. In fact, if he's way ahead in the race, he's, he can double. But I don't, yeah. I don't believe he's that far ahead in the he's race. But, uh, he has noticed that. Well played, Brendan. Yeah, yeah, he, he should be playing safe now. But this. Oh, look at that. Gains in the race and he's frozen. Okay, so it's getting interesting. Um, I still don't think Black's got a, a double now because the, the race has got a lot closer. Here we go. It's going to all happen. It's all happening in the next roll. Well, and the next trick is if, yeah. if White dances, does it get too good? <laughs> Whoop, that didn't happen. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Well, now what's the uh, what's the hit count? Uh, right. As he the got, as he got, these are some, this these is a are gamma. Yeah. Cannot be a that, more that, volatile position. That this, really this needs to be required a lot more thinking than he did. Yes, absolutely. That could and have been switches. a double. Just because something's an easy take doesn't mean something's not a double. And that's one of the things. You, again, another thing that is uh, good to learn. And we're in backgammon territory here. If he can scoop all these up. The Hoover maneuver. Back yeah, I knew I'd say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Hoover. I'll still be going to do in the 17th. It's, it's, it's probably, still a, <laughs> probably <laughs> still a bit too good. Probably oh, yeah, I think so. I mean, oh, he yeah. got in. I better cash yeah. my point. No, no, no. I mean, what can you roll that's bad? Yeah, I think every single number hits. There's so many. Uh, uh, I, this, this, this is, so I'm letting them off the hook. Tying a bit too passive. That. That's that's yeah. uh, so that was a, that, that's going to be a red block on the XG analysis. Well, that was fun. It was. It could have been really dramatic. But one of the big things was um, when the position was so volatile, as Ken pointed out, there, there was a really big cube decision for Brendan and like uh, my tip uh, was just because something's an easy take in volatile positions it doesn't mean to say it's not a, a double and that's another thing I'd like you to bring into your games people and doubling then, from the bar is vastly overlooked at how powerful it could be I mean, if you've got you know 18 or 20 enter numbers which yeah. win gammons you should yes. be doubling you know absolutely and just and when and don't just because you double and it doesn't work, then you pass the next roll. It doesn't mean you've made a really bad mistake. It's backgammon. The dice are the kings, and they tell us what to do. But you cannot afford to miss these these gammonish uh, these uh, gammonish cubes. Action position. Oh, and here we are. We have got a three six from the bar. So White needs to slow down. Slow down, Lawrence. Yes, he is doing. And that's a, a nice cube. So if you remember, I said early on a couple of a couple of triggers uh, for thinking of cubing are one when you escape your, all your back checkers, and two when your opponent's on the bar. Always, if your opponent dances or has one checker, always at least consider a double. I'm not saying double every time, but it's one of the triggers to make you uh, consider doubling. Okay, so this is a good double. I still, the, 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 it would be a relatively easy to take apart from that checker on the nine point. Right. I mean, the one thing one thing to notice is that white and black structures are identical. Right. Uh, black has a uh, an anchor. 
So yes. bad things can happen, but the world's not going to end, as opposed to the position we saw before. I think um, it, 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 a lot of the nine points a big deal. It would not surprise me that, that yeah, this would this would take. Yeah. That wouldn't surprise me. I do. I don't know, Sean. Do you think you think that was a take? It was, I, I think, think, I think it was one of those where it's a take, where it's a reluctant take. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're two all to uh, two eleven, and in fact, it's now a nine point match. Let's see what happens. Let's see them um, doubling slightly aggressively. It was best special Brendan, and um, and let's see. I, 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 his, Brendan's already impressed me with uh, his natural with that double three that he played so well, and that I would have overcomplicated it. And uh, so, uh, and, he, and he showed me the, how good it turned out to be by having that insta board. This is a bit of a mess for White here. Might might be right just to smite off the four point. Yeah, but at least it's a tempo play. It's a tempo no. play. It, it might work. <laughs> yes. Check it might be made. Yes, sure. I can't see alternative. No, I, the turns are just trying to hide, which is a mistake. Yeah, always play to the back of them and not to the this. Yeah. If you get good things happen. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, that's that's the problem is he loses his eight point when he when he played that play. I don't think I don't fit with the second there. Now he's gonna clean up the mess. Yes. Which should clean fairly easily. So oh, it's the same checker doing both things. Maybe you just cover the I can build it too. I don't know. Exactly. Well you've got a big advantage, so you can just play he can just play safe, so he's got he's okay with it. Um, now white needs something. Yeah. Yes. This role. He certainly doesn't have to get worse. And that's enough. Okay, but he needed to make an advance. Well, sure well, I, so I wouldn't oh. play. That's the last oh, two no. I play. I mean, honestly, that's the last yeah, legal two I play. Yeah. Thirteen. No. Yes. But yeah. Well, I might have actually hit with the two, but even even but anything, up with but, anything other than stacking them all up on the six point must have been better. So, you know, at least he's at least he's started taking off the six point. Look I'm not sure bad, about look how exactly. bad White's position is here. I'm not sure about that that three the three even. I'll leave that back. Yeah. Uh, well, he's got race advantage, Sean. So that's why even even though it, it, it suits him positionally, there's nothing like getting your back two checkers escaped. It's uh, it, it really. So how are, how's the pit count? And how are we on possibly doubling? Yeah, this is this is good enough to double now. We'll play, but it's a straightforward take. But you need to know these positions uh, where you were, where you stand in uh, holding game positions. I'm not sure he wants that point. Would that been insightful? You left the man on these twenty-four point. It would have been. I mean, a cube. It would have been a much tougher cube and an even, even easier to have. Yeah, probably not. Okay, 6 2. Can he afford to leave the midpoint? Well, can he afford and, not to? There's another way to look at it. <laughs> Sorry, I, <laughs> it, but I meant with one or two. Actually, yeah, I meant and leave it. Does he play the two to the five or. I think he has to come down. I, I don't think he can afford the, the, bringing Gammons into the equation if he stayed. So 5 1. When do we let go of the tempo? Yes, I, like you mentioned there, and I, I agree, it's it's more of a liberty, uh, a liability than a strength. White's position, actually, I, I maybe I overrated White's position because. Uh, had White already got the extra checker on the two points? Yeah, he had. He, he, he had. did. All oh, right, okay. Well, here we can clean up. No, 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 clean all those. Up. You should all go the, the, the yeah. five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, because you've got such two good landing points, changes things massively. Double four. At least he played um, ten to eight, which was a good, which was a good play. So that's no. Uh, that has made things a bit better, so it won't be quite as disastrous. There's but, a lot of pips there, but I'm, yeah. I still suspect this doesn't count out too well for White. It's by 6 2.
Wow, we're soon like closing up on the rice here. Hey, where, where's Art Benjamin to buy <laughs> 97 term formulas to get us within 4%? <laughs> I saw his lecture this morning. <laughs> they, served, they served three bottles of aspirin halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> it was so complex. I, I, I'm intrigued when he said, that, that, there we go, two, two. But we do need to just check the uh, the race here. But we were still playing that even behind the race. So it's no big deal. It's blocked. It's six feet out of there. Okay. So obviously just play it safe. So. I nearly mentioned that, that that extra checker on the three point might be handy because there were no there were no twos to play and there it went. There we go. Play safe. Just seeing how we're quite a long way even with a double six. You don't lose any pips by playing 13 4, so you play it. If you were losing, maybe you lose two crossover pips. But the gammon isn't in question, so we still, uh, we still stay. Right, now it's time to go. Notice the total wastage for fours. Yeah. As long as black has checkers on his five and six point. Threes aren't totally wasted because you fill in a hole, but the yeah. fours don't fill in a hole. Just the shots here. Um, no. So I think Lawrence. Yeah, one, will, one double will, six is away, and this is this yeah. is actually a race. I think he'll wait one more go here. I think I think he should just wait what no, no you're not gonna you're not going to win a race. Not very, not very often. No. Six bad numbers? Yeah. Yeah. You say? Yeah. Well, there's a nice awkward ball. Are we one sixes away from being interesting? That's not yeah. sixes. Right. Six, five. Okay, so that's, I'm calling this one as over as 4 2 to, uh, 4 2 to Brendan. So, there's no time pressure here. I'm, I'm, uh, maybe it's it's human nature to get to get uh, adrenaline rush when you get into uh, uh, a final or a late round. Um, and it's there's and playing with a clock, which players have gotten much much more used to now that the world yeah they are playing years yeah. ago. But these guys are playing uh, too fast. Absolutely, absolutely, it's, and it's for such experienced players as well. I'm surprised Lawrence is uh, look at that. Lawrence has used less than three minutes. So uh, Lawrence knowing much coaching, but if I wasn't coaching, I would just remind him to slow down because he's not known as a. A speedy player, Lawrence. Lawrence is uh, Mr. Carr. Exactly. Never seen Lawrence being ever no, but, but he is is joining into Brendan's um, tempo, so he might not be um, flustered, but he is playing much too quickly here, especially for Lawrence. You know. There are some interesting cube decisions. Now I agree that this is the kind of play you can play almost instantly. But uh, interesting one here. I think it's got to be the hit. And five, yeah, so do I, but I think uh, most, I, I'm not 100% certain of it, but that seems, yeah. the other players, as was just mentioned, the other oh. players like playing not to lose. But this is really fast cube action. Now, I, now, I where's agree, our A6? I agree with it. Six it. Yeah. Five, six. The black can do a little bit of wiggling here. Oops, that doesn't count. Is that He's not in such terrible shape. He can't if he can't get in, re-anchor, then this can get bad quickly. He just gets in. Okay, well. 
Well, that, that, that's, that's uh, not the best. No, if you roll it again, it's downright bad. I think it's probably right to swap the point here. Uh, so, maybe, but I, I, I personally would have just dropped, it, dropped yeah. it in there. And now we'll be looking at um, a four-point board plus. I mean, just, just flash back to that last five and put your checkers where they want to go and leave those back to fill in the holes. Right. And getting hits not the end of the world. My goodness, Black has no home board whatsoever. I, um, I like I quite like the simple uh, making a nine point here. We've got enough time for that. Oh, now right. I was yeah. talking about the double fives before. Right, yes, sorry, yeah. Uh, I think I, I quite like the solidity of making the nine point because it's a builder as well, can be used as a builder. And you know, you know, it avoids four or five. So I know it's only uh, uh, four shots, but it's it's significant. Yeah, and Lawrence has agreed with me. Yeah, it also uh, it also allows you to freely move the back checker if you can't do something else. Yes. and not have to worry about the man with the most blocks wins. Yeah, <laughs> you know, a point is a point. So, oh, I like that idea actually. Yeah. And if you don't do that, what do you do? Yeah, I guess coming with a four. Yeah, that's double three, and that well, fills, in, fills in the two. We must take the two points. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the pimple on the three point looks ugly, but the position is fine. You can afford that. Okay, double four. four. Right. Oh, this is delightful. Yes. And two, yes. Oh, this is this is really nice. Now you, you Interesting. Now this could go. This is. <laughs> Oh, well, that's whoa, whoa, whoa. exactly that's what you one. don't want. This <laughs> makes the position. This makes the position self-destruct as a position proof. This can turn in Brendan's favor. Well, obviously, being ahead at four two, be very careful. Be very careful before you. Yeah, so we're not in that territory yet, but we we could soon get there. I like that too. I think if if White steps up, you're going to want to point on so that the spare on the. Uh, Spare on the five point is, is okay. If need be, you can give up the seven or eight point. Uh, but that's okay. Just don't. Yes. And, you know, anything without a six can be a mess because White's running out of pips. What was that? Four two? That was a four two. Of, I didn't see that. Little I, number, I, little tiny. What was that? I'm, I'm four, missing four. Four four. I think I keep them spread out as much as possible and have two different broken five primes. Yes. You got a broken five prime against the ace point, you got a broken five point against the opposite the three point. And now six is what on both sides of the board. That's also true. Yes. It, it, it's uh six is not too painted. Sorry? Ooh, poker terms, the double gut shot straight. Well, this, this is this is really on the knife edge now. Now you just roll small yeah, and win the price battle. Yes. You know, that's, uh, well, you may have two rolls to do it. White it might, two. It could even be all done in this gallery. That, that's pretty bad, isn't it? Well, he, he, yeah, he keeps four in a row, but is that enough to... Um, Wow. This, this is now, if Brendan, if Brendan was behind, this would be a no brain redouble. Being ahead, it was a lot closer. Being ahead with the weekend, it's very yeah, hard to cool. find a collect weekend. Playing now, I mean, if, the, if this was the first game of the match, I think the bigger yeah. question would be is it a take now, Dolby? Yeah. Is that. I, I think it's tough. Yeah, I think. Um, let me. Let me this can turn around out both ways quickly um i would certainly even at four two just hold the cube for one more go it can also accidentally by the way if you fill in the three point you're almost instantly playing for a gamma yes yeah you know? that's and that would get you to eight two and he's got so, the two okay so here we go now, so now, now now this is fun now, now all kinds well, of well, magic equity stuff starts to creep in 
and we need someone who knows what they're talking about to get that exactly right. Okay, but surely this is a, a take at uh, yes. Surely this is a take at this score. So um, this is where you want uh, XG feed to make sure we're not making all fools of ourselves, but we're not we're, we're not going to get it. So it's, it's nice to know what we're thinking about and what worries yeah. us. I'm pretty convinced the the chance of having access to the the eight cube will be irresistible to me here. Also, White's position is substantially stronger than it looks offensively. Yeah. Yeah. What's Black going to do if Black rolls a five here and can't fill in the three point, yeah. uh, and he comes out? Then White can attack on his ace point and yeah. have a, a, a partially squashed five point board and have all the time in the world to roll a two five or a two and then a five or a two and then a six. This is easier to win for White than it might look at first glance. Even if Black rolls in his three point, he might next roll you know four or three twice and not be able to leap the five prime and have it, the four prime and, and have his board break. And it's a double pass, so great double, Brendan. Regardless of what XG says. Uh, well played. That's a great position. It was. I'm really uh, fascinated by that. I'm looking forward to uh, after the after this commentary finishes, uh, re-looking at that position and seeing exactly where we were, and see if uh, we, we all thought it. I th well, I certainly thought that was a a take for Lawrence at this score. It so. just shows how two uh, players double with a head in in, in matches. And, yeah, and it worked here. Okay, five four. So Brendan's six two up, and fives for the four point. Lawrence has been uh, sent. Uh, Lawrence has dropped and is still in the fight. So let's. Uh, like I say, I'd love to get that figure. Uh, is there anybody commenting? Is there anybody, any spectators? Well, we do, we can't see the comments anyway, so uh, we're going to have to wait till afterwards. <laughs> Thanks, What's going on oh, here? We can hit and cover. We can pick one off the outfield. It seems like you want to. Uh, I think hit and cover. Yeah, it seems pretty, pretty straightforward. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what um, what thought to the second hit there with that two? <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting I've I've lost yeah, it, it, I'm, it, it, I'm it, it, it went past this too fast. Yes, it did. So six two, nice anchor for Lawrence and uh, stronger board for Black. So Lawrence, uh, as um, Mitchie pointed out. Uh, in, in his book, will play a lot safer than you would imagine. He's, <laughs> he's immediately tempted. How far is he going to go to playing safe now? <laughs> because he's got the tempter Im immediately of a play that um, that safety is a checker and hits. And so, you, however many thematic plays you have in backgammon, you always have to respect the dice. The dice tell us, and sometimes you know people talk about game plans and themes. But if the dice tell you otherwise, you have to uh, uh, you have to obey the dice, not the uh, game plan. And it's knowing what makes a, a top player is knowing whether to follow uh, the, the 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 theme or the um, or the dice. What about making the eighteen point? Is that really yeah, I, I, that's that would have been. This I think is you something have, again playing awfully quickly. They they are. I mean, make sure you identify what your yeah. candidate plays are before you make a choice. I'm, I'm really surprised at the speed uh, Lawrence, especially, is playing at. It's. Uh, I don't think he's helping himself here. He's just flying through this game. Ninety-six people watching. Good. Hello, all eight to six. Please, you're all know, watching. It's going to get uh, more as this um, this tournament develops. It's been a great tournament, well attended. So six, three. Yeah, well, we were struggling a bit. So, so I didn't like that six three. Again, these these players are being played at lightning speed. They're really tough go. plays. 
Now this is this is once again a, a mess can can happen quickly. Yes. Um, but the, but the, bit, the the speed of the play is well, just now, this, 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 um, at least and I, nice to think you're thinking about it. Yeah. But I, this is again quoting our friend Mitchie. Um, a horrible. It's just called five away. A horrible score. And uh, we've learned, we've learned from that, and uh, that's why it take, you need to think about Cuban. And even in players like this, where one side has got the big advantage, the race is still relevant. There oh, we nice go. roll! That, that, well done. That takes some of our fun away because yeah. Black was, uh, other than the match score, Black was uh, quite possibly had a double last round. Yes. Yeah. But now everything is much closer with the five point being filled in and the white's position no longer looks so completely disjointed. It almost looks like a normal position. Yes. Yes. You don't want six checkers on your six and three on your two and no other checkers in your home board. That's not a not a good structure to strive for. That's it. And this has happened a couple of times to Lawrence. And I'm convinced he's playing some of these players a bit too quickly. Um, his calm demeanour, but he's he's playing very a bit too quickly, in my opinion. Why did we right to hit here? Six three. So let's play the six first, and and I would say yes. Eight to five. Yeah, I, both I, are I prefer, certainly reasonable here. Yeah, I prefer. Too, if White doesn't get out, he's he's. Almost yeah. Zuzwang, his position here can get worse rather than better if he doesn't escape with that back checker. 6-4, I think. It... Too bad there's not, too bad that checker wasn't on the midpoint because you could, you could uh, spread him out. I actually like the hit. I do, I do. Oh. oh, there's a nice shot. Hang on, it's, it's cocked that time. Yeah, it's, 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 oh, is it? Oh, wow. Wow. Now we really, that. a three makes everything delightful for black. A four makes it interesting because four oh. what? And dancing's not good. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, well, look at the score. <laughs> I mean, it's, and there's some good psychology, by the way, yes. to think about this in advance. And if you're going to double, do it confidently and quickly. Yes. Uh, there you go. No, I mean, there was a judge in the. In the and that's three minutes, it just appeared on the Oh, wow. <laughs> How easy was that to pass, by the way? I felt probably at this score it was a pass. Right. But it's, uh, yeah. I, I could be wrong. I'm not. I'm not I'd have, I'd have certainly thought about it. Yeah. You know, that's another um, reason why that quick, quick, confident double. And we're having a break already. That's. Uh, it's, it's, it's been like <laughs> rapid action. And uh, the, we, we so far have got. Um, the score is 6-3, Brendan has only used four minutes of his time and Lawrence only four and a half. So I don't know what's causing this uh, quick play, especially from Lawrence. I, I feel Lawrence is being dragged into uh, this and it would do him good to slow down, but nobody should be coaching him in between games. <laughs> Have they been uh, alive? The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more.
Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool, travel-friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect, you know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just want to hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game, I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers. It even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful Dublin cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a, it's a real luxury backgammon board. You know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small. But you could because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. And uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background. And this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag. So easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm and it doesn't weigh much. And uh, yeah, it's just incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now, we have the, the green earth board as well. And then of course we have the the Galaxy Neptune Blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy <laughs> with this board. I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury, portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Where is Mishi, guys? I'm ready to roll the dice. Hey, Mishi! Mishi! Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Çetin Belene. I'm part of UBC Contender 2022. And now you see me with a whiteboard, which is my favorite board, actually. The best thing that I like this board is the checkers. You, it feels like a stone, man. And also, uh, I like simple design here 
And I, I also like the sound when the, uh, the dice hit the frame or uh, checkers hit the frame. I really can't wait for the next year UBC uh, to play with these uh, lovely boards. Bye everybody. What's up, back one fans? In this video... Okay. Okay, so it's, the score is rejoining. This is Tim Cross with Kent Gulden, Nick Check, and Tim Stuckey, or Parfit, whichever you want to call him. He's, I don't think he's bothered. He's also in the room, happy to, uh, to contribute. contribute. Yeah, and... We've been saying that this game is going at lightning pace, you know, for the quarterfinals of the UK Open, serious match. Lawrence, a well-established and known name in UK backgammon, in my opinion, is being dragged into Brendan's pace, but um, Lawrence knows what he's doing, uh, We would, you would imagine. But if I was his uh, coach, I would be just slowing him down a tiny bit. And straight away, we've got a difficult decision. Do we make the fantastic... Um, do we make the fantastic five point or do we hit? What's your thoughts, Kent? I, I really am struggling with that play. I, I, would, I would hit. Yeah. <laughs> you don't actually be. I'm really. Not my fault, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I have found that my attempts from the old days to play backgammon like chess and improve yeah. my position and not just take a check because I see a check were maybe overdone. XG yeah. has got me to back up a little bit. And, and hit more and yes. be positionally clever a little less. Nice. It's, it's not a complete turnaround, but it's, it's a more of a modification. And I don't, I don't yeah. know what's right there. This is a typical Brendan play that's serving him so well. This really aggressive board building, and um, and it's it's serving him well. And we, we saw in the very first game just how. Uh, oh, here we go! Look at this. Well, this Look is sort this. of forced. Yeah, it is. It doesn't have a lot of choices. Cool. No. no. Okay, and he's... I think in for a penny, in for a oh. pounding. Yeah, I, I had a recent tip. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're blitzing, you go into a blitz like you're a, a, a bar brawl. You walk in and you either walk out on your back, you either get carried out on your back or you uh, walk out big and strong. There's no in-between. You don't ask favours. You just in for a penny, in for a pound. Yeah. <clears throat> Why did they saw off the bottom part of the board? But this bar brawl is looking a tiny bit one-sided. So Lawrence needs to get a, a jab back in with a two here. Oh, no, I think I, I would still carry on coming mm -hmm. down and bringing down. Okay, so Lawrence needs to... Could, he has, he's got his first attempt at a fight back. So let's uh, carry this bar brawl agenda on. And we've got, so Brendan must, oh, oh wow. Wow, God, I wasn't expecting that. That's, that might not be that bad a double, actually. Intriguing. Yeah, this, could, this, wow. can go, this can go, it's not so likely to, to close no. out now. You, 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 you're on the bar. Oh, you're you're you, on this, the bar. This is, uh, Poor Lauren, yeah. Speaking of doubling from the bar. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of, wow, that, this is a kind of play you I can see this why really, Brendan's really getting those results. This yes. Really yeah, and that's what I thought. So hard. Look at he has done. Oh. Ah, uh, good. <laughs> don't, don't. Much, we're, we're definitely in We want this. Didn't. Oh, and look at me. Now I think, yeah. he, I think he has to. Has to yeah. yeah. And now well, he obviously brings a one from the back to. Uh, right. Yeah. Another danger he's got is that was a that was a great double, Brendan. We didn't see it coming, and uh, double five. Whoa, whoa! How do we how do we finish? Oh, it's the other way. I thought, the other way. I thought it was oh. white. Oh, 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 that's, oh, that's horrible. Okay. Well, this that's it. That's the first three. That's fine. Well, I'm not sure why he played the last one that way. Oh yeah, six duplicating, unduplicating sixes. So, Brendan, you have you're you're a formidable opponent with the way you play with the cube and aggressive uh, board building. Um, 
I completely understandable why you're getting the, all the results recently. The double threes were, were stronger yeah. for a subtle reason in that it, it, it moves the hole you need to fill much closer to the checkers. Yes. As opposed yeah. to moving the checkers closer to the uh, point you want. Okay. A five and then another five. Good. Yeah, this, uh, wow. this is pretty much... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is pretty. This is pretty much, pretty much a game unless he gets hit in the barrel. Wow, well played, Brendan. That was that. That uh, was a caught us all by surprise here. It doesn't mean it wasn't a tape, by the way. No, you know, no, no. So. Yeah, if the double five had gone the other way around, we'd be talking completely differently today. Yeah, today. And the double threes was just a spectacular starting shot. Yes. I mean, it... six, two. Now we're just trying to make sure we don't leave a shot with uh, double sixes. Yes. Yeah. Brendan's on top of this. In some, whoa, we just skipped forward a play or two. In some situations where the, the gamut is uh, not so clear, uh, the completely safe bear off may not be the way to go. Sometimes leaving a spare on the five point uh, is not a bad idea. Oh, we've got here we, we go. Have, we have two high Cheap. numbers. Yep. We want for the game, for the game. Oh, oh that's Brendan. Terrible. Brendan's. This is a tough one to run off, I think. Three, four, six, ten, sixteen, seventeen crossovers uh, to save the gamut. Opposite one, two, three, five rolls. That's whoa. Oh, okay. I think it's still start. Still hard. Yeah, I get off at four. He's still a couple of doubles behind. Okay. Two down. I can bring the five in. I'm not sure it matters. Yeah. Just see these double the one. He has uh, six, eight, nine crossovers to go. It's not going to be easy with two rolls. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she gives it well, well played, but no. Brendan's striking me as a tough opponent. We get a little bit of fun here on the Crawford game to, um, you know, we've got the go for a gamut situation. Winning winning two points is, you know, one game closer than winning just one point for uh, the trailer here. Right? Yes, absolutely. It's a gammon go struck from for, for the rest of the match. Um, uh, Lawrence will be playing gammon go back gammon. From for, for the rest of, for as this game goes, it's very important to understand when you're even or odd away uh, at, at Crawford about whether you need one or two points uh, because you always want to be even away if possible. So in effect, straight away, um, Lawrence gets two wins if he gets two points here. And that, so which, just be aware. You just be aware of it. That's uh, which, by the way, would have led me back to the much more favorable play of four down and slot the five point. Right, right, yes. But for Gammon go back Gammon, yes. Yes, it, I'm sure that was right. Was that the opening four one? Yeah, right, and they did, they split. Right. Small technical advantage there. Got you. Need... They are quite hard to see these dice, I think. Perhaps black and white dice might be better. I'll give uh, exactly. Matt some advice. Have you? Oh, you Thanks, Sean. Yeah, the translation for the black. black. Yeah. White dots, both dots. Is that your favourite? Yeah. Yeah. You can see clearly. Even for the black dots. No, no. It's black with white dots. They're not best, Sean. 2 1. It doesn't make the. Yes. And being a dice as well. By the way, often the, the easiest way to win a gamut isn't to uh, blitz, obviously, so blitz is a, the obvious way to win a gamut. Yeah. But if you can win a priming game, 
Uh, yeah. What looks like even even a, a, a back game like this, if you can prime your opponent and then catch a checker, you can often go back and collect a bunch more. So gaining control of the game by priming your opponent and then having his structure crack, uh, gamins can come up out of nowhere. I don't know about so that. That that I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I wouldn't have left him back there. Absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 okay, so let's have a look here. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yes, unfortunately. There's just no, there's no real upside to making some tricky leave a double shot play. So Lawrence is trying to maximize contact, however, he's however he can do that. And that usually involves leaving your back checkers as far back as possible, right. but not always, of course. It's sort of annoying that, that 18 point could be grabbed, but I don't think it's correct right. here. I think you need, Black's already got pressure coming, coming home. Is it worth thinking of two down? I'm not, I'm not convinced well, I'm not, that that no, one shouldn't stay I, there, I, by I, the way. I, 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 <laughs> absolutely, I am absolutely convinced that that was, uh, yeah, that one. Oh, it, it, it wouldn't have made much difference as it happens. But, two down. but when you're behind in the race with the stronger board, you absolutely play to maximise contact at all cases. And it's surprisingly sometimes that you, you what seems crazy play, uh, crazily pure play, like in the old fashioned backgammon. Is the right play in those kind of situations, and I, I do really think Lawrence has mixed, did miss a trick, but it didn't cost him because the double five would have been fantastic anyway. Right, the bottom yeah. sixteen point was, uh, or wherever it was, yes. was an annoyance to it black, was. particularly since of the because of the blot on the black two point. He yes, can't, he can't hit the checker and cover and not leave all kinds of combination shots, or hit the checker and not cover, which um, means he might not be able to clear his midpoint. There were just all kinds of headaches. That was. Absolutely. That blot was almost like an active point. Yes, it was. Next, Kent. I went through some of these with uh, Art playing a three-point game with Art Sylvester earlier, and he had an interesting way to look about it, it's sort of a shortcut in math. How many rolls lead a shot for Black trying to clear is, uh, in a simpler way, simple yeah. six five uh, is stuck and six one is stuck. So he rates yeah. to have four potential shot leaving numbers to clear the eight point yes and then two percent potential shot cleaning up clearing numbers to clear the six point that's uh six yeah and then four potential shot clearing numbers to clear the five point that's ten and then six is it six potential shot clearing numbers to clear or is right. it eight the four point is, is whatever right. we're up to and then that gives you an then then you've got to hit it right okay and that, that'll get you like you know, in this situation, that gets you up into right. the I'm territory, to the, yes, and yeah. then you have to win. I so see, I, yeah. I, I would assess, and the more black checkers get squashed down to the ace point, the bigger the problems can be. I've never thought I, to do it this that is way. Not, yeah. This is not far from a money take. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you know? Actually, that's it a great. May be, it may be a money take with the dead checkers there. That's a great way of looking at it. I've never done that exercise myself, but it made, the mess. Made, complete, it's made complete sense to me. Okay, so it's now. Now's the time for Brendan to roll his double four or double six because we Keep know the fives off the dice. Oh, <laughs> he's just tempted us. Uh, clearing yeah. the six point is a little oh, bit of a yeah. blessing he's in disguise. <laughs> so we go. Well, that's the first four, one. Two, that's it. <laughs> Well, for the good of the match, we want a three here, Lawrence. Well, yeah, this makes let's, a let's pretty, just do it, Pretty Lawrence. easy win if you can hit it. Yeah. Now, a lot less shots. No, now, now, uh, now what? Oh, he can he can play. This is this is playing this way is just six five. Yes. And playing closer would be six two and five two. Also, it's surprising. As you gobble checkers off, um, oh, here we go, six five. There we go. As come you on, gobble Lawrence. checkers off, you, you give yourself a little more life after death. Come, come on, Lawrence. Come on, let's do it. Oh. Oh. 
You're not going to do it, Lawrence. Yeah, I don't think. Sure. It's not going to. Now, be. now the problem is he's going to be forced to run away before he gets a shot or break his board yeah. so that even getting the shot but is not going to win the game. Even, even the one to do, yeah. You don't want to break the board. Well, we don't want a six here. We don't want to see a you six. You really want a very small number. Oh. oh. You can. He's got to stay for one. Uh, I don't yes. think he can. Can you legally win the race? Is it just too too far gone? He's only got four, one, two, three, four, four three, six. He's eight, only got ten. four off. I think he's, I think it's still right to stay. Four one, five one, six one. Yeah. Six numbers. Where's the, uh, this one? Are there seven checkers on the ace point? Two, four, six, I think. Six, six. I I think five are off. Yes, yeah. it's five off. Yeah. Oh, it's, we we can't we can't you can't go. Not gonna be able to. Not gonna be easy to win even if he hits. No. But I suppose I know. you know. Six one, five one, four one. Well done. Three one. And there we that's have the, it. That's the end of that. Well, well done, Brendan. Formidable match play. I was very impressed with Brendan in particular um, in his aggressive approach to match play. This is, it's really done him good. And Lawrence, I would say, you finished this match, Lawrence, with seven, 16 minutes of your valuable thinking time on the clock. You know, there we go. Um, 16 minutes and five seconds still left. You know, Lawrence is one of uh, the, the top UK players and obviously a deep thinker and backgammon. And to leave 16 minutes, that game wasn't, that match wasn't as simple as I thought. But um, Brendan has really impressed me with the aggression of his play. That cube at uh, needs five was, was, took us all by surprise. And then we realised the power of it immediately, did it? So have you any The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app, star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below.
Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect. You know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just want to hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game. I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers. It even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful Dublin cube. The dice.
Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Back Camera Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Back Camera Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool, travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect, you know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just want to hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game, I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers, it even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful Dublin cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a it's a real luxury backgammon board, you know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small. But you could because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. And uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background. And this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag. So easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm and it doesn't weigh much. And uh, yeah, it's just incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now, we have the, the green earth board as well. And then of course we have the, the Galaxy Neptune blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy <laughs> with this board. I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Where is Mishi, guys? I'm ready to roll the dice. Hey, Mishi! Mishi! Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Çetin Belene. I'm part of UBC Contender 2022. And now you see me with a whiteboard, which is my favorite board, actually. The best thing that I like this board is the checkers. You, it feels like a stone, man. And also, uh, I like simple design here, and I, I also like the sound when the uh, dice hit the frame or uh, checkers hit the frame. I really can't wait for the next year UBC uh, to play with these uh, lovely boards. Bye everybody! What's up Backgammon fans? In this video we're gonna show you one of the coolest products that we have in the Galaxy web shop. The new Dublin Cubes. And look at this cool little uh, box that it comes in. It comes in three different colors. The Earth, the Neptune and the Moon Cube. So let's have a look at them one by one. The Earth Cube, it's beautiful and custom made with the G for Galaxy, 
it's really really cool and the earthboard colors obviously then we've got the neptune and the neptune colors and then we've got the moon which is this grayish doubling cube like i think this is probably some of the coolest doubling cubes ever made they are for sale right now in the galaxy web shop so why don't you go in and place an order for these amazing cubes thank you guys for watching this video see you next time the backgammon galaxy mobile app star membership high analysis blunder database private games coin games rating games and much much more What's up, Backgammon fans? This is a video about the Galaxy Dice Tower. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's made of this nice material. It unfolds very easily. Let me show you how. You insert your hands here, you hold the sides, and you press, you press, and you press, and now you have a dice tower. It fits perfectly there. We designed this to be lightweight and travel friendly, but we also designed it to be silent. Unlike other dice scramblers that are usually made of plastic and make an awful lot of noise, this dice tower is nice and silent because of the soft materials that we used. Yeah, it unfolds just as easily. You just do the same, just in reverse. You push, you push, and you push. And yeah, that's it. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. What's up Backgammon fans, this is Mark Olsen from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video we're gonna show you the newest edition of the Earth Board. So let's reveal the new Earth Board. It looks like an Earth Board because it is, but what, what did we change here? We changed the wood. It was beautiful before, but I think it became even more beautiful. This wood here is absolutely stunning, in my opinion. Let's open up and see what else changed. Ah, the lovely earth board here. We got the checker box. Let's open the checker box. Here we go. So another little feature that we changed uh, are the hinges. As you can see here, we put the hinges on the outside, which just leaves this much more narrow hinge. And I think it gives for a better look, to be honest, but it's also more robust. Then the corner joints are slightly different. Again, a little upgrade to make the bore more durable and more robust, but you know, it's still the same earth board as the first edition, very small changes. You still have the same feel. These dimensions that I love, the, the short dimensions, I think it gives for a better playing experience, to be honest. Especially here, the height dimension, as you can see, you can't even put 11 checkers here. I really like that. I find it a little bit annoying to reach too far. And, uh, and also, I think you play a little bit better because your eyes don't have to travel as much. Yeah, the beautiful wooden frame. I still that, love that as well. Uh, you got It comes with a MacFit uh, inlay, so you can change up the colors if you want. Buy some other checker colors as well and mix it up that way. Yeah, and, uh, and then we got the Galaxy slash FM Gammon Cube here. Yeah, this is the new Earthboard, guys. I hope you like it. What's up, Backgammon fans? In this video, we're gonna reveal a new revolutionary product. We've made a partnership with, uh, with a company called Tempest, and uh, I have the product right here. So let's unbox and, and see what it is. Okay. This is the Tempest. It's basically an accessory 
that works in conjunction with your iPhone or smartphone. What it is, is a clock stand, super nicely designed, by the way, where you insert your smartphone here and it uses the, the jack. Is this the, the big board they talk about there? Sorry? Is this the earth board they talk about or the life board? Or? I think it's uh, this earth board. <laughs> um, <laughs> this sort of has some commentators there. I don't know. I was thinking what is the real man. No, right, let me just sort of someone out for you. Okay? Yeah, the room, I like the room also. Thank you. Yeah, you're you're good to go. Good luck.
Shake it three times. Huh? Okay. Just shake. Shake it three times. I feel too loud. I feel too loud. Too loud. Too loud. Too loud. That was too much. I, I can uh, shake more than you, yes? Shake straight up. Not less than that. <laughs> Here there's no choice in and make the in and make the 11 point there's no no reason to do anything else and now we have no reason not to make the four point and probably the 11 point 11 points so you know at the point you you want your five point next if you can't have your five point then make the point six away which is the 11 point blacks checkers are, are extremely well distributed here um white's checkers a little less so uh, uh, again, one second. We had a little glitch in the audio, so can you again please uh, introduce yourself and stuff? And then... If I remember who I am, yeah, my name's Kent Goulding. I'm from the United States. Fifty years ago, I was a backgammon boy wonder. Now I'm in the memorabilia category, but I'm here and willing to speak. So I will share what limited wisdom I have with the uh, with the people watching. And you are together with me. Oh. Thank you. Uh, we, we turned our, oh, great shot. That at least, that at least keeps him in the game. 
Oh, he's already been doubled. Okay, so uh, now that the trick is, well, this is easy. Black comes home and white plays a two point game. White now fills in his uh, five, four, three and two points as much in order as he can. He doesn't care about filling in his seven point. That's that's a, a, a non-entity. Uh, Black, meanwhile, wants to build um, his three point. As long as the black three point is empty, White has the equivalent of a, of a, a phantom 2-3 back game. The hole on the three-point, oh, don't do that unless you think you're winning the race. My goodness. It, 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 maybe the race is, is somewhat close, but in terms of contact, the contact is, is, is oh, look at that, straight at it. This, this is, um, uh, I, I, think, I think White got a, little, got a little bit ahead of himself moving up to the 22-point the there. Holding on to the two point and trying to play uh, sort of the phantom two three back game, I think was a, a much more viable game plan. Here he's got you know maybe a 18% chance of, of uh, winning a three point game. Um, he's not likely to get gammoned. I don't think he's in the race. I mean, those, those double fives doesn't quite do it. There's a lot of a lot of chances to get a shot. I and mean, basically, Black has to clear his nine point, then his seven point, then his six point, then his five point, then his four point, assuming White's still there. Uh, and all that adds up to, you know, pretty close to a take if, if, as long as he's got a, a board left to, to win if he catches a checker. Okay, five one. Um, I, I, why do these guys play fast? There's lots I could talk about if I had more time to say it. Sometimes you should look at pre-clearing an interior point, like possibly clearing the seven point as opposed to pushing the extra checkers deep. I'm not sure this is one of those times. Here with 2-1, again, he can think about uh, clearing the seven point. You're, 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 we're into where 6-4 is a, a double shot roll. Watch out for 6-4 here is just not, ooh, 6-1. Now he finally is forced off that point. This would be a real hoop to watch if White were still back on the 23 point. But now we have to find out whether there's any any residual racing chances here. The pip counts, uh, we need Art Benjamin to translate it all. The pip counts nowhere near as bad for white as it looks like. All those checkers slant on the ace point, leaving holes on the two and three point. Uh, they're almost negative pips. Because if you, you know, twos and threes, don't take checkers off and just scramble checkers forward. And now freeze frame. Okay, five one. You yeah, might have been right to drop one onto the uh, drop one onto the. the that, yeah, I, I don't like the. He played the five one too quickly. I think he should have slotted the three point. Now he gets it all back. Now one checker off. Roll a six and get a checker off. Five three, not quite. So he's one checker off. He's one crossover ahead and on roll. But the the hole on the two point could be bad. It's now filled in. Now he's two checkers ahead. One big doubles for white. Ooh, that's no good. One big big doubles for white will make this very interesting. Black wants to roll sixes, fours, and oddly ones. Look at that. Boom, 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 boom. Just uh, four checkers off and cleaned up all the wastage. Now Black's position is much more like a straight pit count position than just how many rolls do you have left. Both of them are building. They're, they're making mirror positions. We can count this fairly easily. There's an extra extra black checker on his four point and an extra black checker on his two point and his ace point. What was that? Three, six, seven checkers. Get four off like that. Now what have we got? Uh, seven checkers against seven checkers where white's actually in the lead. Seven checkers against six checkers with holes all over the place. We don't want to roll threes. Um, just a couple of big numbers or uh, four one gets two off. Five checkers left against six. Probably not going to get two off. Oh, I can't see it. Six three. Pretty good. Okay. Five checkers against five checkers. Slightly better, slightly better checker distribution for black. But how does yeah, white can't really tolerate, even though he's got one miss, the misses are pr pretty bad. And now he's got this, this position is, is not as flush as it looks, and that position is. Okay, fours are better. We, we almost had a very interesting final end position. Black ruined it by, by ripping four checkers off. Well, that was a much closer race than um, we thought we might be facing when we were uh, back a half a dozen or ten rolls. Okay, three to two. Set them up as fast as we can and start playing before I even have a chance to get a drink of water.
put the cue back in the center, guys. Well, boy, I was I was a director for a couple of decades, among my other pastimes. And being called to a table partway through a game with the cubes on the wrong side of the board is a very dangerous position to be in. I I, I dread being called over because at least uh, back in the day, this cube is now on white side of the board. Um, I, I don't know what the current uh, UK backing rules are, but thank you. Um, th this will be interesting to see how this is resolved. I mean, my guess is everybody knows each other at some point. They'll just say, oh, the cube's in the middle. But it might not go that way. You know, it, it might get to a point where, um, you know. I, tell them. Hmm? I go and tell them. Well, I don't. You're the director, not me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's um, traditionally it's up to both players to make sure the cubes in the proper position before the play begins. And if you don't do that, there is a, a significant danger that the that the cube ends up in the wrong place. And it may be that modern rules have brought it up to speed, or the fact that so many matches are streamed and recorded means we can fix where the cube is. Um, years ago. This would not have been as easy to resolve as it appears to have been here. In any event, we're back where we're supposed to be. Um, uh, very strong word of advice. Always make sure the cube's where it's supposed to be. Um, you know, and you've got a full tank of gas before you start flying your airplane. Because big trouble can follow if you, do, if you don't if you leave the cube in the wrong place. I mean, there used to be a line in the rules years ago that in the event of a dispute, uh, the cube will be judged to rule where it sits. In this case, it would have been on the white side of the board. Okay, meanwhile, here we go again. Black's uh, bearing in against an ace point game with a couple of holes. The only problem is he's left two players, two checkers on his 18 point, which means they're basically going to have to, oops, much more fun if he rolled a six, because any six other than six one or six six is only legal play would have been to bear his breast on the 18 point. Now uh, maybe the cube belongs where it was supposed to be already. Why aren't we thinking? Why weren't we thinking about doubling here? Well, we'll find out next year. This, I mean, again, they're playing very, very quickly. There was stuff to think about there. Uh, once again, including the cube. Oh, look at this. Okay, now is there any realistic chance that we can find the gammon here? No. Double fives is a little annoying. Double pass. The 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 instructional and key parts of this game took place at the time when um, Nikolai did not double the turn before. There, there was plenty to think about and talk about there. Six five, foolishly running away for a long time before we had computers telling us how stupid we were. I advocated coming out with the six and down with a five. Um, it's a prettier play. It gives you better checker distribution. Uh, tactically, XG says it's slightly inferior. Not dramatically inferior, slightly inferior. 4-2. Yeah, all right, big split down. Black's position is ugly. All of the spare checkers are on two points. And it can work. Now that the trick for white here is be beware linking on the 20 point. And maybe beware running away with that. A better play, I think, is to just build the five point. Yeah, uh, good. It's, uh, well, somebody slowed down and thought a little bit, or else they can hear what I'm saying. Um, yeah, yeah. just next door. So if you are a little bit louder, maybe. All right. So if I scream, oh my God, what a horrible play! They might actually hear me. Yeah. I I've played in finals where I, every so often I could hear cheering and applause in the other room. Yeah. I couldn't tell why, although once I could, I had just rolled a game-winning shot. <laughs> I could hear the applause coming through, coming through, and I, I was in a final where McGreal was doing the commentary. He gets very lively, and every so often I could hear I could hear Paul screaming, "What a shot!" or or quacking or doing whatever he did. Okay, um, well, this certainly looks like a double. I mean, Black's got all his checkers out. He's got a four and a half point uh, blockade. We don't really even need to know what the pit count is here. It's uh, it's sort of done. A, a smidgen better for Black. And he'd have a free roll here because he kind of wouldn't have any bad numbers and might actually roll a good one and possibly get into a gamut situation. Always general bit of advice. If you get to a point that you think you've got a very strong double, stop for a second and think, might this be too strong? 
you know, uh, sometimes that happens on a quick turnaround. You're losing, you're losing, you're losing. Your opponent rolls a bad roll. You hit a shot. And you go, oh my God, he just danced. And you double and cash the game when it when um, you put it through XG analysis and there's a big red square there. You just made a, a, a double whopper error. Yeah, red square in Moscow. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, wrong red square. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, it's white. All right. Whoa, what do we got here? This is we're we just backing up the last game and setting up the same position. Um, I don't know what they've done. I was busy. Okay, I, 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 I bring you there. All right, we're we're. Sending out a scout to figure out what their well, there's maybe some dispute about what the role was. Oh, I see. Well, there's a we have an instant replay. I wonder if the instant replay is well, legal rule. Legal roles are or legal moves is supposed to be the the law of the land uh, on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. So if there's some dispute here, I think they're 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 allowed to back it up and find out what the role was. I don't I don't think they're like, like we're required to argue about it like we used to in the old days. Or maybe the question of what was it a legal role? Did they drop the dice cup? We'll find out. We've, we've sent uh, uh, Mate in to see what's going on. The question is whether the cup touch. I don't even know if it matters. Would it matter if, if you just dropped the cup? But the dice came out. It's wrong. Well, there clearly is an animated discussion taking place. Two or three directors, a committee. Um, do they agree on what's actually happened, and are and are wondering what the consequences are? Or they do they disagree on what the role was? Do they disagree on? There clearly, is a disagreement about something. Oh, okay. Well, what fun! Is it a legal role? Is it a legal role? He he dropped the cut, didn't he? I missed it. No, no, we've all missed it. So, oh, okay, because no one's quite sure. It sounds like he rolled the dice, dropped the cut just after rolling. It's whether the, we don't even know if the cut hit the dice. Oh, okay. Here, we are, our our technical crew is apparently bringing us an instant replay. If we can see, it's it. not contentious. They just don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so there's an instant replay, which uh, <laughs> we need, we need, we need to, we need to put the cowl over our head and get the magnifying glass to see what they're. See what's on the phone, uh, or camera, or whatever that device is. Score scorekeeping device. Okay, here we go. The replay, which I cannot see. He's going to roll. As the question is, did he drop the cup? And if he did drop the cup, what's that mean about the roll? Oh, I see. He dropped the cup. Now we need a director to to find to find the rules. If you roll your dice in the old days, if you rolled your dice and your cup, so everything fell onto the table at the same time, that was not a valid roll. Of course, in the old days, all kinds of things were not valid rolls, which which might be now. In the United States, dice on checkers are valid, which annoys the heck out of me, but I've started to get used to it. So, the, the, yeah, clearly what they're talking about is, is did he roll the dice and the cup and drop the cup as he's rolling the dice, which used to be not a valid roll. Uh, I don't know, but I'm assuming that's still the case. Otherwise, they wouldn't be arguing about it. And now we can only wait and see um, how the director rules on this. Um, it looked like on the replay, which I think we make it to watch again, that he rolled the, the dice and the, and dropped the cup simultaneously. So it can be tricky. You, you don't want to have a dispute where a guy rolls the dice, sees what it is, and then throws his cup on top of it to try to nullify it. That gets into places where you earn your money as a tournament director. And you should always wear a bulletproof vest. And we can sort of see, whoops, they've taken it away. Looks like uh, uh, they've adjudicated it one way or another. I guess the I guess the role was deemed good and the play stands. The rule tells if the dice is there, it's right. What, what exactly the players are saying to each other, I'm not sure I want to speculate about. Very important to have hand gestures. See, on the right side of our screen, we can see, oh, okay, they, they, they reached across not to hit each other, but to shake hands. I'm glad to see that. <laughs> He's practicing the roll and drop. It's, uh, 
Now here we go again. First he's corrected for not shaking the dice enough, then he's corrected for shaking the cup too much. As I, as I understood. Well, I'm ready to get on with it. What do we think of this position? This this position, uh, if in fact it will be shortly White's turn to roll, uh, White very much wants to hit a bluff somewhere. He's got sixes and sevens and uh, the odd eight. Uh, what is the odd eight? Three, five. Two six is already covered. Do you want to discuss it outside? Six one is nice. It's everything. And what else can he do? If he, if he can hit a, if he can hit a, if he can hit a block, he's going to uh, uh, among the ones on Black's uh, eight and nine point, he's going to want to do that. That just send the checkers back and, and rip apart the building uh, strong blockade there. Even three four works. Lots of lots of hit numbers here. Okay, let's get on with it. I've seen enough more hand gestures. This is glasses back on. That's a good sign. Sets the clock. Lord knows what if the clock was running or not. Let's not get into that. And here we go. Back in action. Shooting it. Oh, there was no the the the, the white checkers were in a different place. Okay. Okay, was it all about was the cup dropped or not, and therefore was it a legitimate rule, or how soon was the cup dropped? And yeah, okay, so whatever they sorted out that it was a legitimate rule. Okay, and we're we're and no no shots were fired. And we're back under no. underway. Well, that's a good roll. That's a very good roll. Now now it's now it's uh, black who's got issues. Of course, if you can just simply. You can simply roll a five and cover his eight. No, point. I think his issue was again that uh, Nikolai uh, picked up the dice before he uh, pushed the clock. Oh, oh, that could be. So it, it yeah. actually wasn't so much about the roll as the, the dice. No, no, now. This one. Oh, this one, a new one. Yeah, this one. And yeah, uh, so basically what uh, Kent, what your problem was that they are just playing too fast even for themselves right faster than their own pace right they they should slow down a little bit and then uh, all would be good oh for sure slowing down would be a very good thing it was um what do we got here six five well, looks like it looks like uh well, that's the five pretty much force it seems like the six is the only logical choice at the end of the last match, before the microphone got cut off, um, no, that seems like a, a good play. This this is a this is this is a tough position. And there were there were other options, and that's certainly simplest is to get the get the blot safe. But that leaves White's lone straggler on the twenty four point, which is a, a very bad place to be right now because of this. Uh, it might have been it might have been worth the roll back white moving the ace up to the 23 or moving the three up to the 20 um, one and leaving a blot in the outfield now now black has pretty much seized the initiative white needs to come in with a okay four two is not bad in with a two two is a good place to be and then hit now now initiative goes back to uh, to white both sides are like one roll away from from one decent roll away from taking charge four three all right that's great now blacks very sound defensively on the other side of the board and can focus his attention on completing his blockade or prime or close out on this side this is um uh worthy of some consideration i'm not sure there weren't other two fives to play there like two and five out leaving um uh, leaving two blots. But here we here we are, white's a little overextended. They both had the same three-point board. The black has an, a, a valuable advanced anchor, which basically makes him immune from, from disaster. Um, not, quite, not quite enough black checkers in the attacking zone here to double. Um, you know, one more checker down in, in uh, this could be, well, if you're gonna do that, maybe you should just hit. 
All right, well, two, no, no time to think about it. There were other there were other options. Double twos is just frozen all over. I, 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 that's not good. He may just have to make his nine point, which is nice. That that's a, a decent blockade, um, sort of a broken five prime, which makes it hard. One. This is easy. The, the, the broken five prime was a nice, nice play. Does it very, very quickly. Now he's going for uh, a difficult semi blitz. Hit. Uh, okay. Now, now we stop and think about the cube a little bit here. Now he's, he, well, he's not thinking about the cube a little bit here. He's just rolling. The trick now is. Well, you really would have liked to cover that. It just he didn't. He didn't roll a three or a four. Six four. Okay. Now, now that it, it's. The shoe could be on the other foot very quickly. Whites, um, you know, broken five prime, maybe enough. You know, there's, there's, this all goes too fast. There's a lot to be said for hitting both blots here. I, I don't, um, hitting both blots would have worked pretty well there. Uh, uh, these guys are just zipping along. Okay, now you got to get in or, or I think it's uh, lights out. <coughs> Now can we stop and think? Um, well, no, apparently not. Certainly hop out with a six. Now, mommy, can I hit him again? No. All right, here we go. Now. Yeah. All right. Th this is um, this is lightning back in, and uh, I don't. I, it seems like. Uh, you can't take that. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I would think to myself, okay, what if I don't point out? What if I don't pick and pass? Well, I just hit him loose. And how, how, how's he going to like the two checkers on the bar needing to roll a six in order to save a gammon? And even if he rolls a single six, he had a block back in his own board. So I think the attacking side here was um, a little late with the cube, certainly a little late thinking about the cube. Six four, okay. At least he didn't make his two point. We'll give him credit for that. I still backgammon is more fun when with six four you bring the six out and the four down, then you're playing backhand. Okay, close race. Uh, a little less close. And I, I, that, where, where's that two going? I, I, I would have stayed back with the two and just started to try to build a board. Okay, black has only one checker back, but everything else is uh, everything else is in white's favor. How's the how's the race here? This this is uh, the, the, yeah yeah good boy. This is this is there's a lot of early and, and a quick a quick quick pass. Why didn't why don't we get to think about these things? This is astonishing. Used to be way back when there you know nothing was streamed. We, we certain big tournaments. Uh, would be uh, closed circuit TV, sometimes recorded uh, and later sold or distributed on, on uh, uh, tape or DVD or whatever was in the old days, it was tape. Um, and in order to, when you got to the finals of a tournament, it was the only time you'd be, you'd be playing with the uh, camera setup. And it was a, it was a big construction. You know, there, there were uh, steel scaffolding and cameras which weigh 100 or 200 pounds hanging from the scaffolding and, you know, big lights which uh, caused you to sweat. And, and psychologically, if someone was going into a final, the question would be, have they played under the lights before? And if they haven't played under the lights before, they were at something of a disadvantage because psychologically it was very, very tricky. It was hard to be you thought too much about it's being recorded other people are watching people are talking about it um maybe i'm sweating too much maybe i didn't part my hair in the right way and playing back in and be kind of kind of becomes secondary to what really amounts to stage fright and the more normal reaction to stage fright is to play too fast so you get all hyped up the adrenaline is definitely pumping i know how that feels and you play, you play, you play, you play, and, and you're just, you're, you're not playing backgammon, you're playing speed gammon at a time when you should be playing uh, postal backgammon. Think about it long enough to send your, your, your play in the mail and wait for the response to come back before you play again. Four, six, yeah, it could, it's not ridiculous to jump out to the 15 point or to play down to the seven. Um, some of these jump out to the 15 point plays are, are stronger than people think because that particularly when the midpoint only has two opposing midpoint only has two checkers on it 
um, you know, who's zooming who? Whoa, we have to do this? What was the role? That, that, that looks funny. This does not look funny. This, this, is, uh, this is almost a game winning role. Now, the, look at the positions. Look at the black checkers, and there's a whole lot of them on the six point. And then look at the white checkers, and which side do you want to be? Um, if you set, set up the black checkers with no white checkers on the board, you don't particularly like your position. You like it less now. I mean, I, I just looking at the board, I double. I, I don't. I don't care what what calculations or tactics. Look at the board if you're white and double. This is not. This is not white's problem. This is black's problem. Whoa! That, that I think that was a um, uh, decided error, particularly since he's trailing. The, the, even if even if you think your position doesn't have teeth. It sure, it sure has a strong bark to it. You might get tight now. Well, well, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't double last turn. Well, he's, sh he's shooting it. He's got two on the bar. He, he sh he's shooting at a block, though. But I, 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 having the presence of mind to double here, uh, they're stacked 10, 11, 13. Yeah, there's, there's two on the bar there. There must be, or there's one gone. No, there's two on the bar. Yeah, yeah I, once, I once played a player and partway through a key match, counted out 14 checkers and said, hey, where, where's the 15th checker? My opponent lifted his hand out of his lap and said, oh, here it is. <laughs> Put it back on the bar and the match, the match went on. <laughs> you know, that's, that's backgammon. <laughs> Those are the good old days. Um, okay, now, how, how much of this is a nasty dog barking and how much is it a, is it a pit bull? You know? Yeah, that's, uh, uh, yeah that, that's something. That that is that is uh, that is something. Well, he's worried about his um, his match lead. Uh, very, very astute double. Okay, five four. Oh, good. I like this play by uh, Brendan. He's 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 played the old fashioned. Used to be uni universal two checkers down, which which leads to more. You know, priming games as opposed to holding or racing games as a general rule. And hit. Um, Black struggling to reach the starting position. Does so successfully. Certainly reasonable to make an anchor here. There's a whole lot of white checkers stacked up waiting to do nasty things. Um, yeah, I think I think you want your four point. You have to make your four point. But white should be uh, top of his white's line should be get get at least one checker off the 24 point. I mean, almost no matter what, it, no matter what he rolls, he should get off the twenty-four point. And here, the ten points useless, making the seven point is silly. So I think two off, and then make, and make, make your five point. You know, don't worry about it. You, you, you'd rather make your five point, but at least one of the checkers from your. Or um, well, you may try to be super clever. I, I think this, this is. I think this is a little bit too clever by half. But you see what he's doing. He wants to keep the eight point and use one of the one of the spare checkers on his six point to make his five. Um, so he holds back. Now roll an ace and, and that'll keep. Yes, look at that double aces. One now what? Now we can hit. We can shift. Uh, if we shift, we're gonna he's gonna play twenty one to twenty. Now I don't know about that. You take it, take it, take aim at the uh, put a bead on that other blot in the outfield. You're not saying much. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not get a word in your choice? Yeah. <laughs> um, Enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to talk. Welcome to talk. Oh, there you go. He's got it. Now, where's the cube? This is, um, uh, White has turned an awkward looking position into, into very, very powerful. This is a beautiful position. That's a nice spot. That's a good roll. Um, I, look, I, I'm sorry. We got to play back in. Good, good boy. Good boy. I was not thinking too much about these takes. I mean, it may be a pass, but this is, you know, you're, you are dead here. You're not primed here. Um, you don't have to be winning to accept the cube. And this giant match lead we're protecting is down to uh, five to go, six to go, which in my thinking is three double games versus three double games. So it's uh, pretty darn near tied. Who needs to be had? One chance of chewy bits but they've taken us away all right i get um back we go short break
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool, travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect, you know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just want to hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game, I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers, it even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful Dublin cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a it's a real luxury backgammon board, you know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small. But you could because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. 
and uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background, and this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag. So easy to carry around. You can just grab it. Yeah. Okay, uh, the comeback. We are in the middle. That's why, in the middle. That's why I suggested a break. Uh, we cannot start without the master. Yeah, but I'm here now. So it's alright. Are we good to go? Yeah. Maybe that's us. Yeah, can can you hear us? Hopefully you can. Uh, John Barnes with uh, with Kent Kent Golding. Right, so it's a close match, six five. Uh, the winner of this will play. Um, I'm not quite sure the semi finals. I think it's uh, Jason Champion and somebody else. Okay, a fan here would see some action maybe. Down. It was so clear to pick two down and not to split and try to get yourself no, in trouble. That's no. just asking asking for trouble. Yeah, yeah. Double six is a little awkward. You want to move the back check? Is there? Count. Well, if white can, if white can, uh, before the five. Yeah, get a oops. Okay, so you don't run, you just make it two. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's tempting to run, but it doesn't really. It's basically sticking your head in a blender. <laughs> five five and take it now what's real i guess both both sides are running ahead of the game yeah they're a i mean it, it's, it's, you sort of want if either side could back some checkers up they'd be happy yes. they'd, they'd, be, yeah. they'd be happier mm -hmm. so i mean at a glance it looks like take black's checks third checker off of his two point and put it back say on his uh uh eight nine or ten yeah. point I, and, uh, I can go and do it no, yeah, yeah, a, Okay, four one. So you're not going to split. Do you slot? Because uh, blacks fours, uh, blacks fours are all pretty good anyway. No, no, mm, not I, really. I hate putting a man on the on the middle of the six though. This, this this certainly looks prettier. Yeah, I'm pretty good. If you if you if you get away with this, yeah, which he did not. That's a good roll. <laughs> That's a good roll four three. Um, now the shoe is ah, well. Okay, now now stop a second. Yeah. Oh, you, too you, good. You've got a cash here, right? Cash no no question about it. Yeah. So the question now is, as we were saying, uh, I was saying before the break, sometimes it happens, your opponent rolls a bad number, you roll a great number, and all of a sudden you've gone from arguably losing to winning, and you grab the Cuban cash. And this may be a this may be an example of what can really go wrong. You may take a roll, close yeah. one of your points, and play on for a gamut. This this would this my guess is if this, the, the, Even if XG said it was too good, I think it wouldn't be much. Would be good to move yeah, well, <laughs> I've seen people take one if, if, if there's any chance of your opponent taking, <laughs> yes. then certainly no. Yeah. But if it's one that you're certain you're cashing, you're, you see your opponent reaching for his pencil to score it or whatever, and then maybe you should take a roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A long time ago, and we've educated ourselves a lot more, uh, my dearly deceased good buddy Paul McGreal uh, claimed one of the biggest er errors experts made. This is back before we really understood max strategy. Not that we understand max strategy today, but we certainly didn't 40 years ago. Uh, Paul would say one of the biggest, and he, Paul understood, one of the biggest errors experts make is not playing on for gamut. So they cash yeah. game after game when they should be playing for a gamut. Even if the gamut is not that likely, it's a, if it's a relatively free shot, a lot of experts just yeah, take the sure point and move the on. In the hand yeah, yeah. Hand. which is often worth um, much less than yeah. two on the party. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> okay, even position here. Yeah, we've got sort of the same thing all over again. Oh. Uh, both sides trying to build their little primes. Uh, he's forced into doing something with 6-5 because his back check was frozen. 
now an ace or a two five or a four three are kind of ooh. Oh, I'll take that though. Yeah, it's not bad. Three down. I don't think you make the three. You just bring three down. Oh, for sure. Three down. It also it also gets kind of gets all fifteen checkers into play. Mm. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't so. think without that, where do you want that black checker? Well, maybe on the bar is best, but pr arguably where you want that black checker is on the 24 point where he was. Okay. Yeah. So I think, I think that was, uh, yeah. uh, uh, pretty, 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 so pretty so. yeah, it was, and he'd still be on the 24 point. Yes. I think that was, uh, played once again, played too quickly. Maybe he looked at it and assessed the, yeah. the relative merits, but I, I would have. Um, I would have not the clock, he's got more time than he could wish for. Yeah. They do play very quick, especially in the you get a bit tired. People tend to start rushing. Well, we're just zipping along here. Look at this pick and pass and leave all these blocks. Is, was that necessarily the right play? I thought the person with the most blocks wins. That's what well, we, we, we get away with that. <laughs> Back in the day, yeah. Back in the day, the person with the most blocks knew how to play with them, and the opponents didn't. <laughs> Okay, what's um, what's going on here? Okay, can well, you, really, can you talk yourself into taking this? No, I don't think so. Even with a dilly builder, that yeah. checker until it gets a pass. Okay, eight to five. Okay, what do we? Um, what do you clever experts know about eight to five? How, well, uh, three away, many away. I'd put that in the category of them. So therefore, if I was six away, cancel as many away. I think so. In yeah. my book. Uh, so I wouldn't keep, I very rarely keep if I was a Nikolai in this, but I'd often miss them. I'm, I'm looking at matches and I've missed a 150 cube, but in general, I... Well, I you're, not cube, you're not cubing where it's uh, gambling in both directions. No, it's not gambling at all, yeah. Cube, yeah, 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 yeah cube, you're cubing it. You're looking for the right opportunity to cube in a race when you're leading. Yeah. yeah uh, then uh, otherwise, you're yeah. not touching yeah. it. Meanwhile, the guy with the, uh, the guy with five wants to get uh, multiples of two. Yes. So, so get get the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, two, four to go, six to go, eight to go. Um, you want to get two or four points, not one point. Yeah. And in that regard, six people is interesting though. You could have done a double tie rather than making three point. To now that Nick, now that Brendan's got the five, the twenty points, that three points is a bit silly. <laughs> Not a whole lot going on here, I guess. Well, where's your ace? Because you'll end up stacking because he's yeah, he's, he's yeah. Got a base safe, isn't he? Rather than bold, yeah. Because if you play, I mean, if you if you play the four and then pick up your dice and get yourself into trouble like somebody did yeah. years ago, that might be a better play than this. If you play the four, you have to play an ace. <laughs> you know, an article about that decades ago, and. Uh, uh, Inside back in which Bill and Bertie and I published for a bunch of years. I yeah, did an article on the, on the uh, underhanded chouette. <laughs> and, and in the underhanded chouette, you know, if you were quick about it, you could you could play one of your dice and <laughs> then, then play one half your roll and then pick up the dice. And there was a big dispute in Istanbul shortly after that article came out because a player playing the big money round played only half his roll and picked up his dice. And, and uh, that Enough time may have gone by that if I talk about that, someone won't threaten to kill me. Mm -hmm. But we had quite a dispute. Right. Because <laughs> the guy doing the playing blamed it on me. So Kent made me do it. I read about it in the inside. Kent owned it. Yes, I <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, White's got a very pretty position here, but he's stuck back on the twenty point. Yeah. Um, who can who can count races? I'm not sure what the count matters. Black has to untangle some of this mess, whether he's ahead or not. Yeah, it's a pretty ugly position. How do we get? How do we get four checkers on the <laughs> three and that. two on the six and four on the eight? Look at look at this field goal setup or whatever <laughs> goal post setup. Really, really weird. Yeah, he's getting a nice blood vest again. Yeah. It's going to be a shot coming, I'm sure. Yeah, well, White's going about his business, build, yeah. building his board as quickly as he can. Oh, good. It's important to get more checkers on yeah, the three points. You're going to four. You might as well have five. By the way, I mean, it. it, it it would not have been insane to pull the six down, leave a two mm. shot, and slot the four. Point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it went it went way too fast. There were two white blots there. Yep. It would certainly be worth looking at. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, bringing this position home. And now he's got picture was got this stuck on three, isn't he? Uh, he doesn't have a three. Yeah. Now, now he either has to play a three down and a five in, or he's got or he's got to uh, make a mess. Yeah, so <laughs> or, 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 or do this. I mean, look, look, this, I mean, this is this yeah. is you can't quite do it. 
but with just one or two pints in me, I double as white. <laughs> I mean, this is, uh, how in the world is Black going to win this? Yeah. He's going to roll double fives twice? I mean, uh, yeah, five two with the final three. The only yeah. good news for Black is White may have to move to get to clear the playing field. Recording white, stopped. What White wants now is more back checkers spread all over the place. They don't even need to make points. Just spread them all over the place. Yeah. Little little landmines. Yeah. You know. Oh. Oh, oh no this, no this no! Is no. Crazy, it, it, this is we did not want to that 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 no, guard on the on the midpoint was big. What I can't see it. Oh, he got four home. three. It was in the most right. So uh, now if it goes. Oh, oh my goodness. Is he? There's only there's one, the one player on the planet that can calculate the accurate effect of pit count here. <laughs> He's not in the room. He's not. I invited him to join us. I mean, if, we can see, if we can see Art actually calculate the effect of pit count here, <laughs> that would be worth the price. I'd pay I mean, a lot of money just to see that. Yeah. Boom. Well, this looks... This looks horrible. Yes, I think I would. Uh, I mean, where, forget effective pit count. What's the actual raw pit count? Uh, we've got 43. Well, he's, he's actually banking somewhat on the. We've got 71 for whites. And God knows what black is. No matter what it says, it's worse. <laughs> 66 and 26, so that's 92. Yeah, so it's. Uh, uh, anyway, you look at it, it's, uh, it's not good. What a mess. Which maybe. Maybe could have been avoided, maybe not. I think so. We didn't see where the, where the first two checkers ended up on the three, but I'm sure there was mistakes later on, I'm sure. Yeah. And here again, if they, it, it, another good reason to slow down is to give us a chance to talk. Yes. <laughs> and actually complete a sentence or even two or three sentences. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's impossible to play this well, this fast, and, and at the level that they'd be happy with. I think when you're not going to play sub four. This speed. And actually, as I've been retraining myself these last several years using XG, stuck it alone at home in my basement doing nothing but, you know, eating Pop Tarts and playing XG, uh, or I get on Galaxy and play nothing but speed matches. Mm. And I try to not use any of my time on speed matches. Okay, and then when I go back and, and find what what errors I made that I wasn't aware of. How does it compare with your, your best PLS? Is it 50% more? It's worse. And it, the big thing is um, play too fast. It's a blind blind spot. Mm -hmm. I didn't see I could hit a checker. Yeah, I didn't yeah, see yeah. all my options. And it's not just for fun uh, and torture. It's to teach myself types of positions where I'm more likely to make an error. And when they come up, focus in on them. Yeah. And if I don't get the feedback of playing too fast and having XGB or Galaxy be able to tell me afterward, mm -hmm. then I don't know where those error points might be. Yeah. It's good for you. Sort of a self therapy compliment. The best player I've seen to play literally with no time in the bank is Thomas Murr from he's Danish, I think. He's played virtually a, a whole match with no time because he used it all up in the first game of the 17 point match. It was amazing. Anyway, where we go? So we've got a mutual hold, well, holding game, and so keep actually in this position should be should be too difficult for them. Okay. Okay, we can see everything. Yeah, we can see the beautiful players. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. So. If, if you head, then you do this. But more we'll put our pictures on there. Can I, can I, can I wear a mask? Are masks required? <laughs> you know that I did. <laughs> well, Does he, uh, somebody, he, somebody count this up. Only can I move off the 20 points so quickly. He must know it. He must be doing a running count or something, but I don't think he does that. Now this looks well me. now so, somebody's going to stop and please uh, stop <laughs> <laughs> when he puts the checker up there he's, yeah. now i'm going to stop and think finally <laughs> and we can see what's happening well what's happening uh comparing two black checkers in the 16 move them to the 13 there's four against four so you're six down there two black two white checkers on the oops i guess he's done it yeah um well it's i think it, even if it was very close he probably still um, that i think i think it's it, it was two or three pips, and it's now not. And it's now definitely not. So now, now Black should be counting. I guess he's got the running count. Oh, That's the end of that. Okay. 
I don't, uh, it's not inconceivable that even double sixes back the other way saves, doesn't save the game. My, 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 okay, that was a legal play. My guess is that's, that's the end of that. Yep. And somebody either thinks they knew what was happening or knew what was happening. So two away. Yes. So it must, it must be two away than three away. Oh, he got that from, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. from three away. He got his point. He got his point. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. maybe that's, maybe that explains waiting on a roll. Mm. So that's a big that's a big point mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. now basically two away you 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 basically my friend mcgrill used to have a saying years ago at two away four away if you're two away um and you're not sure when to double uh double the turn before you start thinking about should i double okay, <laughs> okay. Sure. and then he said if you are sure you're going to know when to double then double on the opening roll because you're going to be wrong <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty good advice. I mean, the, the the good rule from two away, four away from Paul years back, again, before lots of match equity stuff had been done, was you should have spent it in two there. Uh, almost certainly. If you're leading, if you're, by the way, one of the things XG has taught some of us uh, geriatrics is the amount of times that we thought we had to hang on to the ace point and be safe, that it's just stone cold wrong. Yeah. You know, get um, get much, much more splitting. It's not just a stylistic thing. It actually means something, mm -hmm. uh, particularly a little bit into the game. Yeah. You know, where you know, oh, he's already got a three point prime in front of me. I can't split into that. Well, you, unless he's got like nine, 10, 11, 12 checkers piled up there, you damn well better split into that. Yeah. Okay, so at, at two away, four away, you basically never double when you're two away and save yourself the energy and just double on the opening roll when you're four away. And that's not bad functional advice. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's that? Everybody's got a prime. Well, this is a split and cover and this is a great roll. You can't stay back on the 24. No, you, you, you got to have some some conception of the timing of the thing and this is just absolutely everything points to get up there and and do the best you can now if there's not a decent role from alex he but then should be thinking of right six, three, three, six, three. well yeah it's certainly there, there's some there's some double from the air things that creep in again yeah a yeah. bunch to go two to go um you know, I'm not saying it's right or wrong to double here, but you should certainly have been thinking about that. doubling. Yeah. You know, and notice notice the sometimes overplayed in your head, but sometimes legitimate. If my threats aren't carried out, things are going to go all to hell. Well, if all to hell means you're getting gammoned, then you're not getting the reward when something good happens, and it's not you're not saving anything when something bad happens because yeah. you get gammon and lose match anyway. Yeah. That that. That's that nice. may not have been a classic example of it there, but it was certainly one to look at yes, and please. go through the mental processes of trying to figure it out. He's going to slot the two, which is a good play, and then we'll give himself good sixes to make it. Now, who's behind in the race? Because that's the person who's going to win. Well, that is, yeah, <laughs> it's, um... it looks like Black's got a pretty big edge here. Oh, oh. what a lovely one. Whoa! Whoa! So, White needs to uh, hopefully. <laughs> Well, this Trade is that black doesn't roll a once anytime. The white needs to stay on the bar as yeah. long uh, forever. Yeah. There's not much. Really not... Oh, what? Oh. Maybe, was... maybe this is a good idea. time to get out of there. Yeah. What's, he, what's he thinking about? He's thinking, oh, I'm so lucky. He's always about look. I was speaking of screaming. I was in the finals of a tournament in um, Prague, might have been 2002. Mm -hmm. And I was playing. Um, at the time, one of the hottest players in the world, the German guy, Johannes Leverman. Leverman, yes. And um, McGreal was doing closer to commentary mm. three blocks away. And I doubled in a situation like this where there was a, I had one checker back and he had two in the bar like this and I needed a one six. But you had how many I doubled, I, I had, had enough. A few rolls to get it. I had a few yeah. rolls to get it. Yeah. I doubled, um, Johannes snapped it up. I rolled one six and I could hear the screaming. <laughs> I could hear the screaming coming from the, the closed circuit TV room. 
All right, that was actually a, a best two out of three nine point match final or something, and that won me the first, yeah, the first nine point yeah. match. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Meanwhile, this is not so great for Black. By the way, there's, there's going to be a, a he'll get a shot something like ninety percent of the yeah, time, at least, yeah. um, and often more than one shot. And yeah. This is a little this is a little hokey. It is. Um, the danger the danger here is White comes in too soon mm -hmm. and gets gets a little. I don't know about. The crunchy thing. I might. I might break the other point. I don't know. I, I think. I, you know. I uh, okay. You have a four in a row is more than you may think. Mm. You, you kind of want to roll a five or a six. You got to leap that four in a row. Oh wow! Couldn't right. we have kept the kept the uh, yeah nice play? He tried to play a six. Couldn't we have kept the six point one roll more? Okay, what's that? One two three. Yeah, you don't don't think about the two because you might get them for Kevin. So you just got to run around and hop to get. Yeah, All right, know. now any uh, five, four, six, four. Oh, it's a nice one. Seven, oh, that's seven, a good one. Five, four, four six, points. four, and the sneaky four, three. Mm, that's funny. <laughs> All right, now we've just got we've just got six, five. Four, one. There's no choice there. White seems to have time. Yeah, there is. There's some. There is some gammon saving. I, I don't okay, think you want to. I don't think you want to leave the ace point. It's a lot of wasted if you don't know. Yeah, but you may be giving up a lot of your winning chances too. And what are you? You're saving yourself a little bit. Of, here we go. Okay, okay, shot number one. And how's the four, seven, nine, ten? A hits. A hits pretty strong. That is oh, not a hit. Four. Four. Okay, now uh, we got plenty of shots here too. Two biggies. It's not two biggies. Oh, four two. Oh, a shot. That's a shot. Oh, I didn't see that one. That's a shot. <laughs> there you go. Anything with a four is yeah. where it's to be trouble. Okay, here's our second shot. Not as clear a winner, but still probably a winner. Okay, there you go. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe. Let I think the, he's going to say Let, let, let the awesome. lone checker do the work. Six one, good play. And okay, again. Uh, yeah, he may, maybe it, may, maybe you salvage whatever Crawford just, five to go. Yeah, what's I would, that? I would just lose a single. Fifteen or sixteen percent. What's what do you know these things? What's what's Crawford five to go? What well, five goes about to sixteen percent. Okay. When did it get promoted from fifteen? Uh, I don't know. It's fifteen <laughs> in the old table. <laughs> 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 yeah, I still use the old one. Mm. Did ask you one. Yeah. I remember building the old tables. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yeah, I still got my um, uh, well, the paper is very thin there, but uh, it was in Kit Wolves. He's had to play a five point match. I think he had the table in there. So still got I might have there. stolen it from him. And yeah. um, in the early 80s, I published for two years back in one of the champions. Oh yeah, that, that's how and, I did it. In, in the last, I'm not sure. You last, did, did you the pictures in the front of you? No, oh, that, I that, guy, that, that, that guy, guy later died. I, I had more than one player say, "I don't care what you say about me inside the thing. Just make sure I look good on the cover." <laughs> Actually, Kathy Posner said that. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. yeah. I would I would talk to the players and 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 say, "Look, I want to talk about. It. I want to analyze. I give them a chance to comment on some of the plays they make." And, it, you know, there weren't published matches then. People were very sensitive about it. And I did not want to step on any toes or do anything bad. I mean, it took a little while to get everybody happy with me publishing it at all. Mm. You know, um, the players. Yeah. And so I would give the players a chance to give their own comments. I'd say, here, here are the things I'm going to talk about. Mm. And when I approached Kathy, she said, you can say whatever the hell you want, just make me look good on the cover. <laughs> I don't know if my artist succeeded or not, but she didn't complain. <laughs> Meanwhile... Um, okay, why just gonna do something? I'm gonna attack this one without numbers. Okay, he's still gonna attack it. Well, does he? Is he attack it or just, no? No, just play, just, just, just play safe. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Ooh, saw the ace four was. Yeah, one run back home. I think attack is good. Four something. Four well, there. It could be another four. What is it? No, I can't see it. I suspect it is the way, the way it's taking time. It's not a one, it's not a five, six. Yeah, it was that, you know, here where you don't worry about getting, I'm not sure that you yeah, shouldn't just, just put out. the checker in front of his face or pop out, one yeah. or the other. 
I mean, even 13 to seven, mm. uh, at this Possibly. point, you know, you don't care if you're gammon that once your your race is sort of dead yeah maybe these checkers are better you put them yeah, in front of the guy the yeah, yeah yeah and, and putting the checkers in front of your opponent's last fact checker maybe he's gonna roll double ones or one three and then you can attack him yeah yeah and if he hits you having more checkers back maybe a good thing not a bad thing all right well so now we're, we're trying to build our points the problem here um, oh, that's a nice. Yeah. You don't really want well, that point, point six two, away, but, but you got to play safe, it's a spot. and it, it is a landing spot for now. Well, you two has this race. Is this race isn't so horrible, is it? Well, I think the three men back. I think the race is. I think it is pretty bad. Let's see, they're, they're eight away from the midpoint. There's twenty four, and then uh, six more to get to there. Yeah, it's pretty bad. All right, now there's no. Bit wasn't wasn't clever, but No, I'm choice. not sure that was a good idea. Did he did he have choices? He didn't have a choice, but the previous roll he could have popped out to give him good sixes. I think so. Maybe. By the way, here uh, popping out almost no matter what is not even clear as you keep going. <laughs> you know, pop and stop is also reasonable, but popping out to here is not bad at all. And then next turn, you may not want to pick it up. Mm. Yeah, that's been going on throughout. Semi-final at the end of the street. All right. Um, okay, so you're going to leave, leave that there. Ben. Well, he, so he, he, he uh, covered the three point with a five and then stopped and think about it. But I think the, <clears throat> I think the, the holding, the single checker on the midpoint was, was doing the job for him. Was doing the job, yeah. yeah. He didn't need any friends, at least not that turn. Mm. I mean, even when, even when an ace might be fatal, you should think about leaving it there. Yeah. Okay. Because of stuff like this. Only two shots, but the winners. Five, four, or four, five. <laughs> what he is. Uh, there really nothing left to do here. Now, yeah. uh, freeze frame. Now when we come back, we just want to get, get safe. A you know, fun, fun question would have been like with two one, do you, do you or, or with the three four, do you pre clear the ten and leave mm. the nine shot yeah, or not? Possibly, we, yeah. didn't, <laughs> we didn't have that to talk about. Yeah. Actually, there is, I don't know what, whether he's rolled bigger the last three or four. Doesn't look he's, so bad. It's not bad now, is it? He's played that illegal, by the way. But no one's going to say anything. Oh, he took ten instead of eleven. Is yeah. That yeah. Oh, look at that! Mm. Yeah, just solved out now four six. So if he rolls a, a, a four five, he can play it as a four six. Oh, he's in. That doesn't do much. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, what do we got here for problems? Double sixes. What's that? Double, double sixes. Okay, That's a direct so. shot. That is a direct shot. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> it's over. No, I just got a direct shot to win the match. From to win the game. What are you talking about? Hit it. Oh. oh. Six five. Double sixes. Double fives. Five. five. Then it's pausing, so it must be big. It's five five, I think. Oh, it must be five four. Oh, no, five, oh, five three. What's he doing? That's the three. What? what? Okay, so yeah, five three. Oh, I see five three. So it's still a little bit messy. Mm. And staying out might be the best plan, actually. I'm getting excited. I think they were already hyped up. Next match, we've got to give the players tranquilizers before they. <laughs> <laughs> that might at least bring them down to a normal speed. Yeah. We could just play it on half speed on the video, yeah. maybe. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> then we'd end up talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what? Um... I think this is. Oh, okay, final chance. Okay, 6 1 5 1 4 it's 1. Happened. It can happen. 6 1 5 1 4 1. No. Uh, any miracle? One checker off? Yeah, get a couple of double sixes in here. We're not. We're not. Uh... We're not out of this yet. This is definitely a pips versus rolls. Mm -hmm. Whoa, there's four pips and two rolls. You can take seven off his EPC there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 14 off his EPC. A whole bunch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Well, okay. Well, that's so it wasn't particularly uh, nail biting at the end. But... No, well, that was some fun stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, we enjoyed it.
Yeah. Join us again soon for whoever's up next. <laughs> yes. Well, have we, have we done? Uh, oh, we did these, we're still in the quarterfinals, right? This was the um, semi. Well, oh, this was a semi. So there's another one in the final against either Jason or, or somebody else. I don't know. Oh, it's um, Mr. Westbrook. Thank you. Yeah, one one player because he's he's, he's uh, I think he played him. He's I don't want to talk. Eyesight. I do not want to talk about that match. Okay, fair enough. But um, <laughs> fours are better on the final roll, and he rolled fours mm. and double match point. Oh dear. That's after I led 8 0. Yeah, Eric Westbrook is cold. Yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> Tortured twice. Well, the trouble is, if, if he gets to the final, because he has to have daylight coming in to not see, whereas the room where they're playing streaming isn't doesn't have any daylight so but he's also got a couple of uh, extra lamps up close to, to look yeah yeah i played him before yeah. and then um, yeah okay so we'll see if he gets to the final and whether we can alter the streaming positions and something anyway um, all right thank, right. thank you that was fun thank you. we'll yeah. see what happens next yeah no, just... next match right there no we already saw that yeah that's where is that just changing now he's oh gonna... i see i see okay right thank you Yes. Well, it was just, it, it was over quite quickly, but you did just at that. So that yeah. Nikolai won. Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool, travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect. You know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe, or you just wanna hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game. I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers. It even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful doubling cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a, it's a real luxury backgammon board. You know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small, but you could. 
because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. And uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background, and this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag. So easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm and it doesn't weigh much. And uh, yeah, it's just incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now, we have the, the green earth board as well. And then of course we have the, the Galaxy Neptune Blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy <laughs> with this board. I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Where is Mishi, guys? I'm ready to roll the dice. Hey, Mishi! Mishi! Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Çetin Belene. I'm part of UBC Contender 2022. And now you see me with a white board, which is my favorite board, actually. The best thing that I like this board is the checkers. You, it feels like a stone, man. And also, uh, I like simple design here, and I, I also like the sound when the uh, dice hit the frame or uh, checkers hit the frame. I really can't wait for the next year UBC uh, to play with these uh, lovely boards. Bye everybody!
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership. High enough. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below.
I don't mind as long as I know it. Just, I looked at the clock thinking I had a couple of minutes left. I was like, what is there? Yeah, yeah, I, I was watching. I thought you were like, you can't do it. I wish it would beep you after a minute just to give you a little rest. Yeah, it does. Well, it doesn't hear us, but only. I'm alright with my coffee. Um, I'll try and keep it off screen if you can. I even want to go to the studio. Okay, that's it. So, well, you're not there with XG waiting, so well, are you? Uh, oh, are you going to do this one for us? Are you, are you going to, um, are you rating this one? Or what? Are you transcribing it, or can you give me the file after? Oh, I suppose I'll just go on YouTube. Yeah. Just go on YouTube. I don't really want to know. Sure. Ah. So, one fifty seven. Yes. And you realise if you beat me comfortably, you may get a disinvited from the, you know, <laughs> from the. No, it's all right. I was just sat yeah, disinvited yeah. from the. What, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, I'll do my best to move. <laughs> on. So you're better off using black then, you think? Uh, they do seem to stand out. They seem a bit. Okay, why not? The same size. Yeah, they're all the same size. I think the black stand out better. Okay. But I'm, I'm not overly, you know. Right. Well, I'm okay, have match. a good match, Chris. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Not put a millimetre away on it. Yeah. Right, we're on. Okay. Okay, uh, this is uh, John Barnes. You've got me again, I'm afraid, uh, with Andrew Selby this time. And this is the semi final, I think, of Constellation. Constellation. Constellation of this um, is shorter match length than normal because we got we had to get through 128 players. 28 players. So, yeah, it's it's been a five point all the way through. Um, so, good luck on your side, and you can anyone come with these. Right. A bit ugly stack there. From Chris Rush is well known to many of you, English captain. Mm. Um, staple part off. of the world English team, as is Joe, of course. Um, Jeff Hall, uh, late bloomer to the game, really. Yeah, yeah, he? he played a while in the past and has come back to it, and he's really strong. Yeah, he's top, top five in the country, I think, in the ratings. Not that they mean anything, of course. As I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, me and you and Jeff are the top five, aren't we? Yeah, uh, I think, well, I think the one name you just mentioned is yourself that's there on their <laughs> end. You've been there perpetuity. <laughs> right, okay. So he doesn't run out with a 6 4 year uh, his slots, which is good to me. Basically, with that stack on the six point that Jeff's got, uh, you don't really want to be moving your back checkers. <clears throat> right, whereas the. Conversely, I think Jeff would like to do that, but that's a bit too risky. So yeah, on stacking that, but uh, interesting game. Two one does the job. Now the two is it too big to play down? Leave six one six four. Come off the five and stack. Yeah. Okay. It's just a run. It's a run. attacking with two two checkers there. Five six. Timing will be a problem for Jeff's. Yeah, he did. That's, a, that's actually a deceptively good throw. Again, very difficult to, to make that four and five now. Can't see that's a five three. He's running out. 
So he's going to now act, can activate those checkers on the stat six point and hit. That's all good. It's really awkward. I smell a cube. <laughs> well, because the cube might be coming, will you, would you, uh, would you hit? Well, would you hit to try and stop them cubing? But oh, you shouldn't work against someone as. as I think I'd cube more if it's just done. Let's clean this potential gap. That's uh, right, so yeah, avoid these two men step on the 24 again. crystal pull no straight in where the cube is. Now, then, um, race wise, it's reasonably close, isn't it? Now, is that probably his, his passing? It's, the structure was terrible, but things that I pass, Marsh never underestimate winning one the first point in a five point match. Mm. The next cube is. Volatile in favour of number points. Yeah, I want to, I want to look at that again, that position. Could have been a take. I thought Jeff might have spent, spent longer thinking about it. Very good for Gamma, potentially. Oh, lovely roll number one. Just going to play. Two, you're gonna fight for the advanced anchor. Two down. Yeah, if you came on the twenty twenty, what's it called, the twenty three point, and then the when the eight point gets made, then you're looking a bit silly. So entering on the twenty ones, you're right. Six something. I don't remember being so glary. No, so matter actually. But they're working with the same color on both of them. By three, that's an anchor and a really boring stacky play. And now we have a game for a while. Yeah. Double three. Oh, and that probably plays itself. <clears throat> yeah, that's where the checkers go on the 10 points. And although Chris is very um, stiff, you know, he, he can't play freely. So Jeff's thinking whether he wants to make the 18 points. Make the 18 point, then Chris can easily play behind him. So I think if you're ahead, you make the 18 points. And if you're a little bit behind, maybe you stay back. Plenty of time to run in the next few minutes before Chris makes any form of board. This is the double three of them. Chris will probably end up stacking. He doesn't need, uh, doesn't need to slot, so he just make it naturally. Good roll. <clears throat> Four oh, one, not great. I think you play safe here. Just play behind. So it's been reading Mitch's book. Mitch's, Mitch's book. Once you've you cleared uh, Mitch's book, Mitch's book. Yeah, yeah. once you've cleared everything. Yeah, you get auto safe mode. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Great books, aren't they? That's great books. Fantastic. The other extreme from the intellect of our Benjamin, who had the pleasure of it today. Yeah, yeah but she just says that this is what you do when you simplifies the game so beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> but there is a there is a space a place for backgammon in the mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Actually, had a little chat with us just one on one, and he went through the, the background to it and about variants yeah. and expectations. It was, uh, it's the arts and the little Robertas and the, the world that transformed this game. Hmm. Pre computer for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's basically just uh, A level statistics is all you need to be able to do uh, to get to the formulas that uh, Art has come up with. Which is why two of our best players are two youngsters that are coming from that university and have only been playing online for three years but <laughs> <laughs> are doing statistics. Yeah. <laughs> Even um, Art explained to me, you know, you know the 7n plus 1 formula? Mm -hmm. It's actually 7n plus 1 um, uh, plus or minus 1 over 6 to the n, and he actually explained why that was. <laughs> so, that was uh, pretty cool. Never seen that before. For my purposes, at least, I wasn't in there. <laughs> <laughs> I was really thrilled that we got Art to come over. <laughs> 
Mm. Number six plays uh, if it was forced, yes. So we're going to end up with this, this standoff again against the 18 versus the 13. So I don't know. I think um, my personal feelings, I think Chris will run out of timing. <coughs> Create Jeff should get a cubing opportunity. Jeff throws a six now. He can a little bit of bother. Three something. It's not a clearing roll. Yeah, it's not going to tell. It's a. Oh, so okay, two one, yeah. Right, so a six, any six is bad. Uh, so that's bad. So he's going to have to play off off the mid. But I don't think it's volatile. But I don't think it's a cube when you've got a blot in your board like that, is it? No, and he's got a decent hand board. Yeah, and he's still going to clear that ten point. I'm sure, it'd be an easy ten. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want this to keep. It's got some bad rolls. Uh, so, yeah. I would hold on for now. Okay. Well, a good roll. Not even sure that's a better roll than if you'd thrown a six and had to think about whether he hits it or not. Yeah. <laughs> that's a buff average roll, I'll say that. This is an interesting one. Does he clear the ten? Points? Yeah, it's, it's a good pre clearing now. It's a lot of bad guys to get past the four point. There, isn't it? Well, then it's interesting whether whether Chris would leave the block there if he if he just clears if he leaves the the points on the fourteen point would would, would Chris leave it there? Well, at least with this, you've got no bad rolls next have you. If you just uh, by the time you do leave a shot, then maybe Chris. Might have all six and you're, you're, you're 20, 30, but you're, you're well ahead in the race. Well ahead in the race. So I'd imagine it's with four checkers there. Um, if he's all ahead in the race, this is probably a key now then, because any small double is... I think that's what he's now doing, his pip count, but he'll find the easy yeah. Okay, it's going to be a take. Can see it racing up because he's mm. bad rolls. And actually, poor race, very nice take. Yeah. So we'll get full value from the Riku there. Yeah. Okay, so there's one of the sixes. Oh no, he doesn't have to play off there, but he will. I think he will. Yeah. I would. I wouldn't I wouldn't lose the spare off the six point. I'd put another one on there. Don't need to make that two point. Okay. Yeah. This is no. Yeah. Did you do a count? Did you know? I think you saw you. It's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it's not. 18, 20, 44, 21, 96 on white. Previous row. It's only 78. 69, 70, yeah, 76, 78. Uh, yeah. So, so, 90, what was it? 90, 60, 60. Yeah. It's now 86. 86. Okay. So about eight, eight, eight or nine dips. Right. Plus cross, plus the crossovers. Like three, okay. You definitely make it now. Oh, so actually was teaching us all about EPC and... Uh, <laughs> well, we know that if you play six one, it's going to be wasted. Bread rolls and sherbet pips. <laughs> <laughs> Pomegranate pips, yeah. <laughs> okay, four two, you've got to stay back and... Uh, Okay, that's in case you get a shot next roll. So, some bad numbers here. But I reckon this is now about racing, <clears> getting <throat> his board primed to maximise his racing. Yeah. And I always said this, I said this to you, that if there's a really, really big difference between the advanced and the really decent players, it's, it's just these minuscule elements yeah, leaving the old pips just to maximise positions yeah. later. It's yeah. so, as you said, it's incremental. It's so undervalued. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay, that's a good number to see. Now, it might be sort of... Okay, that's, that's a second pass that makes it crazy. So, yeah. yeah. I need to ride to you there for a while. Oh, well, try again. <clears throat> this uh, looks um, pretty much straightforward now for a single game, I think. Chris beat me in the first round of this, I remember. Yeah. We were joking at the time that maybe it's better to lose in the first round than have to play and then lose in the eighth round or something. It's a, it's a long process to get to the final of the constellation this time. Okay, so two one for Jeff. Let's keep you up to date of how people are getting on. Um, Nikolai Exenti, I think this is how you pronounce his name, Romanian guy. He's in the final and he's going to be playing either Jason Champion or Eric Westbrook. Now, Jason is a Bristol player, Eric's from the Midlands, I think. Eric is playing in a, his own room that has plenty of uh, natural light coming in through the windows because he's uh, he has trouble uh, with his with his eyesight. But I imagine if Eric does get to the final, that they might have to ask him to play in the streaming room or move all the equipment to the special adjoining room where he's playing. <clears throat> So what we think about five three. Mm. Yes, yeah, like technical play there. But you will need to roll extremely well to get anything from this. Okay, there she rolled. Right. Get two one. I, in terms of the way this tournament's gone this week, weekend, it's been a, a great tournament. I've really enjoyed it. Great vibe. Lots of old uh, friends that I've met since, uh, no, not seen since before, before COVID, actually. Yes, yeah, so it's great to get people together. We did think that the format meant that there was a lot of play on Saturday. So some people started at half 10 and finished at about half 11. So that's 13 hours of fun together. So, I think they've booked the bank holiday weekend um, for next year. So that would be nice to have it over three, three, three and a half, four days. So that's um, hopefully. Well, my personal opinion is we're going to reverse the format. Reverse? Get the main out the way first while everyone's there and have the jackpots and the oh, events to keep everyone on the last step. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, what I don't like to see is is people, people leaving in droves on a Sunday afternoon so that the finals played with no one there to watch it. That's uh, that was a shame. Uh, and we're going to have a big cocktail party next year then, to ensure people. Oh, I like it. It's going to be kind of painful. As long as Sir Wilkinson out. isn't there, because that's the end of the <laughs> suite. <in. laughs> Absolutely. It's members' money. Might as well spend it. We don't need to make a profit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, uh, the funds being used to for, for cocktails, you imagine. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> right, six two. You missed the you missed the slotted uh, checker. So I still went out. And advantage, Jeff, in this. Chris needs to get those back checkers split somehow. Chris is in an eager beaver oh. to want to get a cube across. Yeah. Four away. He's going to split here. He can't slot. He's going to he can't stay back there. Okay. Right, lots of good rolls here. You can just. Bring that check around, it can make 
I think it, okay, you could make the bar, but I think you just say to that checker, put a spare on the 11. And it's interesting because as, as we saw in the last game, safety once you've cleared yeah. your checkers pay dividends. Yes. And there's lots of good rules for Chris, not, not much happening there for Chris. Is he keeping it? Build his board. Yeah, build his board. Double slot, maybe? I'll just yeah. bring 13 10. Double, you've got five on these. Six point D. Yeah. Bill Roberti ringing in your ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one of his worst roles. He had lots and lots of good ones there. 6 5. Does nothing. That's got to be his worst by a long way. <sighs> 6 2 is also a bad role. So obviously now he could play big, couldn't he, because of the open two checkers. Yeah, yeah so that's one reason why I thought because he, he might not hit now on the three and come down from the third to yeah. the seven and go for it. I think that's what he should do. The alternative is just play Wimpy to the two points and leave eleven shots. Is but Jeff's Jeff's going to be more aggressive than that. I think. I think uh, only rewards aggression generally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a little bit wimpy. Anyway, he's ahead in the race. I presume. Yeah, he is. But, uh, okay, so about six, but a good one. And Chris is going to think. I guess he'd like. He has. There's he's got contact's not a problem. He can, He hasn't got a bad game. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> he's getting nowhere if he doesn't hit. Mm -hmm. He's facing a cube in the near future if he doesn't. So, what are the six? Do you play to yeah. the 16 point you bring down? No, you, you've got to assume you're going to get hit and you want to start building your. Uh, you actually want to. You're quite happy to have a prime on the two and three point in this game. Right. That's going to defer the cube for a long time. Yes, I'll leave them both there yeah. so you can anchor on one of I'm, those I'm points. Happy with contact. That, that doesn't, to me, I'm not sure what the value of that is. Mm. Unless you get missed. <laughs> Which, uh, you're also offering more double hits. Was, well. Yeah, the double, double hits would be dreadful. 4 1, okay, so. Okay, hitting is, uh, I think you got to hit with the four from the bar. And the one, the choice of dropping down to the seven, the seven or the ten, I would call it. I prefer, I prefer that so you've got an additional bit of Sure, everyone wants to do it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Oh, we got. Oh, I have to play this. This is it's just not anchor on the two. Bring the nine round to the eleven. Yeah, I hate I hate anchor on the two. But you might be right in that case. Just it's it's got got three rolls. He's, he's got enough gaps. Yeah. Okay, well, five point can wait. Just bring the one round and you can make the five point later. Yeah, you? if you're missed. Yeah, I'm okay. Three way, four way. It's hard to send a cube at that score, isn't it? You might, you might defer and just. He's got racing because by the time black comes in, white will be pretty home. Seven, yeah, three way, four way. way. Six, forty-two for white. I would make another. I try and make a, another point before I send it myself. So the race is virtually even. Yeah, it's actually virtually even. So black has the structure. It's just looking to prime, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I would, uh, I'd hold off. This is a three-way, four-way. Hold off. I suppose the, the way of looking at it is it's an easy take. Mm. Well, this good article was not it? Uh, do you remember Jeremy Big Guy a long time ago wrote about this score when he called it a semi automatic weapon? So, although Chris, it's not an automatic readable, uh, but it's semi automatic because the slightest chance Chris will. Chris doesn't need much to. No, and then one hit in arrears if you yeah. got a double three. Or a double so, five. Yeah. That's interesting. Semi automatic weapon. And of course, it's, and of course from. Jeff, he's lost equity in the cube anyway. Yeah, he'll never be able to cash this game now. He's got to play until the end. And he's got plenty of gaps there. One, two, three, four gaps he has to somehow uh, get past. He's bound to be leaving some 
fire shots on more than one occasion. Couple of threes are lovely. Oh. What point do you make? I think I don't think you make the. You could, couldn't you? No, I, I think the five points cements your structure now for the rest of this game. Got very few bad rolls. Yeah, I suppose you've got the 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 nine point is not in direct range. It's a week. You shouldn't have too much difficulty bringing down from the mid. Yeah, that's a good plan. And God bless him for laughing. I'll be happy. Yes, <laughs> make the five point. Don't think about it. <clears throat> it's an easy game when you can roll doubles. I would play to the five here, I think. Let's bring them both into the five. Sixes. Exactly. Huge flexibility now with fours and fives later on. Yeah. Two, okay. So Chris is getting ready. So now but... he's just got to be careful and bad threes. So he's just going to give himself ideally something on the four point. Okay, well, he's going to have to leave it indirect. It's only five threes, isn't it? He's going to have to come in off the eight because otherwise he's running out of threes. You want to keep the spare there and just play to the. Yeah, the I'd be worried if you didn't do that. You went to the ace and you've got no three next to Well, you've got the three that you just played there. Yes, but then if you've got five and three. Okay, Chris is okay. waiting in expectation. Okay, I think it's worth the two shots and the, the, the asset of the three point is. Uh, Clearing, clearing the eight's an option, but I don't think so. I think this is better. Yeah, he actually had four really bad rolls next to it, didn't do yeah. Four, two, one. Okay. Now, if you can clear the eight, maybe this is the role to do it. Eight, eight off from my nemesis, leaving eight. <laughs> <laughs> Gaz has got a thing about eight. As well, really? Because he hates leaving eight. <laughs> It's good enough, for, bad enough for him, it's yeah. bad enough for me. It would only have been um, <laughs> four shots, though. So it wouldn't have been the whole Yeah, no, no, of course. The double falls out. So let's see if we can clear the eight now. It shouldn't be too much difficulty. We'll see. Six now. Oh, saw the one. Saw the one. <laughs> no, he's not shaking his head, yeah, so he wasn't six. <laughs> Okay. Okay, now I can move it. Yeah. And Chris is hoping to roll a six so that he can slow down. <clears throat> she does. That's a, happy with that. French that change suggestion generally as a rule of thumb, are you more likely to be have the potential of being left a shot with a Two point anchor or a one point anchor. One point, I think one point. That's more. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you say that to the end, or, yeah. Because uh, yeah. your adage of being frustrated at having to make the two point anchor is bearing mm. reality now, but it's actually not so. It never served a purpose. Really. No, the once the Chris or Jeff already had the seven point clear, didn't he? Which I think the seven point is one that you want to clear first against a two point anchor. Is that statistic correct? I believe it's so. actually ninety percent chance of being oh, eight shots yeah, at an yeah. ace point. Yeah, it might be after they've taken fourteen sure, shots off. Sure. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's about that. Yeah, I don't know. If that was a Walter Trice thing or not, or McGreal, but I definitely heard it a long, long time ago. Um, yeah, ninety percent chance. <laughs> That's with optimal play. So even if you've read and absorbed old Mitch's book. And they've got a perfect structure. I still think it's right. Just for those, in case you are listening in and you are interested, the final will be broadly at six o'clock. Um, the other semi final is well in progress. We've got that's an interesting one. It's Jason Chapman. Do you know Eric Westbrook? 
I played it many times. Um, yeah, it's. But I could, I can, I can comment. I think Jason is a stronger player. I've had more difficulty playing Jason than playing Eric. Yeah, he's done really well. I think he's having the, his best tournament of his life, I think, Eric. So. And yeah. Nikolai, the two of them have beaten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nikolai is an extremely fast player. Um, so he doesn't play at a level of some of the guys here. He couldn't, he couldn't play at that level and play that quick. Um, so I suppose Jason might, might, yeah, Jason probably is a little bit stronger than, than Nikolai, I think. Okay. If Eric does get to the final, is the stream is he going to have to move rooms? Uh, we're going to have a we we'll have to have a discussion. Like it's whether Nate can move all his gear into that room. He needs a room with clear natural. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we can even. Uh, we need to be able to. Yeah. I can't imagine we could stream it in a base sense of an overhead camera. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure we could stream it, but it would be great if it was obviously properly within the room and uh, we're sure they're going to be in the presence of Joe Dweck, who will arrive soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice to make a fan of it. <laughs> we could have a very low-key final. Yeah. <laughs> Played in, we could have three different rooms. <laughs> The stellar field we had, and Nikolai the Eric Westbrook final would have been uh, a bookmaker's it, dream. Yes, he would have a lot more than that. Uh, Leicester winning the Premiership or something. But, yeah. <clears throat> Whoever wanted to have run a book here is probably now going, damn, I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so. So Crawford. So that's a hit. I'm going to stack those and hit and bound, I think. I'm going to play aggressive here, Chris, because it doesn't matter if you get gammoned. You've you only got one man back, so you should attack it. Yeah, I'm going to play aggressive here. Yeah, I'm You've been struggling with the dice in this game compared to Joe. Mm, yes. Nice double hit. Put the pressure here to all that five. More good result. Chris's tattoo in his hand is not, it's not quite as good as the ones I see the footballers have on. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Put his hand there again and have a look. I don't know who the page to have that did to. It's incomplete. For the feet there. Okay, five four. Now making the two is too deep. Um, so you're gonna move some of the back checkers, I think. Uh, I just, well, yeah, I'd leave the plot on the seven because you want, you want to use that to make a point. A better point than the two point. Okay, you need duplication fives. That's so he can. He can play he can play from the back way all, all the way to the fifteen point of duplicate fives. That's what I can do. Is, there, is his point is his piece on the two point? Doing any value at the moment, could you just run it out? Just I'd, well, yeah, I'd, I'd run the other one, it'd be a bit more flexible, okay. Um, but yeah, it could be right. I don't particularly want that ace point. And in these sort of positions, from your perspective, what are you trying to achieve in your back game here? Because was, well, was there a mileage in Chris just sacrificing getting five, six, seven pieces back? No, I think first and foremost, I want to try and avoid that back game, <laughs> even though it's not a bad strategy at the score, but. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to. If I'm playing a bad game, it'd be something like this where I've got the, the advanced tank. Advanced tank as well. Okay. And then 
obviously it's things go badly, then, then you might want to make the ace later or the two or something. This is identifying the early to mid game strategies is probably the hardest mm. for certainly for definitely for intermediate players that are yeah. advanced. I had the pleasure of playing with Jan Safi today. Mm. Yeah, that's good. And I sent her as a math student going to Exeter. She's got all the tools other than understanding the strategy. Mm. And now someone needs to teach her the strategy. The maths is easy, as you said. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, Chris didn't want to obviously lose the mid, so we had to play something like that. Okay, Jeff would be happy with that. Actually, I think Chris will, because he needs a bit of time. Mm. Okay, so we're going to make the follows here. Yeah, this is a pretty, pretty even game, I think, in terms of winning chances. Obviously, if it was a money game, then there's plenty of gammons, but they don't matter. <clears throat> Big fan of the four five advanced deck. Well, I do like, I do like to have a checker behind it as yeah. a little goalkeeper as well. I think Jeff will attack that phase. Good yeah, it's uh, I don't want to be in the moment. I mean, how hard to clear the 13 and the 14 point. Now, do you leave it there to get some keep some communication? I think with for sure. Just play six fours. Yeah. 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 Just needs contact. Two one. Okay. okay. Well, you can play very ugly and stack. Stack on the six, and all the alternatives. Wow. Ooh, that's as bad as you can. Well, isn't it? Sure. That's even worse than that. You know, Jeff's correctly thinking, I don't want to do this, but he might have to. If you, if you play the other way, it's just too many shots, isn't it? <laughs> Two. Now is it time? Is it time to do you make the sixteen from the? I don't think you do. I think you still need the goalkeeper. No, but I mean, yeah, keep the goalkeeper, but I would lose the, lose this twenty-one anchor. Maybe. Oh, that's interesting. I would have. It's funny. I would have moved that. So yeah, just well, because I'm trying to make the three point now. Just yeah, probably. Not. Oh, lovely roll. Splendid roll. Three. Well, Chris, yeah, Chris needs to keep some presence on the midpoint. He'd like to give them both there, but I don't think he can he play. His board. Yeah, he can't play that deep in, in his no, home I like board. that move. Yeah, it's all right. No big deal if he gets hit. Right, well, there's a shot. So, big moment. Where's the three? Yeah, just bring it down and give him sixes. So, yeah, you're just, you got, yeah. So, six, four, two, five, one, five, two. Yeah. Can't see what else possibly is here. No, there's nothing else. What? Oh, this. Uh, well, maybe, yeah, you can look at that. I just assume that least shots. The least shots, indeed. And he's understand. Was that down or was that out? Um. I think I'd have come out, I'd have kept some sort of. This, his, his arm is all split now and he's got nasty things like that. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah no, no, no. I think you're right. I think a four one down, what have you got to lose? Yeah. Yeah, you're not worried about being attacked on the, you'd left the 21 point, so we're not going to be attacked when that block's there already. Yeah, I think you missed one there. It's always, um, actually, it's trying to help any of the intermediates, how often they don't look at the opponent's home board. Yeah. 
it's see the single yeah, point just, on the ace saying you, you, you've got an insurance plus there to play this. Yeah, you need to look at the whole whole board, if that's true. There was some analysis of, I think it was goal players or chess players. Chess players, have, and when the chess players look and get the board, they had some tracking on their eyes, and they looked at like intermediate players, or club players, and the grandmasters. The grandmasters were all looking everywhere all the time. All the facets of all the 64 squares. Yeah, no, yeah. no doubt if you were, you and I, even you and I were playing, the number of things going through your head relative to mine will be greater. And oh, you keep grading that down, though. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Don't do yourself a disservice, Andrew. <laughs> I will continue to do myself a disservice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is uh, getting interesting. That's what we were saying earlier. Yeah, the insurance the two policy yes. is a lot. He could have come out earlier yeah. and that double three wouldn't have been as so keen. Exactly. Leaving it's, okay, we reduced the shots before, but leaving the two blocks have come home to roost, haven't they? Um, yeah. <clears throat> okay. And there might be more coming. This has gone really well for, for Chris, I think. Truth is still not throwing that as well. Been a bit unfortunate. Mm. Okay, that's a good shot. So that's that five. Six five, isn't it? Just six five. Yeah, just hits. You got to go. You got to hit because otherwise, you can see what else. Okay, you can make the ace, but I would hit without a second stop. Must <clears throat> mm. spares off the second ace. Yeah, because I just left the anchor because I don't really. So there's nothing to attack me on the anchor. Yeah, and this is the danger. Once it's got three back, behind three point prime. Yeah. It's just desperately waiting, hoping for one of these dancers mm. to buy the. To get some outfield control here. Yeah, you need some presence in the outfield. Now's, now's a good time to do it. If he rolls bigger than a three, he does. Yeah, I think it's better to. You could, you could have played in, but I think it's best to leave him out there because you can then make the seven, eight, or nine points. Yeah, he's enough to give him bad sixes now. We would, yes. I've seen a lot of people do that. They they put checkers on the five and six in these positions, and uh, then they can't do anything with them. It's the best. You got your whole arm. But again, we go back to strategy. This yeah. is a priming game. Mm. You, you need. It doesn't matter where the prime is. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, now out with which five? The other one might, might be right. There. Was the only one with a gig and duplicated the force. Yeah. Back. Two, so just thinking, what can I do with that? Obviously, there's a hit available. Oh, what? He's lost the midpoint. He loses the midpoint. So this is. Yeah, but he's got a little block somewhere, hasn't he? So, yeah, that's a shocking rule. You can't play six when you can't you can't lose a man, so you're gonna have to hit. Would you potentially just accept leaving the block and make the three point the you know, four point that? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's possible. At least, yeah, possible. building up a little bit of a defense. Yeah, maybe that's what maybe I'm I didn't think of it enough. Yeah. Clearly blunder, that was my choice. <laughs> <laughs> Chris has done well here to yeah. slowly turn it around. Um, it's actually done. Yeah, it's, it's, 
but to just make the seven or eight point. Two. Leave it there, just put a spare on it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, nice shot. Okay. Okay, this has become a very interesting position now. Very so the two midpoints facing each other, we've got the slightly off, <laughs> off piste um, midpoints. Yeah, very interesting. Duplicate anything. Least shots. Yeah. We really would like to use the six to jump out because that third, that third checker on the anchor is it's useless. We can jump out with a six or even a four, we would. That's a very good throw because you're running out of timing, Jeff. I suppose just going to leave, not leave any blocks and just. Uh, I'm just going to roll up into the seven. Yeah, just shove them all to the seven. Yeah. In one, okay, just nothing. Right, so Jeff wants a six or a four pretty quickly because he's running out of timing. Four or one, that's not bad. So I think you come out with a four. Can't waste fours or sixes. And again, by virtue of the high board, everything I can and I can check. Well, he'd like to keep that point. Can you do anything more enterprising? Could you leave the anchor? Not too much. I have to say, I'd be tempted to make the two point now, the five point home board. And if I got hit, take my chances on it at four one down. Mm. I don't know what that's just done. Yeah, I don't like those two checkers there. I don't a lot of really. Well, I'd have looked at leaving the anchor and see what that looks like. Because <clears throat> he's got these two stripped out of field points now. Well, Chris has done well. He's been fighting the dark stuff. Jeff's definitely had the best of Oh, ah, commentators. Go. There we go. Chris, Chris owes me a pint. <laughs> <laughs> he's played that illegal, but he's uh, <laughs> still a naughty man. That's our England captain. <laughs> <laughs> and now, for the first time, they've actually worked out who's winning the race. Yeah, I think Chris is miles ahead. He is ahead. Yeah. So, what's the best play? Probably that. Uh, yeah, probably that one. Yeah, but you're so disconnected about it. So it's contact, but not much. And I think Chris will easily uh, get through that. There you go. Yeah, interesting game. That's often with those cases. Uh, just when it's getting really interesting, someone rolls a big set like double six and uh, transforms the game. But that's back at me. <clears throat> I'll go back to the 5 1 passive play by Jeff. The game, Chris, the hit. Yeah. But the meant about. Yeah. Yeah. A 4 1 up. It could have been it. Yeah, I'm not saying it was. That was the game changer. So I think Jeff's just probably one set away from making this interesting. Should just see if Art's here for a quick EPC. <laughs> Thank 
decisions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, for the crowd, this will make it 4 2. 4 2, which would be a. Uh, oh, three away, so three takes. Get <laughs> <laughs> now, whether Chris will do the uh, try and suck a Jeff into. Oh, hello, Miss. Hello. Yeah, that's more the setting, isn't that interesting? So, eight checkers each. Yeah, double six. Chris is a marginal fan of this. Uh, like one, one, one bad roll completely turns around, isn't it? So that was a bad one, really. Four one, medium. Doesn't want fours. Oh, Christopher. Is that? Nice, only one off, but there's a lot of pips. Can Chris get off in three rolls? It'll be a tall order. <laughs> oh my word. Oh, like this against me in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> No, pretty pathetic rolling there. Last three rolls. Or so. I think, in fairness to Chris, there was nothing he could do. No, 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 he played it pretty well. And when he got down to just dice, they just didn't perform for him. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff clearly won't be picked for England on the basis of defeating the captain. Oh, he's lost his head. No chance. <laughs> no chance. No chance. No chance. <laughs> Okay, gentlemen, good game. Good game. We're going to now see where our friend Jay Dweck is and uh, a little build up before the final. Yeah. Okay. We hope we can stream for everybody. <laughs> hope so. Okay, bye. You're, you're quite a bit ahead. I don't know how I managed to catch up. Mm -hmm. Double five, double yeah. 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 Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect. You know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just wanna hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game. I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers. It even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful doubling cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a, 
it's a real luxury backgammon board. You know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small. But you could because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. And uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background, and this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag. So easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm, and it doesn't weigh much, and uh, yeah, it's just, incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now, we have the, the green earth board as well. And then, of course, we have the, the Galaxy Neptune Blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy <laughs> with this board. I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury, portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Where is Mishi, guys? I'm ready to roll the dice. Hey, Mishi! Mishi! Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Çetin Belene. I'm part of UBC Contender 2022. And now you see me with a white board, which is my favorite board, actually. The best thing that I like this board is the checkers. You, it feels like a stone, man. And also, uh, I like simple design here, and I, I also like the sound when the uh, dice hit the frame or uh, checkers hit the frame. I really can't wait for the next year UBC uh, to play with these uh, lovely boards. Bye everybody! What's up Backgammon fans? In this video we're gonna show you one of the coolest products that we have in the Galaxy web shop. The new Dublin Cubes. And look at this cool little uh, box that it comes in. It comes in three different colors. The Earth, the Neptune and the Moon Cube. So let's have a look at them one by one. The Earth Cube, it's beautiful and custom made with the G for Galaxy, it's really, really cool. And the Earth board colors, obviously. Then we've got the Neptune, in the Neptune colors. And then we've got the Moon, which is this grayish Dublin cube. Like, I think this is probably some of the coolest Dublin cubes ever made. They are for sale right now in the Galaxy web shop, so why don't you go in and place an order for these amazing cubes. Thank you guys for watching this video. See you next time. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. What's up Backgammon fans? This is a video about the Galaxy Dice Tower. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's made of this nice material. It unfolds very easily. Let me show you how. You insert your hands here, you hold the sides.
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app, Star Membership, High Analysis, Blunder Database, Private Games, Coin Games, Rating Games, and much, much more. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below.
Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool, travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect, you know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just want to hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game, I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers, it even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful Dublin cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a it's a real luxury backgammon board, you know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small. But you could because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. And uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background. And this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag. So easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm and it doesn't weigh much. And uh, yeah, it's just incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now, we have the, the green earth board as well. And then of course we have the, the Galaxy Neptune blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy <laughs> with this board. I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Two, two trophies to Worcester, yeah. shared the money to play into the decorative board. Okay. <coughs> Day is ready. Ah, oh, hold on a second. We've got some dice. I've got some dice. I don't know. Wait, I can give you. Okay. Oh, thanks, Matt. Thank you very much. All right. Are these all right for the screen, are they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, have a good match, Ian. All right, okay, mate. Okay. There's not volume on the stream, is there? Let me hear yeah. It. yeah. They hear us talking. Yeah. Oh, okay.
All right, sorry for the delay. You've got me again, John Barnes. Um, I, this will be the last one I do. I need to get home soon. Start work tomorrow. Back at school. Right. So, first game, been cubed and Black is coasting to victory. I don't know Ian Gwynn very well. Uh, Jeff um, split to Stratford upon Haven, I believe. Right, so 4 2, do you step up? Uh, all depends on the race, really. Have you got any chance at all? Well, the six point prime stops any attack. Uh, pick and pass there. Okay, race wise, yeah, okay. There's um, this racing chances here. Yes. Okay, so. Entering with a five is pretty big here. It has to do this because the race is too close. Any five is good. Five one, he'll take it, he'll take it. And again, Jeff will have to hit it big right now. Five three, this is one of those situations, I believe, where you have to, um, you have to hit because you've got more chance of winning that way. Right, so Jeff will do a count, but I think you've got to hit and then just play to the bar point and just have one blot. So what is the race actually? So, can you cut it for me? Um, which one would you like to Oh, well, uh, both. <laughs> I'll do black a bit. Uh -huh. So 10, 20, 34, 48. Only six for white. Okay, he's making the play right. So it must, the pick card must be close or he's behind. The play and flunked. He might have a second bite of the cherry, but Jeff will lift if he can. Oh, okay. So he's going to have a second chance of rolling a five. Does he miss Thomas? Oh, he does. You get a third chance. Well, the double six leaves two shots. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so, yeah. You get a chance. You've got to hit those numbers when you matter. It looks pretty safe for Jeff now, isn't it? Yeah, it's just coasting now. When I first glanced at it, I didn't realise the race was that close. Um, but yeah, once Ian got on the five points, it was another matter. So yeah, they haven't extended these. Even the final is still five points. Um, fair enough. It's getting quite late. Very standard for last turn, I think. Which is consolation. Oh, is it? Apologies. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be a single game. The final, yeah, the final is between the Masters. This is. Um, uh, Nikolai Exenti, who you might have seen beat, um, to beat the keep talking, I'll try. Yeah, <laughs> Nikolai, um, against uh, Eric, Eric Westbrook beat Jason Chandler. Eric Westbrook, yeah. So it's Eric Westbrook versus Nikolai Exenti. I uh, can't remember who Nikolai beat in the semi. I think it was actually, it was Brendan, wasn't it? I was coming to Yes, it was, yes, Brendan. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Tell well, memory. Yeah. Can you see the chat? You, just, yeah. hmm? you no. can't see chat, you're just chatting. No, I can't see it. Uh, the, the intermediates was won by uh, Mick Thorpe, who plays at my club, uh, my local club, Winchester, which is great for him. Uh, he's another mass teacher, actually. And he played Sarah Jolliffe in the final. Yeah. Is that a good year? I think she's had some results. And they both qualified for the uh, Shrigley Hall Shindig um, in January, where the the winners, etc. So winners invitation. Yeah, that's the phrase. Yeah. Right, two 0 So 
Running play followed by a five to split. Five one, not great, but you don't want to slot now against the two the split anchor, so just play the one there. <coughs> Six one, that's constructive. One six, now we've got a choice, but I think this is the better play. That's the bar. Four three. Okay, could come down with a four and then step up to the twenty one points. That you need to hit. Maybe hitting isn't too bad. It's one man back. He sends meant to attack sometimes. It was one man back. But... Yeah, my players four down and uh, 24 21. What's your player? Um, forgive me, I've not been looking at the screen. I've been looking at the chat, which doesn't seem to have had much action on it this match. There's only eight viewers. So oh, only eight viewers. Um, yes, phone your friends. Hello, everybody. Eight. Give us some. Okay, did the alternative. Here. Now I don't particularly like coming up to when I've got a big stack like that, it's like he's got five on the six point. I don't like necessarily coming right up to it. Uh I tend to stay one pip away if I can. When it works, I'd have been pointed on here. Okay, two needed to an anchor. She doesn't get, so I suppose he's going to have to jump out with a four. <clears throat> I was thinking of hitting. We'll see why he wants to hit. Yeah, Toto says XG thinks hitting is correct. Really? Yeah. Who said that? Toto. As you can tell, we don't have XG feed here. That's why we're saying all the wrong plays. <laughs> I apologise for that, but in the end, that's what I'm just here to talk about, what I think. What to play. Um, stronger board, uh, why not hit again? He's only got a one point board. Why not hit another one? Yes. And some juicy cubes here, depends on what he rolls. Right, well, I would definitely send this. And 2 0 up to 5. Jeff is saying, no, thank you. Doesn't fancy that. He um, obviously thought about that ahead of time, and he, he he was confident about what he was going to do. Yeah. Okay, two one. Three away, four away. Have you met Ian Quinn before? Uh, I've met him, John. I don't think I've ever played him. I I really don't know anything about his um game or history. No, sorry. Jeff obviously relatively new on our UK scene, but has really um, got stuck into backgammon and studied hard. He's a regular attender at BMAB. Well, the four point was an option there. Um, I would have been hit. Okay, yeah, make a point rather than safety in the, the blot. How to improve his forward position here. Okay, for before it helps. Okay, so one and then the five point is two. And the last one is coming up to the 20 point this time. Can we see what else? This, this is just, uh, yeah. And then just back. Yeah, okay. Five three, okay, that makes a nice ten point. <laughs> the options are hitting or jumping out with another man. Yeah, so it's sort of a double, a double falcon, falcon, but um, <clears throat> this is this is this yeah. is it's a nice point to have. 
So both players have um, some points, but a very awkward stack on the six. The way to get rid of a stack on the six is to roll double five. <laughs> so he's converting this into a blitzing yeah. game rather than blitz a... Two in a points and uh, we might see a similar key of action to what we saw in the last game. Let's see what Jeff does. Desperately needs a two or four. If he, if he fans, then over. <clears throat> Don't think he's too good. I would do. Uh, you could play one for a roll, but I think this is fine. I mean, he's still yeah, got I mean, two he, men behind. Well, if, I think he, it's if he gets a take out of Jeff, that's quite a juicy yeah. four away cube, isn't it? I mean, can Jeff possibly take it? No, no. Yeah. All right, so a quick two single points there for Ian. Joel Dweck has arrived, by the way. Um, he will be presenting the trophy to the winner of the final. Is it a really nice looking silver trophy? I haven't actually. seen it, it's still in Yeah, silver. It's, on, it's on the desk in yeah. the name room if you want to have a look. Right. Two down. I like two down. Great two, four, three. I like it at all scores, but this is. Okay, so you should split with the four. I think that's better. Than I think I think you should split with the four and then make the uh, what's it nine point. Once you once you after a double six, you really want to get an advanced anchor if you can to counteract it. So I didn't like that play. Okay, now you play uh, two from the eighteen point, the standard way race lead. You play it. You play it like that. Yeah, well, well done, Ian. Oh, what a shot. One, a four point, and then split the back. What a great double two. So it does everything, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, fantastic. Well, okay. Uh, I think I don't, I don't think I would hit. I'll just bring down the weight development. <clears throat> Uh, you were asking about Ian. Um, in the comment, it, somebody said it's um, tricky, which is it's an all Worcester final. So, although all Ian's right. Welsh, she clearly plays in Worcester. Okay. So. All right. So, they know each other well. Right. Okay. We've got to take. I wonder if uh, Sean's watching this on his, his holes. <laughs> Hello. Sean joins in Spain if you are watching this. <laughs> Sorry, Karen. Okay. That was a classic uh, double take, I think. Even though it's um, take points slightly higher, I still think Ian has had enough there. Um, okay, and Jeff's attacking obviously with a stronger board. Two to play. He could anchor up or he could play to the nine and give himself six to cover. He size on the anchor. Three point anchor. Did he need to anchor when Ian's got no board? Did not. Oh, but in my play, I would have been hit twice. So what do I know? See so, ya. You had to. Okay, five something. It's not a hit, otherwise, if we do it by now. <clears throat> All right, so that was a great sequence for, for Ian there. Tables have turned. Don't think enough for a cube yet, only with a one point board. But he's oh, oh, is getting it. frisky. Maybe he's called, oh, an, maybe he's called an Uber already. But, uh, wow, well, that, this, is, this that is, a, is really brave. I think this is an easy take. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of work to do. We okay, might be yeah, able to say to that. Okay. Okay. This is okay. going to be well, this is the last game then, right? Okay. 6-5. Okay, well, that's uh, that's a shot leaving number. And you might as well whack him. Whack him. Whack him. Um, you could play. You could play five down and, and play six to the bar. But at least this... If you make you make the five, then then you won. Okay, Jeff hits back. Yeah, that's uh, Ian's probably regretting playing for four points now. Right, four. I would uh, I would pop out just in case you get he gets double ones or double twos or double threes or something. I would pop out. <clears throat> 
Because that checker there could be used for the bar, well, which could be handy. Mm. Yeah, there's a double one. Tell oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, there's been a few jokes in this game. Yeah, his position does look somewhat different to when he offered the cue, doesn't it? Um, do you think? No, obviously, just think he's, he's regretting he's, it, but it, you know, I think he's happy bit, with the way it's gone. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay, with the one, um, something to be said for moving the back, moving to the twenty-one point, it gives you fives to play. So he's getting a bit stuck on the fives here. Uh, Six-one, not bad. Get out of there, in my opinion. I would get out and duplicate sixes. If you are hit from the mid, he loses the mid. If you hit with a one, he's, he's leaving fly shots. That's my play. Okay, well, he is hit, but his arm is now split. Yeah, so he needs. Three men stuck there on the, tw on the 22 point isn't, isn't great. Three, four, what a wonderful roll. We roll where he must, don't we? We roll where he must, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're both playing Worcester, John, so I can't have idea. Three, two, okay, this is interesting. Um, you could just play to the mid, and I think you are winning the race. So that looks to me like the play. What about a four point though? Too aggressive. Well, if Jeff makes it, then then you are stuck against a three four game with no timing. He doesn't. Yeah, he can't um, really play a three four game. And you're giving you away a, a one six two five one four two four three four. Is that ten shots? Ten shots. Too many. I think it's too many. Okay. Could be wrong. I play this wimpy. Right. Okay. Out, was it? So I guess you, yeah, you take the spare. Yeah, cube against fours, and you can try and make that point with a five next roll. Because he doesn't have to worry about gammas now, of course, does he? Mm. This is just a DMP, so like what's going to win me the most games mm. decision. Double two, another joker. Wow. Okay, then that, if that doesn't win in the, the game, then nothing will. Okay, I think you can afford, well, a two, three back game with no timing is, isn't great anyway, but you three can afford to hit again if you want, but I think making the prime should win the game. What would you rather do? It's really wrong to make the six prime, yeah. I would say. Um, as you know, I am no expert. I would take with a four here, though, for sure. Now that I have the prime. Yeah, so I definitely would hit with a four. <clears throat> Gives them. And he doesn't it's really, want, he doesn't really want to roll us. He doesn't really want to hit this. No. Just, just get out of it. Okay, no choice. Oh no, this is getting interesting. Do you hit with the five? I think you do. I would hit with the five. I don't want Jeff to get a two. So what you mean break your six points? Yeah, because yeah. now Jeff's got some timing. If you rolls a two. Well, I would say that's a tricky decision for intermediate plays. Mm. You definitely got to count out and get a two anchors now. So hit with a three. I just get two anchors. It's have like half decent timing. Will, will he really have half decent well, timing? I, if he dances, if he dances with the other checker. Um, uh, okay. It's not great. I know it's better than it was. <clears throat> I mean, Jeff won't be displeased about it. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Okay, 
Moment, gut. So one really matter much, not much. I've played to the bar just in case he was the one pendant. Okay. And then is he wrong? Is he wrong? Six four is a. It's a hit for me. <clears throat> yeah, I would. Uh, I would have hit off from the. So what's the okay. 12, 11 point? Yeah. Uh, Jeff doesn't roll the one. Okay. He gets another. Ch okay, now he's got a point. I'm sure I'll just point it. It would have, yeah, if Jeff had rolled a one there, it would have been quite interesting to see what would have happened with a 1 3 back game. But this should be relatively straightforward. Right, what I do here, I would bring six around the corner and, and, and with the four from the nine point, because that nine point could, could, could be problematic. You don't want to have to clear that when he's got, when he's not on the bar. So yeah, move from the nine point. Okay, well, you don't really want to check on the ace, no choice. No threes on Jeff's dice. I feel like he's too worried with two on the bar, is he? No, no but if it's... Structure is, I just want to say it's pretty good. It's going to be even better in a minute if he plays this correctly. Thank you. Yeah. No threes. He has to wait to clear the six. So. One off. One off. Bye bye. Oh, yes. So. And we clear the six now. He does. Five, five, what? Five? Two, I think. No, no three. three. Okay. He paused. I thought it was a two as well. He just paused. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One more point to clear for you. This yeah. one, Tim. Tim's just arrived with to come and sitting on the All right, that's over. end of the uh, All right. Well, a dodgy, a dodgy recube by Ian, I think, but um, it worked out well. So, well done. And the final is going to be soon, I presume. Ten minutes or so now. Ten minutes, right. He's come in, making his own way to the... Uh, the uh, oh, he's going to go in his normal streaming room. Yeah. Okay.
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more.
but how ready are you, player? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, we can start then, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good match. Two good match. Yeah. Five and a six. Eleven. That's three one. Difficult for me to to do that. You can move there, or uh, no, no. It's difficult to, for you like to, to press to press the clock. Okay. Right? No, let it let it. Uh, it's fine. Five one. Five one. But the time why why is uh, time? The time is thirty uh, three minutes. Why? Yes, that was Usually explained to you. Usually it's twenty two. Yeah. Uh, I th think that there's different parameters for this game. Outside. Okay. Rather four people outside. Five one, right? Five and one there. Why? Okay. Uh, I explain what I meant. Yes. Only thirty two. Three two. Like three. Three two. Six three. Five six. Six three. Okay, welcome to the final of the UK Open 2022, and it's between Eric Westbrook and Nikolai Exinti. Nikolai now plays his backgammon in London, and Eric plays his backgammon in the Midlands. We I want to make a special thank you to um, Galaxy, who have, uh, who have um, sponsored this event, and because uh, um, Eric is registered blind, and is making a fantastic performance. And that's why we have Mike Ireland calling out the dice. And I want to thank Galaxy, who have agreed to let this um, this this match be played on, uh, on, on a, a smaller board, uh, obviously not a Galaxy quality board, just, for, just um, to help Eric, because uh, he's used to this board and it's lit specially for him and it's got special um, checkers. That make it good so thank you very much galaxy and as i was saying eric is registered blind so um he's put on a tremendous performance today and uh we're trying to help him with uh calling the dice but apart from that he needs no help and obviously you can tell how well he's playing Nikolai is an experienced player um who i first met when i played uh for him for the uk against romania in 2014 so I knew him before he came over to London. So first game going forward, and we have Eric uh, Dublin. I also want to introduce you to my new friend, um, Art, Art Benjamin, who is well known for his mathematics and uh, backgammon prowess. Uh, we became, we only met each other for the first time on Friday. We get on well and we played together in the doubles team. So hello. Hello, Art. friend. It was great. Yeah, thanks. Oh, I'm, I'm glad I didn't presume too much in that. Thanks, Art. I right, appreciate right. it. So uh, yeah, so this should be a good game and I'm uh, looking forward to your insights, Art. For sure. So where are we here? We've got, uh, both, we're not going to have any clock issues, I can tell <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, they are fast players. That's, That's sure. right. So. You would think this was a speed game. That's right. Kind of the way they're they're playing here. They're... Okay, so now we have, um, wow. So we, we've got an interesting position already. So Nikolai owns the two cube. Uh, White's got an attacking position, but he's got his problem of escaping the back checker. And here we go. First problem for Eric. And you have to make the five prime. Yes. And uh, you don't want to lose the five prime, so I think you'll have to do that's right. That's, that's my play. Play carefully enough that we were able to actually think about it. Yes. 
So of course it's the it's at the point where Nikolai decides whether he wants to redouble, and it's coming up quickly with that strong uh, five prime that White's behind because White can very often crash here. That's right. As soon as now will be quite a tough take for. Uh, oh yeah, right, yeah. right. That is this could be a double right here. Yeah. Well, we've got oh everything. My gosh. <laughs> uh, six oh. two from Navarre and a dance now. Oh. Wow. That turn around. <laughs> so it's a good job because Art and me maybe come looking down the barrel of a, yeah, <laughs> and an eight, eight cube now. An eight point eight loss. Points. That's right. Um, but we're not. I'm sorry that we're going to struggle to commentate on this match. These guys play so fast, uh, but we'll try our best. So Eric Double is. Three. Oh, he's looking like a four pointer already. Yeah. I mean, I mean let me say probably. I'm going to yeah. say, yeah. So my, uh, I have a formula. I have lots of All right, formulas. Okay. And my formula for. Oh, um, oh, oops. No, look oops. at that. So here we are, a massive roll really early. Ten oh, double six, double. oh my gosh. <laughs> These two guys know how to play. We know how they got into the finals. Just kidding. Wow. It's obviously they're both very skillful players, but boy. This is showing what they could do. You can see what they I'm interested in you. Oh, oh. Okay, and Nikolai is readable to four already. Oh my goodness. He is. Um, this kind of looks like a take to me. Yeah, yeah. It is. You know, this could well not be a oh long match. Goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. but I'll give it to you anyway while this is happening. All right. Is uh, with two checkers on the bar and yeah. P pips to travel outside. Yeah. Then um, 40 plus 2P is. And, the... and he's played that wrong. He's played that wrong. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, six Nikolai corrected him in his own inimitable style. And now Eric just needs a six. Always oh, not rolled it. Five, four. Five, four. Okay, so Eric. Oh, they, uh, they've actually stopped to have a think. Yeah, well, I That's think this is, this is a good role to, to think about, right? Um, and it's, it's an interesting one. Does to, to, to it make the four point or the three point? I like I like the play he's making. The I like, three point. Yeah. Um, Five, six. Well, dance. So, Double three. The dice have gone with, with Nikolai after both trying to put in incredible performances with the dice. I'm daring okay. him to roll a joker. Only one's yeah, there's only reasonable play. Yeah. Correct. Double one. Six three. And it is hard to win from a three point board when you're all crunched like that, even if you hit the shot. If we get any time, I'm going to quiz you about that with the formula again. It just, things are moving so oh, fast. Sure. Don't get, so. sure, well, we'll, we'll do when we have a... If, 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 if they ever let us catch our breath. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Still very unlikely to win a gammon from here. Oh, he's going for it, though. But that's, you may that's as well. When the board play. is crunched like that, yes, you, absolutely. there's no real downside to lose. Nice play from Nick Hunt. Five, three. Five, one. And that's uh, one point, uh, four points three, one. to Nekulai. Nobody did anything. Massively wrong, but that that could easily have been match over, if uh, easily. So it's four nil to Nakai. So you could you just go through that formula again. So when, when you've got so if you have two checkers on the bar and yeah. all your checkers are on the inside, the, yeah. uh, the your chance of losing a gamut is I believe thirty eight percent, right? Just shy of forty. 
When you have P outside pips to bring home, right? Uh, especially if they're like say on the midpoint, yes. then um, then the formula is 40 plus two times P right. all the way up to 80%. So if yes. you have uh, 20 pips on the outside, then it would be 80%. Yeah. Beyond the 80% mark, it goes up by 1%. 1% of the time, right? yeah. So that's, um, now keep it now in the position that we were looking at, um, uh, Nikulai had checkers on the seven, eight, and nine. Even though that's yeah. twelve pips to bring home, there yes. will be wasted. There will wasted. So, as we learned about this yeah, morning, so you don't often yeah. see much in the way of wastage, but, but there is a situation where you might add another four yes. pips or so to that. So, um, with sixteen outside pips to bring home, so say 30%. so very briefly to everybody, forty percent plus pips time pips to get home times two. Yeah, it with two checkers on the bar. With two, Very different with two with checkers checker on the bar. And what's that? What's the formula with one checker on the bar? Is it? It depends on. Um, it's it's a sort of three pieces to it. Um, right. if, it if you have less than um, uh, like fourteen pips, let's say yeah. two checkers on the midpoint to bring home, then each. Pip is costs you one and a half percent. Okay, okay. starting from zero, it's so like it's, zero. It's, it, you I was know. looking for something really simple to advise our audience. Well, well, I will, I will well maybe maybe special. instead of a formula, you yeah. just remember the benchmark. The benchmark so it's one and a half p time. up through twenty percent. Yes. All right. If you have twenty four outside pips, you're at fifty percent. Okay. And if you have forty pips outside, you're at eighty percent. So mm -hmm. the, the, and you can work through those benchmarks. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Alex. Right. So we're, we're, we're again interesting position. We've got um, the flying through this game. The speed is is uh, is is absolutely rocket pace. So Eric has just taken a minute to actually consider a role here, which gives us time to. And he's looking at the two in the air, two two in the two on the bar, better by far. Is it going to work this time? Plan, yeah. yeah. And then we've got two one. Um, and so this is the the benefit of the aggressive play in that even when you get hit, you still end up making the really valuable uh, uh, the really valuable point. Mm -hmm. And now straightforward, we get a, a, a six five, make the advanced anchor, and we're on the right track. Five four, counter an advanced anchor with an advanced anchor, <laughs> and they've done play. it absolutely. And now, neck neck is now a tough decision with the four three. I don't like the look of it to me. I think he should just play safe. Yeah, and he's got it. So, so Nikolai obviously can play this game. So, well played. And we've now got a 6-2. So, uh, I think I mentioned in the previous commentary, um, Mitch has shown us that these, these kind of games, when there's an advanced anchor for either side, never mind both sides, this, the play is surprisingly safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be boring. One That's mutual right. holding games, no fireworks. Um, right. Just wait for someone's going to roll doubles, and yes. we kind of wait for that to happen. Three two. Um, Three two. Yeah. So we've got a quick. Six one. Red seems to be slightly ahead in this race. And, but but nobody's doubling until the much less contact than this. Right. That is an interesting one. Do you cover the ace point or do you go down thirteen to six, which is maybe a, a smoother distribution? I, I prefer this okay. distribution. Yeah. Double one. Double one, and we make the four Double point one. nicely. Yeah. Two on now. I find these quite hard. Do we keep the checker on the eight point? I think we do. Just yeah. Mo Mochi or Michi refer to it as an island formation when all, all the checkers on the outside have only two yeah. uh, two points, and that's a particularly inflexible, vulnerable position. So when in doubt, avoid, avoid putting island. yourself into that island formation. And even that, even one checker spare is considered somewhat inflexible. And that's why, and this is the exact situation that Nikolai finds himself, and you can see how awkward it can be. The good, he's putting out some interesting plays. He's, well, he's pretty he's aggressive. Very he's aware, taking yeah. advantage of those two blocks. Yeah, it's like a cock die. Um, Six, two. Six, six two. Oh, oh, but that's that's good. Wonderful. That's a wonderful roll. So he, 
because yeah. it's so strong, it definitely hits and covers for sure. Now the question is two. Oh. All right, yeah. we should pause and look at the right. race yeah. and stuff. So white has a uh, single shot as well. And it's a single it. shot. It's got to be a double. You just have yes. the marker losers, right? Yeah, and this is. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what you're? You, I mean, just without even counting, you had eleven numbers that were big market losers, especially yes. after a dance, and um, and you're doing reasonably well otherwise. O'Hagan's yes. law would say that's a prescription for a double. Yeah, I'm um, with you there. Oh, well, now he doubles when, yeah. when <laughs> like, you know, yeah, a much harder position. But anyway, um, I noticed in the he's been he doubles extremely hurt early um, against holding game situations, and he's been successful for it. So will he carry on that? And that's this is the kind of play Eric's been making all weekend. Let's hope that it, it carries on. We'd love a close game in this final, and uh, we'll. we'll you have to bring the yeah, two absolutely, down. Absolutely. Um, it's a joke to roll the double three. No. It's not even a consideration not to bring the two down. Yeah, that yeah, could be right. Well done. Point three. Point three. <laughs> Mechulai. <laughs> yeah, he's correct. I'm about three seconds behind Mechulai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a great roll. Yeah. So, uh, there's nothing to think about. This just... Well, the first thing you do is you clear the. You're yeah. you're winning this race, so you you clear the uh, the ten point. Yeah, and, and then you make the two point because you want to have a five point board, and then you might think about the last four. Yeah, it's a good tip that um, that art that art is kind of saying, which is when you got roll a double, especially, and even sometimes when you roll a replay, if there's, there's if there's a part of it that's absolutely forced. Do that first, and I, and he's not played that I well. I do not know no. what his uh, plan is. So what he's he, he's taking advantage of the Cinderella point, but it's not the right thing to do mm -hmm. in this instance. Look at all those bad sixes, like yeah. two six. <laughs> you're, you're, uh... Oh, I see what he was doing because that that you're point seven was seven, seven away. away. Yes, he he over, uh, over valley. The Cinderella point, which is the one we call seven away, is a fantastic point to have. But that was an example of being slightly overvalued. Yeah. Yeah, what, what's the what's why is it called the Cinderella point? Pretty, I suppose. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I don't know why. That's a, know. that's the only thing I can say. But it's a nice name. I like the name. I, I was the hoping Cinderella it had something point. to do like running away from the um, oh yeah right. the wall or the yeah. board or the not being in the. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what else. You know, I mean, you you know why Cinderella was kicked off the football team? No, go on, why? She ran away from the ball. <laughs> really? Yeah. And we're trying to we're trying to think if there's an even better reason why. Oh, and Eric, and the suddenly with Eric's dice, there's, there's some yeah, there's, there's some chance. gallant chances. Not much, but there's, there's, there is some now. So if anybody knows why the Cinderella point is called the Cinderella point, even though I think, yeah, even though it's a great, we, we agree it's a great name regardless of it. It's always good to have mnemonics for, yes. for, for those things. And so what is good about the Cinderella point is that it's, the, it's as easy to clear as the ones five and six away, and yet when you, and that, but when you leave a shot, it's only an indirect shot. So it's a great point to own when you're trying to clear against an anchor or even or a back game actually as well it's not just um it's not just back game so a big double now and we're in we're 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 okay so no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> this is that it's really painful for a mathematical player. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be especially painful when double threes here uh, <laughs> sometimes you wonder if the dice gods will watch you and uh and make you pay for the mistake. So just but serious, what was about uh, what we were laughing at then was that um you know, especially people like Art and myself who think about these numbers all the time, it we you you have to make all your, your best plays play. So it was very clear to uh, Art and myself that you made double three successful. There was no downside to it. Even if it's only a one in thirty six chance when there's no cost, of course that's what we do. And that's why we reacted to that play by Eric. So 
violently. So good. And that's brought the game a bit closer. We're now at 4 2. So let's hope for it. It's looking like it could boil into a come up to a good match. Uh, 3 2. Four two and nice four two three, one. as itself three one not quite as easy for certainly for me even though it was four and five four for Eric yeah. oh he's hit the wrong one oh illegal so um, is, uh, is will, will put him right okay. he has done yeah. And by the way, do they play with a legal moves requirement? I mean, yes. if, you, if you spot your opponent making an error, you're you have to tell yeah. to. But that's, that's we right. play in the U.S. and that's the way it should be. Oh, that's an interesting discussion. We won't, I won't we won't bore everybody because I'm not for that rule. Oh, that, interesting. So we'll have a good chat about that later. Okay. Yeah. But I don't. I mean, I've, we, I've watched we, a lot of players and tournament yeah. directors evolve, mostly in the direction of agreeing that it's a good thing they have yes. legal moves. Yeah. But um, uh, certainly, there are people who are skeptical yeah. who say it only it yeah. only protects the dishonest player. Yes, and, right? and, and, and it costs the, the honest player. Yeah. Um, yet I'd like to I'd like to elevate our sport and think that this is a, <laughs> We're this, all is a this is a game where the presumption is that we are. This is interesting. Honorable. These two guys and interestingly, these two guys have reached the final of the UK Open. They are not scared of the Dublin Cube. That is a, a good tip for a lot of people out there. Mm. Yeah, especially when you're playing good players, be even more confident with that double clue. Make them, you know, put the pressure on them. When, when I'm playing um, somebody that I, I, I feel I'm a bit better than, there's, you don't want to be facing difficult doubling decisions. Right. You want, and uh, so rather, don't, rather than respect good players, make them suffer. They're the ones that mm. they're, they're the ones that are scared of these cubes. So an, another interesting game. So Eric's doubled again. Like I say, Eric's a very aggressive doubler, and you can see why. And now he's just got to bring this home against the three point. Right. He, this is yeah, a death. Make absolutely point. makes a seven point here. There's no question. That's the Cinderella point. <laughs> <laughs> he might but, love that Cinderella point. But so you have much. to do that. Well played, Eric. I don't like this. It's, uh, the dice doesn't roll. Only if we play this. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nikolai's not happy with. Eric. He's probably right. We, we need to get um, if there's nobody strong in the tournament characters room, I'll go and yeah, but that doesn't work. No, oh, there is. It sounds like there's somebody, and you just check there's somebody strong in the tournament directors room when you say strong, um, firm, firm, and firm with the players. Mm. I, I'm, I'm guessing that he felt that he rolled were, the joker and that, yeah. and that he would like to see his dice. Yeah. Shaken more vigorously, and that just needs somebody firm to explain what we should do, and just checking that it's okay. Mm. Yes, yeah. I didn't notice anything, but um, I mean, Nikolai has a point. If there is, uh, it, it can be put. It's locked. Okay, I'll leave. we'll leave it. It looks like it's been handled. Okay. If there's any problems, um, we'll we'll get uh, one of the leading players. I, I don't like to see these arguments going on. So it's very, it, there isn't much to disagree about here. It's straightforward that um, it's straightforward that uh, Eric must shake his dice. And he seemed to be shaking his dice to me. But even if, if he's not shaking them to Nicolas satisfaction, he just needs to uh, shake them a bit harder. But it could, my first instinct was that there was nothing to complain about. Mm. I, I can see. I, I, I would like him to slightly shake more. So, some, I, I do see. I don't think Nikolai's being awkward there. I think I, I can see where he's coming from. But so, 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 yeah. Andrew's on the right track. He, he's asking him to shake thoroughly. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that will be the end of that matter. I think I've heard somewhere that says it's it's appropriate to give it three shakes. One, yes. two, three. Then anything less than that is um, not. Not quite proper. I'm with you there. I think that's um, about, that's, uh, that, that's right. So I just don't want to see any arguments on this because it's, it's clear cut ruling uh, from both, you know, on both sides. Nikolai is allowed to say something, and um, but he's not allowed. To, if, but if Eric's doing it right, that's the end of the matter. Mm -hmm. And that's just a, I'm just keen that that gets firmly. We don't want a bad atmosphere in the final of the, our most prestigious event. Absolutely. of the year 
So let's go. Let's hope that that's the end of that matter. I am used to, to lay the dice for the opponent. No, no, because we, I, we I, I play what we want. I promise you. Okay. Okay. We do understand. That's why you've got more time. It's fine. That's why. That's fine. Five four. Um, if there's a break, I will. Uh, I'll go and have my two penneth. But let's let's what let's watch Eric shaking. My 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 feeling is he's doing it right. He just needs to shake up and down three times. Two and two three. He's done it. Yeah, that, look, there's much and maybe, worse than that. Maybe yeah. even um, uh, not shake it towards the bar, yeah. which I think makes it a little bit less of a random roll. Sure. So I think I think uh, Nikolai was saying to shake it away from the bar. Okay. Yeah, roll, but I think yeah. you have to play it that way. Yeah. What are your bad numbers? Double oh, six. Big numbers. Double big five. Numbers. Six four. If I doesn't believe in searching for for plays, he sees them instantly and plays them. Or three. Three two. Three two plays itself. Clear the back point. Five two. Five two. Five two. That's an interesting question because on the one hand, against a three point anchor um you want to tend to clear the six point at your right, first yes. opportunity on the other hand the race is reasonably close so taking two checkers off is better for the race that's so what i would have chosen for, i think for the so. same reasons as you said. but it's something to, to think yeah. about um if he had a bigger racing lead then i think the yeah. safer play would be to clear the six point. yeah yeah i i might have run here right it, it's, it's a concert yeah the, i think uh the, you're 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 basically staying back and breaking your board for the hope of getting a six two or a five two followed by. Oh, there we go, double five. And one, one, two, three, four. Wouldn't you like one. to have had an extra Check your off crossover yes. in that, right? Oh, just give it yeah, up. Just was on easy, easy. Oh, I didn't even think about this. <laughs> oh, it's dear. Before. It's a bit. It's a bit of a grumpiness. Anyway, let's, let's hope that this uh, atmosphere calms down a tiny bit. And you have a gentleman. So we're now at 4 all, which is a seven-point uh, seven match for the title of UK Open champion. Very prestigious title, both... Uh, and I can see both aggressive players. It's not going to be a long match, but it's the it's the way they've uh, played aggressively. I'm sure that's seen them through the field. Some against some very some top players have been in the field today and uh, this weekend. Three one. So a useful tip to everybody as you're improving: be aggressive with the cube. Play to win, don't play not to lose. Did you play say. these players along the way? I didn't, I didn't yeah. play either of them, no. no. Um, but uh, would you agree with that tip about back going play to win rather than don't play play not to lose? Um, yes, in fact, I played some um, uh, intermediate players in the warm up. Yeah. And I gave them, I said, would you like some advice Yeah. afterwards? And I said, I said yes, I love it. I said, double more often. Take yes. more often. Yes. Yeah. If you're very timid, you, you're going to yeah. lose. And if and if you're more aggressive, you're going to win more. Good. Yeah. Eric seems to be playing extremely fast as well. Which um, we've we've had this a couple of times. People getting sucked into when you know it's so mm. easy when your opponent plays really fast right. to get sucked into playing. They make the bar points. Yeah, right? you you have in the, this instance you have more you have more time. Exactly, we're playing plays that are just really difficult plays on impulse, 
And if you've got you play somebody like Nekula who plays really fast, you you don't gain you don't get any reward for playing your play in less any less than twelve seconds, which is the standard time setting. Play just play to your own to your own pace, whatever suits you, and uh, don't feel obligated to try and match the speed. Exactly, and I agree with the last play that White made, which yeah. is contradictory to what you know. You let leaving more shots here when he could have made the bar point earlier. Um, yeah, uh, playing super safe. So six one. Hmm. Wow, does he play with three blocks in the outfield in order to get a, to get the rack? That's an interesting decision. Right, my, my my vote would be eleven five six five. In some ways, you're duplicating yeah. the six four, which would be a a good role for him. Yes. Way. Yeah. Right. So it's not that that blot on the thirteen point is not as vulnerable as you think. So move forward. The blot survives. And six four. Six four. You can see from mm -hmm. Eric's position is he's he's paying the price for not having made either the four or the seven. I'm not saying which one was correct earlier on, mm. but if you go too long without making points, you end up in this situation and that's not. I would have made the four point. It. Yeah. Is it a double? <coughs> that's like that. Even so, it's still in a, this is a, a trivial take. Mm -hmm. um, a trivial take with a four point anchor. Well played, Eric. You found it, six, five. Now let's that. 14 numbers that hit, but none of them did. These two players are really aggressive with the cube. Good, that's good. You can't, that's good to see. So I, I'd lower the three point even at the, the cost of. Uh, it's, it's very close. But I prefer, I usually prefer the flexibility rather than, uh, it's getting the balance right between flexibility and points in the right order. Mm -hmm. XGT tries to teach us which is most important. These guys are playing fast. And in fact, they're rolling a bit too quickly for. <coughs> five, three. Five, three. And we just bring our checkers in. White has got some outside racing chances with uh, with a, a really well timed big double, so he shouldn't throw those chances away. And yet, uh, what do you think about saving the six as he did in that situation? I would say that because um, because uh, uh, White's red board is so weak, we do, we can we can use that. We can you can run, accept it, yes. but you have to look at the race, right? So yeah. White has, we can see uh, 89 pips. Okay, so now oh. the there's no way you can make this play without, without counting. Right. So people people think, you can guess, so it, there's nothing out, you, you have to think. It looks right. on first glance that it's a run. It does. But, 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 uh, but how you run is, guys, right? I mean, yeah, so, exactly. so let's look. White had 89 pips, just rolled double three, makes it yeah. 77. Uh, red has 38, uh, 39, 73, but I'm going to call that 75 because of that extra yeah. checker on the ace point. Right. I penalize those checkers two pips. So it's like 79 to 75. Um, uh, red is a favorite here, but on the other hand, you don't win by breaking your board. You exactly. don't. Um, Red has some distributional challenges. So well played. Well, well played, Eric. You got it right, though. So well played. Yep. But, but there's no way you can make plays like that without having without counting the pips. I okay, agree. so let's let's hope some big numbers for Eric to make it exciting. All right. By the way, it's a seven point match at this yeah. point. Seven away, seven away. White owns the cube. Um, forgive me for just using uh, white and red instead of the yes, names of the players. Right, of it's course. easier for me that way. Um, and has to always be thinking about the uh, doubling cube. Um, it's this is a kind of score where because it's exactly even, yeah, it's right. a money-ish double. That is, you yeah. can you can treat the cube like you would for money. And there it stops. So let's get an exact count. For okay, so, so I, get, I, I get sixty. Well, for white, it's sixty. Right. And uh, what do we have here? It looks like fifty is the exact count. Let's call it fifty-two. Yeah. Uh, because of the penalty of so, that so, we're, so we're not cubing yet. Right. 
the twin wing. But, but the point is we need to be aware really close uh, we need to have our finger on the trigger here but obviously you when you realize you're eight pips behind the, right. tr the trigger and now you can sort of do a running count. yeah so you were eight yeah. pips behind now you're one pip behind you're, yes. you're down one uh, but there's now you're down seven but we are but red and white is a lot more favorable of being down seven points generally though in this right. position that's now it's zero yeah is there are how many checkers are on the ace point? There were three. Now right. there are none. Right. Okay. So now, so you, so white rolled four pips, but you lose yes. that two pip penalty because yes. there's nothing on the ace point anymore. Right. All right. So it's almost six. like getting six pips. Right. Again, the white has to not just instantly oh, okay. roll. Right. Should think. Right. Yes, right. absolutely. So white has a pip count of thirty-nine versus yeah. this thirty-six. Much, this is much too quick, Eric. Uh, uh, yes. Um, yes, so much time. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I I wouldn't have doubled, but I would have no. thought about. It. Okay, so we, we need to stop here. Or at least right. it stopped. Okay, so we're twelve ahead. <laughs> Boy. Oh, oh my gosh. and here's one of those times when you just feel like oh, I should have doubled. No, no, he's too. He's oh, too and now he's complaining he can't because complain. of the way the, yeah. the, the dice were rolled. Yeah. yeah. Uh, He's saying you you have to roll it like this, not like that. Do they ask them if they want me to come into the room? Project. Right, will you go and sit? Yeah. Do you, do you want me to go anymore? I'm just going to go and have a, a word. Okay. And, and the board keeps the the cameras moving a lot. I pull the dice until the day. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Didn't roll the first move like Eric normally does, but it still was close to roll. One is the six and one is the, the four. Could have come out with two in the way, honestly. You need we just want to check whether that was a legal It was a legal roll. Uh, without the, 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 the so here's an interesting question. I'll take, uh, uh, I'll join the camera here. Suppose. Um, when you roll in, you must. Um, oh, no, there's, yeah. there's no question about that was wrong. It was too late. Suppose red rolls double sixes from this position. Now, now it's white on roll with uh, uh, in a two roll position against a checker on the five and the four. Well, that can't be a double. It, that's not even a double if there were um, uh, four checkers on the ace point. So uh, having a checker on the five and the four is much better than four checkers on the ace point. So uh, uh, on the other hand, um, what if red rolls double fives here? Is, does white have the ability to, uh, uh, to double there? Um, maybe so. All right, so. Uh, Oh, I think that's, that's that's it for this game. Well, we're hoping that that's the end of the matter. Um, uh, Eric is told everybody seems to be in agreement uh, now, so hopefully that will be the end of the matter. If it happens again, Andrew will be watching. Rick shakes his dice, make sure, and he will call at any time he doesn't shake the dice up and down three times as clear. But I've seen a lot worse than this, and uh, I, I, I'm with Eric, and he knows where he, he knows where he is, and hopefully that will ease the uh, the questions and the right and wrong of the matter. Uh, it doesn't need debating anymore. Andrew's going to take over. Andrew's. Uh, Andrew fully understands what's required. Uh, basically, a three up and down shake plus a firm throw. And if Eric doesn't do it um, properly, uh, Andrew is going to. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more.
improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market, available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool, travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect. You know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just wanna hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game. I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers. It even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful doubling cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a, it's a real luxury backgammon board. You know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small, but you could because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. And uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background, and this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag, so easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm and it doesn't weigh much. And uh, yeah, it's just incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now we have the, the green earth board as well. And then of course we have the, the Galaxy Neptune blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy. <laughs> with this board, I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury, portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Where is Mishi, guys? I'm ready to roll the dice. Hey, Mishi! Mishi! Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Chetimbelene. I'm part of UBC Contender 2022. And now you see me with a white board, which is my favorite board, actually. The best thing that I like this board is the checkers. You, it feels like a stone, man. And also, uh, I like simple design here, and I, I also like the sound when the uh, dice hit the frame or uh, checkers hit the frame. I really can't wait for the next year UBC 
uh, to play with these uh, lovely boards. Bye everybody! What's up Backgammon fans? In this video we're gonna show you one of the coolest products that we have in the Galaxy web shop. The new Doubling Cubes. And look at this cool little uh, box that it comes in. It comes in three different colors. The Earth, the Neptune and the Moon Cube. So let's have a look at them one by one. The Earth Cube, it's beautiful and custom made with the G for Galaxy, it's really, really cool. And the Earthboard colors, obviously. Then we've got the Neptune, in the Neptune colors. And then we've got the Moon, which is this grayish Dublin cube. Like, I think this is probably some of the coolest Dublin cubes ever made. They are for sale right now in the Galaxy web shop, so why don't you go in and place an order for these amazing cubes. Thank you guys for watching this video. See you next time. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. What's up Backgammon fans? This is a video about the Galaxy Dice Tower. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's made of this nice material. It unfolds very easily. Let me show you how. You insert your hands here, you hold the sides, and you press. Okay, would you like to be reminded of the... Uh... There we go. That's it. It's, uh, it's live. So welcome back to the UK Open. I have with me my fellow commentator, Art Benjamin. He of Mathematics fame and top UK US player won the um, the tour in the one year I competed in it. Um, you might not remember me in my distant third place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you did well. You, you, you um, uh, I think you edged out Ray Fogelin oh. by, by a fraction of the pip, or maybe it was the other way around. Well, I don't. Very... If I beat Ray, that would be great news. <laughs> I, hope he, I hope he's listening to this, but uh, it would make my year be to finishing above Ray if I did. <laughs> I know at one point I was ahead of him. Okay, so I've got my uh, co, uh, you know, so obviously Art as well as uh, his fame for mathematics has got a great tournament record as well. So we're. Uh, and a Hall of Fame member, I believe. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just this. Honor and you know, pleasure. Absolutely. Okay, so we're now a tiny bit of controversy about dice rolling that we, we think we're on top of. Andrew is acting as um, as a match arbiter and will call as early as possible if he feels that Eric isn't rolling properly uh, or, or, ne or Neculi. And hopefully that will be the end of the matter. Five one. It wasn't great, was it? Anyway, so let's let's. Um, okay, so five one. So a bit of an advantage here for for whites that that's now been uh, equalised. At least uh, uh, absolutely positively equalised, and maybe got maybe uh, move forward. So five three for mm -hmm. white. The cube's still in the middle, and white needs to bring one of his back checkers. At least to the four point, four point and maybe even all the way. Um, now, I, but there's also the feeling that once you start the ace point, you should make yeah. it. So I would right. have gone six to one, 24, 21. Of course, that's the play. I didn't see the, the five to one, which is the, the natural play. You know, white white has got to be careful not to get um, not to get those back two checkers stuck. Three. And. Absolutely, he goes with one of them. I think you have to. Well, I mean, no, any other play is destructive. So yeah, um, uh, if 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 red builds a prime, white only wants to have one checker behind the prime, not two. Nice play from Eric. And a lot of the aces are well duplicated anyway. So yes. white ha red has great uses of aces already. So like a oh, six one exactly. You know that's uh, um, um, 
and Nakulai goes on to the attack straight away, which again, where Eric has right. got much a stronger board. Now, this is interesting. Uh, Red has got, oh, and well, Nakulai does You do see a lot around. of quick cubes in this game, and uh, and, it, and this may be right. Um, I, think, I think so. You know, he's trailing by two pips, so you have to be more aggressive in any position that could get Gaminesh in this one, could. Absolutely. But On the other hand, it's a one-point board, so... I guess a three-point board, so I, I think it's a clear tight because of the board strength. But again, we're seeing a good cube actually quite, oh, no, no he's passing. passing. I think that we'll find that that one was a take, even though- Even uh, with the score. Yeah. Considered I mean, if it, uh, my, my, if it had been a, um, well, what can I say? A, even a quite, if it was even the take was questionable for money, well, then you would drop uh, yes. the score, but it's such a clear take for money. I think it would have to be. I agree with you, yes. Yeah. And so now it's six five to eleven. There's no time issues for either player. Hmm. They, they play at rocket speed, making it difficult, life difficult for us commentators. But we're trying our best. <laughs> two one. Right. Two one. Now, do do we slot here? I'm okay with not. No. But I can do double four. Wow. Oh. oh choices so take your time here there's no way you can play these plays so quickly uh, really difficult plays really difficult the only the good thing is that whatever you do is going to be good but you what will be best. It's, best what, the hard it's what will be best is the most important question okay and this is intriguing intriguing mm -hmm. position so Red has got a lot of advantages. This is, and I'm quite surprised he hasn't doubled. Given his, his quickness yeah. to double. But he, there is a lot of things that Nakula is very aware of. It's good. You know, he's completely open that um, the four and five points are open, mm -hmm. and which is the big weakness in Red's position. Right. So Nakula obviously has been playing backgammon for years and knows, and knows the game. Okay. So... What? Okay, so, right. dancing, so now here we are. Clear double. And it's clear double. And this, and now the score is a lot different than it was before. Now he's six away. And this can make a difference. This was a tougher take than the pre. Oh, he's passing. Okay. <laughs> so at least, he, at least, he's, at least he's being consistent. Yeah. So we're now down to a, a five point match for the title. And what is Nekula not happy about something again? Okay, you want to discuss the yeah, deal between you? I want to discuss the deal. Well, six, 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 it's all on you the want one Sure. Okay, okay. Can you just, just, um, yeah. just bear with me a second? Yeah. Like, this I said, shh, like I said, that it's just been uh, streamed for me. So I'll need to right. It. Andrew's taking control, hopefully. So yeah. Which, uh, score six all. Eric you might be going to get me. Uh, oh, dear. We, we can't have this. Uh, there's a chance. Yeah. Do you want to swap? Do you want to swap? Right. Another one over the head. Oh, they don't. Yeah. Okay. And they want a. They want. We didn't want it on the street. Oh, they don't. <laughs> so have we? Have we paused it? And are we? I don't know. Just okay. So the they're just having a chat on a more about uh, doing a deal for the title, which is completely acceptable in backgammon terms. Yeah, there's um, the winner gets substantially more than the 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 runner up, and it's quite normal for them to agree a deal between the two players. What they're going to do, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm pleased. To, I'm pleased they took the chat in uh, pleasantly. It has so turned can, to more mundane. Exactly more mundane. Exactly uh, the discussions then. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, it looks like you might have missed what I was saying there. If I'm repeating myself, sorry. They just had a quick chat, um, sorting out. Although it seems to be still in the process. Did they That's say they wanted to have, a deal. Did they want you to come by as a? No, oh, no, oh, oh no, just they weren't asking for you to be uh, a, a witness, witness. But just. Uh, So we're not quite certain what's going on. We, we, we believe and hope that they're just still negotiating as to a deal between the two players. All right. So it becomes a five-point match. Yes. And um, 
Um, so uh, how, do you, how do you think of a five-point match different from, say, uh, 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 the beginning of an 11-point match? I don't think much different. The big difference that I'm always aware of is the cube action, mm -hmm. and specifically that um, in race type positions that you don't double quite as um, you don't double as aggressively, and you take deeper. Mm -hmm. That's the the biggest thing. But the minute it turns into either um, a, a gammonish type position or it, on the route between the two, then it, it go you go completely the other way, and that you have to play safer. Uh, so I, I've, I can tell by I'm getting pleasant nods from my master, uh, my master co commentator. So I must be talking sense here. That's exactly how uh, I think of it. As a, as a, in a race or a non gammonish position, you take points about twenty percent. Yeah. So that would mean in a in a race, you might be able to take one pip deeper than normal. Yes. Yeah. And um, and that would mean you should double about one pip later, later than you normally would. But um, the gammon price at five away, five away, because the gammon takes you to Crawford, is instead of the gammon price being a half, and here I have to apologize, I don't know if it's 0.6 or two thirds or 0.7, but it's somewhere in that region, let's call it two thirds. So that means the gammons have a little more sting in them than they would have yes. at a, um, at a normal score. So, exactly. So yeah. it's quite good. And being aware of that, um, whichever system you use or whichever, however you're doing it, but just being aware of it will really help your cue. Another thing that people generally do, though, uh, less than the intricacies that Art and myself were just talking about there, was they people become careful going towards the finishing line. That's totally the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You want to be actually more aggressive as you see the finishing line, not more careful. And it's a it's a common misconception that people uh, see the finishing line. And my, my analogy is you don't you don't try and hold your opponent back from getting to the the, the um, finishing line. You reach out for the finishing line. So that is a that on a you know, without the intricacies of what of what Art and myself were just discussing, that's a, a general a general tip that's a lot easier to understand. So just generally, as you're going you know, down to five, four, three point matches, just be that more aggressive. That's when, of course, we're getting come when you're level or behind. When you're ahead, especially when two away, three away, or three away, four away, unfortunately, the opposite occurs. Yeah, I'll give you an example. If you're two away, then unless your opponent is four away, you're and the, and assuming you neither of you are going to win gammon, so this is a very yeah. ungammonish position. Your um, their take point is actually a little higher than normal. So right, you know, two away versus three away, their take points like twenty six percent, not your usual twenty two percent. It's like twenty six percent. Two away, five away, it's twenty three percent. Two away, six away, it's also twenty three percent. It's all about it's unless it's two away, four away, and then it's like um, nineteen percent. All right, because because their recube is very very efficient. Right, yes. right? But um, but most people are two away. I don't want to send the cube because it's going to come back to me, and we're going to play for four. But guess what? That's as you say, you're reaching for the finish. You reach it, yeah. You, know, you you have as much to gain, if not more, than your opponent for those those extra points. Two, two away, three away, especially I, I believe. Is, Once there's no gam, yes. The, again, if there's any gammons, don't no, double because yeah. now you're throwing away your gammons, yes, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, in, so. in sheer races, I think you're actually more aggressive, aggressive aren't you? As you were saying, as I said, yeah. yeah, to, yeah. You, that generally, when you are an e, generally when the doubler is an even number of points away, yeah, um, that that take point goes up just by a little bit, you know, by a by a percent or so, uh, enough to um, make a difference. I remember when I first found out about five or six years ago that uh, at two away, five away, the cube action is very similar to. Um, a neutral score. I, I just couldn't believe it. I won't. I won't believe it. Just was so counterintuitive. But perhaps, perhaps you can explain why it's uh, even uh, even though you're scared of your even though you're scared of your opponent grabbing and re shipping to four. Have you got a feel for why that is not just the not just my brief explanation? Part of it is. I mean, it is that um, when the trailer is is four away. 
they can be very aggressive with the cue. Yeah. You know, it's um, and when the opponent is three away, you know, obviously you'd rather be three away than four yes. away. But the way the match equities work out, there's not a giant difference between them. So when um, when you have so so you're doubling and taking them instead of going one point from five away to four away yeah they go to three away it isn't all that much different we're gonna have a good conversation later about uh okay uh, some of my i've got some ideas uh well, we'll talk about, about the about how we value three away four away and is there a way of actually putting a number on it that's got any sense that makes any sense that's a, sense? That's a very tricky score yeah really. Um, all right, but here we are at five away, five away. Okay. Um, th does it does it change your checker play much at all? I don't it doesn't change mine, mine no, either, no. right? It's you still play your normal. It's game. only on gammon go and gammon save that I, uh, big gammon go and gammon save that I'd change my checker play. That's great. Okay, know. so five three here for white. So I'm just getting the five point gives white. Uh, well, he had it, but now of course red is the roll, and this is a very evenish position mm -hmm. I, I would slightly prefer red i think mm -hmm. so it's still five away five away we're nowhere near a cube now because it's still uh, it's still an even game just getting the five point for white uh, really changes the the uh, dynamics of the position i might have made the three point there and yeah. i would have thought about it okay so we're going to play four and red's going to get his back checkers moving but white's got an attack and i think white is going to have to go would, would ideally like to a go tough, forward. Tough think, uh, position. Would he make the two point here? Yeah, I think he has to because the, the problem with going, you can't hit loose because of the stronger board of red. So, and there's no natural four either. So, I think we'll just improve the board and see what happens. Two one. Two one. one. Wow, not easy. You have there's to grab no the natural one. Ooh, interesting. I do like. Nikolai, and both of these players are very aggressive players, and it's obviously served them well. Okay. I like that. Right, the four point, yes. Right, and now red has got a distinct advantage now. And it, unless something big happens for white, this is a strong double now. In fact, it's so strong. It's, it's so strong. It's probably a take because that. There's no way to play this play well, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think I'm passing this at the score because yes, I think I'm passing at this score. No, but Eric's taken. So let's see how he does. Oh no, no. yes, it, yeah, I would I would use that four to four come, to out, come out, right? Yes. I mean yeah. it's never gonna be comfortable to leave, but so the best time to do it is when you're on the bar and they won't have nearly as many returns. Okay, so, so. maybe glad he didn't with <laughs> that, but you can't think that way. Sixteen this rolls where he would have. This been. is tough now. This so Nakulai has to really go for glory here. He just and he is, you know, the, you know, Nakulai can play, can play backgammon. There's no question about that. Ouch! 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 ouch. This could, but no, no, is that legal? Just, no, it wasn't legal, right? He's got a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> notice what finger he's pointing at. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's fair. Okay, so this is. Double one. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So now White is just playing to save the gamma. Nothing else is, should be going through his mind. He just plays as safely as possible and just hopes that the three point, his three point anchor will, oh, He's just got one other way of winning, as I say that. Oh, dear. Probably minimize shots. Yeah. Seven. Yeah, eight, seven. That's well played. It's okay, this this is looking... Right. I mean, White it's actually doesn't want to, Actually, White doesn't want to come on here. Surprisingly. I'll, give, I'll give you a statistic here. Oh, um, great. With two checkers, on, an ace point game with two checkers gets gammoned about 15% of the time. Yeah. You put a third checker on the ace point, a well timed ace point game. A well timed one. Gets gammoned about 35% of the time. You get okay. four checkers on the ace point, it's now up to 50% of the time. Right. So, um, 
So white is about 50% to get gamut, maybe a little higher because red can be a little more aggressive yeah. once white has a crunched board. Okay, and I, I learned uh, this a few years ago off Julian Fetterline, how to bear in against an ace point, and I teach it myself. We're looking to make pyramids here on mountains, and we're looking to avoid uh, valleys. And it's, you know, sometimes you actually, it's one of the things you don't, I'm starting to understand why now, but it's one of the things you don't need to understand. Just do it. Make uh, per, Build make pyramids, yeah. don't build valleys. That's it, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. Don't dig valleys, yeah, that's the yeah. idea. Nice. Okay, so a, a, a six now, and Eric's got a chance of uh, turning this around. Right. Yeah, or at least running off the gammon, that's for sure. Okay. So, so how many, if obviously not in this position, but before this position, when it was the standard, how many, how many percent did you say for the standard uh, for four checkers? I would say about fifty percent. Fifty is that all? And right. so, wow. then it goes from 15 to 35 to 50. Yeah. 50. Five zero. Right. That, and that's four. With four. That's four. Double six would make uh, life fun. It hasn't rolled it. Four one. Now, if um, White ever is thinking of redoubling, yeah. Um, it is a, uh, this is a score where it's a 25% uh, take point. Again, if there are, assuming there are no gammons involved, right. if this becomes a race, um, the take point is about 25%. So um, uh, you can double more aggressively in a race, or hopefully. Uh, but I suspect if it is gammonish, you you perhaps hold onto the cube. Oh right, you yeah. don't want because because yeah. otherwise you're throwing Throw away, away um, your gammons. Um, you're you're risking things with unnecessarily. Well, this is interesting. I wonder after the speed these two have been playing, and that's the that's the time when they've decided to slow down and huh. uh, take the time. Not, not on those double fours no, and no. The, the <laughs> double twos. Okay, so Eric just plays as safely as possible now. Hoping on the off chance of a double six, but more importantly, uh, that hoping now that he has saved the gammon, which was a big danger a while ago. Right. But a well-timed double six would make us all, I think it's still time to play safe, yeah. Yeah. So that's this. As, as mountain builders will approve. Uh, oh, look at that. You approve, right? There, there's <laughs> we'll approve the of uh, Nikolai's yeah. style, whether it was accidental or not, but he did it. It is right. the. Uh, I don't see the. The Michi it. Pagoda. <laughs> yes. I don't see Now, there, on the other no, hand, no. is not such a mountain. No. Right? Five, four. Five, four. You see, you see what, why you want to mount it is because you don't want the awkward 6 5 and the 5 4. Which is just so destructive in those kind of positions. Mm -hmm. This this should uh, go. This should only be one point, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, sorry, single, single game. Single game. Yeah. And we'll still have plenty of backgammon left. Bring it. There's no, you're not losing pips by bringing it home yes. safely, and you so, might even slow red down. Yes. By, um, you know, so let, let's say good tip. Let's say the next roll was a six one or something. If you were if you weren't back there, they could play the six off and slot the one. Yeah. Yep. Four one. Case in point. Yes. Right. You slowed red down by staying back, and it didn't cost you any pips. I, I think it's time. Now to it's go time now. to go. I have a rule for that. It's oh, a, good. Uh, I'm interested. Uh, I'm yeah. asked that by some of the people I uh, oh, it's very easy. coach with. Okay. Wait until eight. Wait until eight. Nine right. is fine. You can stay <laughs> back at nine. Nine is but fine. Wait until eight. Now, it, you yeah. might leave even early. You might even leave before then if you've yeah. got no board that can win. If hitting a shot 
yeah. it doesn't win for you, you may want to leave earlier than with eight checkers left. But generally, eight is wait a safe. Wait until eight. Yeah. Right. Good. Thank you. So wait until eight, and that's so you don't. You, you can it's stay not back. Pick out it. And that's almost irrelevant where they are in the board. Well, obviously, you at that. It's if you have outside checkers to move in, you can still yeah. stay back. But as right. soon as it's going to start costing you right. um, chances of getting off the gamut, yeah. you know, like you got a checker on the seven point and you just rolled a five two, you could you could bury it, but waste a lot of pips coming in, or you could run out and try not get gamut. And I'd say if you had nine checkers left, you can. You can, if you've got a decent board. As I announced at the start of this chorus, uh, this um, uh, this commentary, we are uh, we are newfound friends. So I'm asking my new friend if I can steal that off him. Oh please! Wait, thank you. Nine is fine, and wait until eight. So yeah, everybody working with me will be hearing that constantly. Yeah. It's a great. And this is this is this is the a typical thing thank where, you very much. where all yeah. those checkers are on the two and the three point. Yeah. I mean, if the checkers are on the five and six, yes. point, well, you can yeah. wait longer. But um, you're, you're the, the thing is, by once they're down to eight, yeah. they have a real chance of getting off okay. in three rolls, uh, get, getting all their checkers off in three rolls. With nine. They kind of need four balls, so it's sort gotcha. of a critical. Uh, okay, so this is a strong double and uh, a pass. I think that was pretty straightforward at this score. But now we're at, we're now at what the positions that I like to get excited about and talk about. Mm -hmm. And four away, three away, is it's not the famous one of the four away, two away that is extremely aggressive, and extremely, uh, but it. Well, in fact, I actually would use the word extremely. Mm -hmm. The actual words I do use with my my uh, the people I coach, we'll have a laugh with because they know the actual word I do use with them. And it's extra. <laughs> I won't repeat it. Uh, or I, I might even repeat uh, Cecilia's um, super duper because she's a, a lady. And uh, but it, what, all I want from the people I work with is they remember exactly how aggressive they should be at needs four, needs two. And a, a quick story: I, I in the days I was unknown in the background world. I played Bob Wachtel, and uh, when he doubled at needs four, needs three, needs two against me on the first roll, I was honoured that he considered me worthy of it. So. Uh, so, but but still, so needs four, needs three. You still have to be extremely aggressive when you need four, and surprisingly careful when you need three. So just learn those scores off by heart. I, the three scores I like you to forget about working them. Out, uh, just be aware of them. Needs four, needs three. Be extremely aggressive. Needs three, needs two. Be extremely ag very aggressive, and needs. Four needs to be super duper, super duper, super duper aggressive. And and thank, I hope Cecilia's listening because it's oh that's that's her uh, that's her cleaning me up, uh, cleaning my language up. Nothing wrong with that. super duper, exactly. So so yeah. So just okay, be aware pause, of those pause. Here we are. We are exactly. four away. Yeah. And this that's is it. a this is a perfect time to exactly. to do this. This might have been this. Oh, know. so what's happened? It's doubled, and so. You see, this I think would be a take, um, but at this score we have to think about it. And so, subconsciously, even though I know he's not a theoretical student of the game, the play experience has got him a long way. You know, um, you, you know, experience. Nikolai, Nikolai's been playing backgammon years, and is, he, he's aware of these things. So needs needs four, needs three, be careful. We're now at needs three, needs three. And both sides should be slightly more aggressive than normal, but it's one of the very difficult difficult scores, I feel. Did you, yeah. How do you feel really yeah. on top of it? I, I, no, I, I would agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, um, I, I mean, I think needs three, needs four in non gaminish positions can be a little a little confusing if you're, yes. the, um, yeah. if you're the three away player. But, um, three, three, three. Um, one, if they're if it's gaminish, it becomes less confusing. <laughs> yes, it's a little easier. Um, double three. All right, three okay, away, three away. Three for next off year. to a yeah. Good start. Yeah, that nullifies that two point. 
um, by uh, by putting. It was, but I, I, do you think so? You thought it was clear the double three? No, but I wouldn't three, object to my no, partner. No, yeah, point. I'm with you there. My first thought was, you know, the insta board. Uh, oh, look at, look at this, and and this is reasonable. This is more than reasonable, but I think it's a take. Well done. So we're going to get we're going to get the answer in no less than three games yeah. time now. So it's. Four one. So big advantage here now. Oh, bigger and bigger advantage to Nakulai. Three four. Interesting. Three four. Eight to one, I suppose. Yeah. You know, white is already reduced to playing to avoid the gammon, I'm afraid. Oh. He takes these. I wonder what the motivation for that one was. <laughs> Maybe to trap him to, <laughs> to yeah. entice him to uh, leave more shots. I don't know. I the only problem with an enticement play is it only works yeah. if your opponent falls yes, for it. Yes, exactly. Double three. I, I, like I say, I played, Ooh, I played Nakulai about eight well. years ago. Big improvements. It's just, big improvement is learned from uh, is learned from experience. Okay, still tough for White. I really do think White is reduced to just uh, avoiding the gammon here. Mm -hmm. right. and hoping for a double one. He can't. He can't do anything brave. But, but, but. Two one. Ooh, well, I think you have to be yes. Yeah. yeah. And if a he, dance followed by a double one might make things interesting. Well, dance and even a single one. Second, I yeah. wonder. Like if you'd rolled a one yes. here, would you have advanced? Would you have taken that chance uh, yeah, well, against absolutely. the five point yes. board? Yes. Because yes. you could upgrade to the two point yes. anchor. You could yes. escape a checker. You might hit that other block. Yeah. Right, here, this is the this that's is the it. position. Yeah, now is the do. time, even though even though it's dangerous, you still have to go. Like, well, this is but, good, and this is to get him gammon. But I agree with moving. Yes, uh, I, I do. Chance. And oh, I oh, you, you, you go for it. it. You go for it. There's no question that this is an easier play, actually. It's surprising. Of all the plays that... Uh, <laughs> That's aggressive. All the yeah. play, exactly. Of all the aggressive players, Nikolai do, And he's not going to do it when he actually thinks about oh, it. He's not quite... <laughs> so, Look yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Um, you want a gammon here. That's uh, yes. Those gammons are valuable. Yeah, I mean, even if even a DMP, I make that point. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Oh, and he may pay the price. Oh, this. he may pay the price. Look at that. Oh, no, he didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> These two guys can play the different roles. Yeah, they can. Wow. Five, two. Two, five. He's still in better He's got a lot more life than he yeah, had before. My right. gosh. Now a loose hit. Uh, okay, well. Nicky would have been nice. I'd like to see Nicky pay the price for his weak play, but the weak play before. Okay, because it, it's really interesting that his natural play is so strong. And when he stopped and thought about it, he was in a much weaker position. Well, maybe he should yeah. keep playing quickly. Yes, exactly. No, I agree. <laughs> I, that's, right. that's kind of what I'm saying. Play. 5 4. <sighs> Okay. Oh so my gosh, we, we, we have, have a, a game race. here. We have a real race here. Okay, so so absolutely everybody needs no. to know why why or to myself just thought the hitting from six to two was just not even a consideration. It right. was just so easy. And then the race is straightforward as well. But think about the ones you Hold know on, I would have slotted the three. Yeah, mm -hmm. just every little play every little tiny bit matters. <laughs> so come on, let's roll a big no, no. We got excited for a second, but I think I think Nikki, we need to be rolling big quickly. By the way, I take that back. I'm not sure I would have thought of three. I mean, just I think he needed the pips to come in. Right. The threes repair themselves because okay. of this checkers on the six. But still, you think? Yeah, you think? Give, give, give it a give it a few seconds of think. Play accurate. That's the thing. Okay, just when it got close, um, Eric stopped rolling. So it's now very likely. Oh, that's that's, that's it. it. That's so it's now ten eight. Um, and Eric has got to win the next two games, or Nikolai wins the trophy. 
and the fair, and it's almost that gammons don't count basically <laughs> it is a situation we're in that's right Right, treated it as DMP, unless maybe Beckhamon show up towards the <laughs> yes, end, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, no, that would be a way to win the title. For uh, uh -huh. that, would be, that would be a way um, to win the title spectacularly. Okay, so we're we're now ten eight to Nekulai. One more game wins, he wins the title, and Eric needs to win the next two games. So let's let's slow down a bit, boys, and see how we go. Two one. Or two and white wants a, an advanced anchor here and, and the the three point is going to be good at second yeah you know, not the best but better than nothing by the way this was a 11 point match so they started with uh with uh how much on their clock uh, oh yeah 33 minutes so so Nekulai has used almost 10 percent <laughs> the others are 26 other guys, uh, oh, no, just too slow he's used uh, almost a quarter of his time this was actually um it was 11 point match and they were given triple they, they were given no they, um an extra three minutes instead of th uh, two minutes move three minutes move they, they they obviously haven't used it the reason is we're trying to get to uh, give eric a fair chance oh being a registered right. blind player so right, right, okay. and you know he's doing well so that's why <laughs> and also to give his opponent uh you know the the slight with with things being slightly different playing slightly different to give his opponent a bit more time as well two three Okay, so three, two. They're still both rolling top stuff. Two, one. Two, one. But Nekula is very much in control of this game. So something needs to happen. What's Nekula in one right now? Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> that was a professional commentary. Four two, uh, yeah. So he's now got a broken five prime. So this is strong, strong position now for uh, for Red. You know, um, Red just wants to ease this one home if he, if, if he can. Okay, and Eric's going for it. He's not sitting back, which is admirable. Okay, nice player. I wouldn't be surprised with the hit play after his last play. Yeah. You can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to create one three back. Create, here. Yes. Turn this round. Okay. Four one. The four needs to come out, right? I, just to, I don't know whether you can resist the five points. Maybe. Well, I was focused on getting that check yeah. out. So there's interesting players going on here. I'm not quite sure what they're aiming for. So one six, I think he has to come out. We can't afford. I don't think we. Can. I don't understand that. Though. No. Six right. Okay, so if he's Eric got a lot of four, words to get. Oh, that's that's, the, that's, that's why you, one of the reasons you come out with the six. Yeah, you've uh, got to respect prime, broken five primes. The worst enemy could be you. And, and when I was saying that he had to make the five point, I think I might have, you know, you. you um, My first thought right, was well, like, well, your, your I mean, maybe already. the five point was right. And, and, and look at this now. And this, sadly, it's looking very terminal after that roll. Not much to do here. And then five to one. Yeah. He's just got to keep as much contact as he can possibly hope for. It's going to be tough. Gonna be too tough, I'm afraid. Four one. Six five. Six five. First. More or less. Two three. Three two. I think I I, I really think that uh, Red should just play safely here now. Well, let's say a double four here to uh, try and liven things up. Well, that first four is important, just yeah. to, just to give some breathing room. Right. 
just right. can't afford to can't. You, you, you play 13 to 6. You're just yes. oh, asking absolutely. your position to get crunched. No, you really don't do You're that. not afraid of getting gammoned. Yeah, do exactly. That's, That's it. Fine. Nice player. Right? Take the lines. Both these players can play about gammon. It's nice to see. Now a four, and you have some defensive potential. We got you missed it. Oh, it's not even a five two. You can't even play five. Just have to run the three point. Yeah. Now they're playing. Who can touch the nine point last? <laughs> four two. Four two. Interesting. I think I would just make the uh, two point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ten. Let's show you, see a double four. First. Okay, well, this is bringing the race very close now. Yes. So we'll just let's, let's, let's throw a double four and make it interesting for the crowd. <laughs> four, four, two. Just bring one in. Okay, nice yeah. to build up. Give them the four five shot. I keep them running. Okay. Oh, what was that for? I don't know. There's, there's, just, there's, that there's, no, there's no point in that play. Six, five. Okay. So obviously the reason was for the play was to, because, um, Nekula realizes that his main method of winning is just to bring this home safely. But there was no, it was no safer playing that way than play it than just the normal way. Okay, so now he's got a difficult six point to clear, so there's a, still a chance. Five two, we just stay for one more. I think so. Stay for one more and keep a five point board yeah. because this is the you don't have is a, it, enough of a race. This is, a, this is our best chance here now, and that's a really great throw. Okay. So it's looking good for Nekulai. And the roll is 5-4. Five, five, so 5-3 five, is just going to play safe. But really, there's still some racing chances, probably more than hitting chances here. Now, decision at least. Four two. Okay, so there is some chances here for Red with a big number. Yeah, well, it's got to go worst. anyway. <laughs> Literally yeah, his he's worst. Yeah. He's forced out with the five and yeah, followed by his. Four two. All right. So That's we need some big numbers now, Eric, to make this interesting. And it is no longer interesting. It's just pinch to pit now. <laughs> <laughs> five one. It's coming up. Well, we need something quickly, Eric. Three. Six two. Six two. Now it's four three. Four three, two off. So we want red to be rolling. Five four. This this looks mm. this looks good enough. Four one. Okay, four one. We're in the last chance saloon now for Eric. Six one. Okay, that's more or less it now. Six one. Yep. And we have a new champion. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you for the game. Okay, so congratulations to Nekulai and and Eric finishing in second place. A magnificent performance, Eric proud of the way you played and I'm glad that the, uh, the, the, the competition ended in good spirits and congratulations Nekulai winning the 2022 UK Open very uh, very prestigious event to win so well done and thanks everybody who's listened and thanks to my co-commentator Art and we're going to have a really good fun conversation yeah, tonight yeah what a pleasure Tim let's do thank this you. again sometime cheers thanks okay. Art thank bye. you bye bye all
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app, Star Membership, High Analysis, Blunder Database, Private Games, Coin Games, Rating Games, and much, much more. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a... Hey guys, this is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, we're gonna show you the Adventure Board, which is one of the new boards from the Backgammon Galaxy collection. The idea of this board is luxury travel. That's the concept of this board. For you, those of you guys like me who don't wanna play at a lousy little travel board, we designed this board so you get the full luxury experience even though you're just playing on a, on a small travel board. So let's have a look. Uh, it has this beautiful black frame. We covered it with leather so that it can take some scraps here, no problem. And let's open it up and have a look at this beautiful board. So it comes with this super cool travel friendly checker box. Let's open it and you know what, let's put it over here. And uh, the checkers are 35 millimeter checkers, so they're smaller than a regular tournament board. But uh, you still get exactly the same high quality checkers as you do on the earth board or the void board. They're beautiful, these checkers. Small, travel friendly, a joy to play on. I personally don't like playing backgammon on all these cheap little travel boards, so this board is just perfect. You know, if you're going to the beach club or to a cafe or you just want to hang out with your wife or girlfriend, have a quick game. I think this is the perfect board. We kept all the luxury details, the design, the checkers. It even comes with these proper cups here and, and a beautiful doubling cube. The dice, as you can see, it's a, it's a real luxury backgammon board. You know, it's just smaller dimensions. Can you play a, a, a big tournament on this board? You could, but it's a little bit small, but you could because of the, the high quality. But that's not what this board was meant for. We maximize portability and luxury. And uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of this board. Let me show you how small this board actually is. Here we have a comparison. This is the void board in the background. And this is the adventure board in the front ground here. <laughs> As you can see, this is so much smaller. You can have it in your backpack or your beach bag, so easy to carry around. You can just grab it by under the arm and it doesn't weigh much. And uh, yeah, it's just incredibly beautiful from the outside as well. It comes in three different colors, I believe. We might make more color combinations in the future, but for now, 
we have the, the green earth board as well. And then of course we have the, the Galaxy Neptune Blue. Yeah, so it comes in different color combinations. I'm very happy <laughs> with this board. I used it several times during the recent year. It's just a pleasure to finally have a luxury portable travel board to carry around. So that's all for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Where is Mishi, guys? I'm ready to roll the dice. Hey, Mishi! Mishi! Hello, everybody. I'm Ali Çetin Belene. I'm part of UBC Contender 2022. And now you see me with a white board, which is my favorite board, actually. The best thing that I like this board is the checkers. You, it feels like a stone, man. And also, uh, I like simple design here, and I, I also like the sound when the uh, dice hit the frame or uh, checkers hit the frame. I really can't wait for the next year UBC uh, to play with these uh, lovely boards. Bye everybody! What's up Backgammon fans? In this video we're gonna show you one of the coolest products that we have in the Galaxy web shop. The new Dublin Cubes. And look at this cool little uh, box that it comes in. It comes in three different colors. The Earth, the Neptune and the Moon Cube. So let's have a look at them one by one. The Earth Cube, it's beautiful and custom made with the G for Galaxy, it's really, really cool. And the Earthboard colors, obviously. Then we've got the Neptune in the Neptune colors. And then we've got the Moon, which is this grayish Dublin cube. Like, I think this is probably some of the coolest Dublin cubes ever made. They are for sale right now in the Galaxy web shop. So why don't you go in and place an order for these amazing cubes. Thank you guys for watching this video. See you next time. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app, star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. What's up Backgammon fans? This is a video about the Galaxy Dice Tower. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's made of this nice material. It unfolds very easily. Let me show you how. You insert your hands here, you hold the sides, and you press, you press, and you press, and now you have a dice tower. It fits perfectly there. We designed this to be lightweight and travel friendly, but we also designed it to be silent. Unlike other dice scramblers that are usually made of plastic and make an awful lot of noise, this dice tower is nice and silent because of the soft materials that we used. Yeah, it unfolds just as easily. You just do the same, just in reverse. You push, you push, and you push. And yeah, that's it. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. What's up Backgammon fans? This is Mark Olsen from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video we're gonna show you the newest edition of the Earth Board. So let's reveal the new Earth Board. 
it looks like an earth board because it is, but what, what did we change here? We changed the wood. It was beautiful before, but I think it became even more beautiful. This wood here is absolutely stunning, in my opinion. Let's open up and see what else changed. Ah, the lovely earth board here. We got the checker box. Let's open the checker box. Here we go. So another little feature that we changed uh, are the hinges. As you can see here, we put the hinges on the outside, which just leaves this much more narrow hinge. And I think it gives for a better look, to be honest, but it's also more robust. Then the corner joints are slightly different. Again, a little upgrade to make the bore more durable and more robust. But, you know, it's still the same earth board as the first edition. Very small changes. You still have the same feel. These dimensions that I love, the, the short dimensions, I think it gives for a better playing experience, to be honest. Especially here, the height dimension, as you can see, you can't even put 11 checkers here. I really like that. I find it a little bit annoying to reach too far. And, uh, and also, I think you play a little bit better because your eyes don't have to travel as much. Yeah, the beautiful wooden frame. I still that, love that as well. Uh, you got It comes with a MacFit uh, inlay, so you can change up the colors if you want. Buy some other checker colors as well and mix it up that way. Yeah, and, uh, and then we got the Galaxy slash FM Gammon Cube here. Yeah, this is the new Earthboard, guys. I hope you like it. What's up Backgammon fans? In this video, we're gonna reveal a new revolutionary product. We've made a partnership with, uh, with a company called Tempest and uh, I have the product right here. So let's unbox and, and see what it is. Okay. This is the Tempest. It's basically an accessory that works in conjunction with your iPhone or smartphone. What it is, is a clock stand, super nicely designed by the way, where you insert your smartphone here and it uses the, the gyroscope in your smartphone with this lever that goes back and forth for turn, turn shifts. So you can basically set any clock setting you want on the, on the smartphone app, which is super easy. You insert it, and then you've got yourself a backgammon clock. It's super cool, beautiful, easy to transport. Uh, yeah, and we, we've got Tom from Tempest to introduce himself. Thanks, Mark, and hello, backgammon fans. I'm Tom Lakovic. I'm a product designer from Portland, Oregon, USA, and I'm the inventor of the Tempest game clock. The idea with Tempest clock was to create something so simple based on the amazing user interface we already all have in our pockets and the high definition screens and the high visibility um, and just pair it with something that belongs with a luxury board. We played so much online. We've really become accustomed to different timings, speed games and so on. So now that we're finally coming back to over the board play, we're excited to bring some of that excitement of timing. It's just kind of more exciting, more fun, more gamified, if you will, to play with a game clock and we've created one that's easy to use, that's beautiful and smart. So with that, I'll send it back to you, Mark. It's your move. Thanks, Tom. So let's have a look in action here, how it is. I've downloaded the app with the QR code that came with the box. Now I'm gonna choose backgammon. I'm gonna set the time bank to, let's say 10 minutes. Let's, if we play a five point match, the delay is already at 12 seconds. Yeah, here it is, insert the smartphone pressing play here we go so let's see okay six four for black uh-huh white six four that hits really nice i love this sound it's got this bass sound to it. I really like it. I love this product. It's so simple. It took literally 10 seconds to set up. The app, very low in terms of battery drainage. So you can just put it into flight mode and it'll last all day, basically. So that's super cool. You can connect a power bank as well, but you don't need to. We have a deluxe model as well. So that's the one we have right here. So let's have a look at this one. Here's the 
instructional manual. And this is the deluxe model. This natural wood. Wow, this is beautiful. I'm super excited to have this product available in the Galaxy web shop. I'm going to be using it myself, that's for sure. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. What's up Backgammon fans? This is Mark Olson from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys what are my favorite Backgammon color combinations. So here with me is the Void Board. Most of you guys probably know it already. And as most of you guys probably also know, the Void Board comes with changeable inlays and changeable checker colors. So this color combination, Wilson showed it to me yesterday. I played a couple of games on it and it just, for whatever reason, it just works out amazing. So we've got the purple checkers and the orange checkers. And look at this. Look how sick this is. So it's on the void inlay, which is quite low on contrast, but high, quite high on how cool it is. But when you put the purple and the orange checkers, look how they just jump out of the board contrast all of a sudden is very high and uh, yeah it's just it just works you know it's just amazing I also want to say these void checkers void board checkers are probably the best checkers that we've ever done I'm really proud of these checkers I love them it's like uh, almost like a marble stone almost like even though it's still the basically the same checker technology we put the finish on them in a way so they just look absolutely stunning it's it's a, the matte surface rather than glossy uh, sur surface coloring uh, yeah so this this color combination isn't it something leave a comment below uh, what do you guys think is it too crazy or uh, am I right here so that's all for this video guys thank you very much see you next time